What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Hassan Piker, and this is Austin Ivan Broadcast coming to you live from kind of gray California, Los Angeles. Folks, we're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful day. It's all right, actually. It's none of those days. For everybody freaking out and saying Kai is free, uh, I've already suffered the consequences of not actually uh, putting her in a pen this morning. Um, she is just, uh, running around the house right now. She's roaming around the house. Week one of the dog, uh, tutorial, uh, was complete and we were making a lot of incredible progress and it turns out I was fucking wrong. She pooped inside in a random place that we didn't even find out until later. She literally is like, she has outside access, knows to pee out there, loves peeing out there, gets the treats, all the treats and all the love when she pees out there and poops out there. But lately has been just going out there, fucking around, hanging out, and then coming back inside to pee. Which is very frustrating. She doesn't want to shit where she plays, lol. No, that's not how that works, man. That's outside, okay? It's massive. Not, like, massive for her, at least. It's not, like, that big, but... I'm super stupid, but don't you have a pool that's dangerous for a puppy? Yeah, no, I'm actually fucking, uh, you know, letting her back uh, where the pool is without a gate and actually dumping her in the pool regularly on purpose like i just throw her in the pool and like let her fucking uh let her die a little bit and then pull her out she's probably swimming right now yeah i kick her into the pool anyway <clears throat> yeah i kick her in the pool and i say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger anyway this is the part of the broadcast where i tell you about my personal news about you know parasocial pup dates i guess but as you can notice as you've probably noticed i'm not exactly in a particularly good mood as a matter of fact i'm in kind of a foul mood why is that the reason well i am in a foul mood because of kaya because last night was fine she was okay uh, only woke me up twice as a matter of fact she peed on the pee pad one time while she was sleeping um and then uh you know peed outside and it's been fine that one was great too a little outside piss that's awesome you know everything is fine what is this first year medical postgraduate student. oh this is me and kaya yeah here this is a real footage i don't know how you found this this is me throwing kaya's ass in a fucking pool dude except she can't actually paddle her way out she's dying it's just like it's so fucked up it's so fucked up when you're like sit there for 25 minutes outside hoping that she does a pee pee and a poo poo so you can fucking reward her okay for the good behavior she just looks right at you walks in looks right at you takes a shit or a piss directly inside of the house no don't do it don't put her on here no please don't do that just on the bed she's not gonna stay on there though she's gonna run around she already ran away Here, there's the there's those two look there's two uh ropes that you can open it up you can just like close it i didn't want to put her in the cage today but like i didn't want to put her in the pen today but she definitely can't not do it they're calling you rocket man in the chat and though you know 
I told him about how the family was roasting you in the group chat for the rocket not launching yesterday. No, you gotta close it first. Not you think she's gonna stay on this? You're crazy. I'm gonna pee on this bed. I'm Okay. I'll try I'll try your I'm gonna be on it right now, probably. To be honest. Okay. Um, can you it's big enough for her to like actually pee and then avoid the piss, which she doesn't even give a shit about. She literally That's will. I know. I understand how crate training works. Thank you. I've had a dog before you. I'm just saying. This is she's old. Give me a goddamn break. That's like the reason why she doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Anyway, today's Marat's rocket launch thingy. We're very excited for it. Hopefully, uh, Elon Musk won't cook him again. Because Elon personally hates Marat. And is just not fucking launching his shit, which is annoying. Um, problem is, I got to take her out periodically. Oh, she's already... She's going to start crying. I'm just letting you know. She has noticed the confines of her cage and is already freaking the fuck out. It's going to be impossible to do with the chat behind me, too. I might just, like, if you want to crate her, we can just, like, put her in the crate uh, upstairs. Are you going to be able to go in twenty every 20 minutes and pick her up and out of the crate? No. Two hours? Every two hours, you're going to... You know? Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about what has happened. So, um, last night was fun. You know, I, uh, I hung out with my mom a little bit. We did the, we did the same song and dance. We always do where she's like, where, where basically she's like, um, you know, I, I, don't want you watching your funny anime pictures. I don't really understand it. I don't know what's going on. Can we watch something together? And I'm like, that's fair. That's fine. That's okay. Let's let's find something that we can watch together. Now, of course, that's not fine. You want to know why that's not fine? Because, you know, we have dramatically different interests on the planet. She loves Jane Austen novels. Okay. And, and, you know, like period pieces that have like romance in them. And I hate that. I'd rather die than watch that. So basically, you know, it's just hard to find something. So I, so it took me an hour and a half. I tried like eight different movies. I tried, uh, most notably John Mulaney's new special. And she's just complaining for the hour and a half that I'm picking up movies, right? Picking out stuff to watch. Finally, we arrive at Chris Rock. I'm like, look, he's a boomer. He's complaining about cancel culture. You'll like this. You know what I mean? You don't understand how the world is changing dramatically at a rapid clip. Um, you know, you'll, you'll like this. So we start watching. I swear to God. She's like, okay, I like this. Fine. Let's watch it. It took her, and I timed it, three minutes to fall asleep. Two hours to pick the fucking movie that we're going to watch. Three minutes to fall asleep. Immediately, she was like, yeah, this is good. Let's do it. Pfft, fell asleep. Incredible. And it's always like, I always forget. It's just like, I should just throw on Jane Austen. 
like next time around next time my mom's like let's watch something together i'm just gonna be like yeah let's watch your jane austen movie because she's gonna fall asleep anyway so that's it Oh no. Oh no. Why was everybody saying Pepela Noam Chomsky? Oh no. <sighs> oh no. Oh my god. No anarchists, dude. You can't. What the fuck? Someone emailed him and he denied it even more. Said there are plenty of bad people at MIT. Look, this person is still on Pride and Prejudice. Like, I did a fucking snide remark about Jane Austen. And there's still motherfuckers like, dude, I don't understand how you can hate on Pride and Prejudice. It's boring. Anyway, we'll we'll do all of that in a little bit. We'll to, we'll do the fucking Noam Chomsky uh Jeffrey Epstein connection in a little bit. Um It's so easy not to meet a famous sex best pedophile dude and people are still failing. Yeah, it's like it's like the lowest barrier, dude. It's like don't meet the famous child sex trafficker for the cia like don't hang out with him unless like you're hanging out with him to like somehow throw him in jail you know what i mean anyway uh but he's an anarchist so he had to do it to him for the one time okay ludwig hits a three-pointer on his first try YouTuber bet me $100 that I wouldn't be able to make a single three-point shot. There's just one problem. I don't know how to play basketball. But I won 100 bucks, so I took my ass over to Target, bought myself a basketball, and headed over to a basketball court. I started I'm going to lose my mind. Did this motherfucker literally just do this on his own? Instead of coming over here and doing it on stream? Like, I don't believe him. I nervous as I walked up to the court, so I put my Crocs in sport mode, and I got ready to shoot. And on my first shot... I did this. You have like a horrible form, like a moon ball. If I took 10 three point shots, how many do I have? Two. Currently zero. Maybe, Maybe one. one. This YouTuber bet me. I don't believe this. He does have horrible form. Charlie's right. And also, he lied. This is literally a fucking lie. I'm just, I'm going to text him. Hold on. Also, my, uh, my thing with Schlatt is coming out. Nice lie for your YouTube short. Okay. Dude's jumper looks like some of the girls on my niece's sixth grade team. Yeah, he's fucking shot as doo-doo. And I am I am still adamant. Like, I don't think he'll make a single fucking three-pointer if we did 10. But on a live stream, we can't have him actually try. Like, we can't have him actually, like, you know, work out and... Where's my fear and video this week? What do you mean? We uploaded it. What? I, <laughs> my friend, did you just not watch? Is that what happened? Like you were, <laughs> you're like, yo, <laughs> okay, Mr. 
forgets that there's a fear end episode this week. Like you, you thought you caught me. I mean, here it is. Hassan is a dog dad. Austin runs the train on the yard. Yeah. Yeah, where's my stream, huh? Go live. Go live, please. We're a little tardy today, aren't we? Anyway, um, before we get into all this stuff, I guess the only thing that I got... The, uh, the only thing I got is that this morning, I went to like a bunch of different vets to get her uh, vaccinated before the stream. And... It was fucking insane. Like, I I went to I went to get her vaccinated, and like every vet in in every veter veteran veterinarian in like the Los Angeles or the the West Hollywood Beverly Hills area is so fucking bougie, bro. I don't want to go to like the VCA because that's like an institution. It's like too big. I want to have like a, like a, like, you know, private vet access type shit. And every single one of them is like, oh, I'm sorry. There's a waiting list. Motherfuckers were telling me there's a waiting list, bro. You're rich. Just go private. I did. I did go private. They're like, uh, sorry. There's actually a waiting list for not like to get no, no, no. You guys don't understand. I'm not even talking about a waiting list to, like, see, be seen. They said there is a waiting list to, like, actually become a part of the vet's, like, uh, you know, puppy client list. Like, it's very exclusive. There's a waiting list to get on the fucking waiting list to be seen. You know what I mean? Like... Do they know who she is? Yeah, I was. I wanted to be like, do you know who you're talking to? This is Kaya Piker. She has hundreds of thousands of admiring fans online. This is a famous dog. I don't want to be that guy, but this is a famous dog. Okay. Um, anyway, all jokes aside, though. Um, she was, uh, she was not super happy. It happened during the COVID puppy explosion. Vets are super busy now. Um, maybe. She's, uh, here, I'll, I'll throw on the puppy cam for now because she's behind me. But when she gets unruly, she's fucking gone, son. She looks so comfy right now and you cannot tell that she's an absolute fucking monster when she's when she's zooted like this when she's like laying like a little fucking baby in the background on her little pillow you just forget for a brief moment that she is an absolute fucking demon okay Anyway. Get her in the pool. Yeah, I'm just going to toss her ass in there next time. Okay. So. Anyway, she was like, she was, she was just. <laughs> she was basically uh, worn out from going to the fucking vet for like three minutes and was very scared <laughs> and it's kind of funny because like when she gets comfy she's like a demon she's like biting everything she's going crazy but then when she's scared she's like an entirely different dog she's like super submissive licking worried
You know what I mean? Anyway. But yeah. Hold on. Let me write my uh, blast off tweet. Sunday pub day. Looking at dog training videos. Vogue star. Valkyrie. Puppy playtime. Plus murder. Get in now. The baby, what do you mean? Anne? 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 Anne. Oh, uh, şu kapının şeyini anahtarını yapar mısın? Oh, anneme ver onu. Anneme aldım. Uh, wait, actually, let me get some. Let me get like one of the. Sh oh. She's being a good girl. Yes. Um. On a shot. Just give me a shot. That's for you. That's a that's a almond peanut butter protein shake. Yeah, I just got you something because I thought because you just showed up while I was ordering. Mom wanted like a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, wellness shots. Let me get one. I got a lot, yeah. Got a bunch of fucking Erewhon shots because my mom is so bougie and was like, uh, and you know, she's also starting to get sick. I'm going to take them. They're like $8 a pop and they're very stupid. Let's do it. And then I'll. What? Do you like it? Give her, give mom the shots. Take a shot too. It's disgusting. It tastes like shit, but it's good for you, I think. Okay. All right, let's try these. Number one, established in 1968, which weird. What the fuck? Uh, Erewhon Golden Eye. Okay, this is the first shot. These are all eight dollars a pop, by the way. It's disgustingly expensive. Just pointing that out there. Don't recommend it. It also tastes like shit. What? Where does it come from? Where does the Erewhon name come from? Nowhere? Wow. Marat, fucking, he's the bougiest bitch of them all. He knew where the Erewhon name comes from. It's nowhere backwards. Okay. Uh, this is Goldeneye number three. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. You know, James Bond ass shit. Uh, it's got pineapple, water, ginger, turmeric, lemon, rhodiola. Don't even know what the fuck that is. Holy basil, which is very different than regular basil. It's holy, like a Catholic priest touched it. And lion's mane, which I don't think is a consumable item. I did not know that you could just like consume the mane of a lion. This is two fluid ounces, and it contains 83% juice. I guess the rest of it is the, the mane of a lion. Okay, opening this up. Is the golden I want it tastes like shit, I'm pretty sure. Uh let's take a look at what this tastes like. Okay, that actually wasn't that bad. It's a little spicy. It's actually a little spicy, but not that bad overall. 
What is this? Just put some turmeric in fruit juice. It would do the same thing. Stop buying that shit. Lion's mane is a cool looking mushroom. Okay. Sure. Whatever you say, chemist man. Okay. I'm going to, that's not enough though. Now we're going to take germ warfare. This is the second one. This is another $8. So this is going to be $16 of fucking potions that I'm taking from the apothecary. This one is germ warfare. Number one, this has got filtered water, you know, bougie water, lemon juice, colloidal silver. The fuck? Colloidal silver. Reishi tea, black elderberry, keolic garlic. What the hell is a... Ke okay, I got to look this up. Keolic garlic? What does that even mean? It's aged garlic? Keolic aged garlic extract. What is it good for? It's reducing blood pressure in patients with uncontrolled hypertension and has a potential to improve our toroidal si stiffness inflammation and gut microbial profile the usd the us food and drug administration has warned that colloidal silver isn't safe or effective for treating any disease or condition additionally the fda and the federal trade commission have taken action against a number of companies making misleading claims about colloidal silver okay dude yeah what's what's next are you gonna tell me that vaccines don't make you gay and autistic uh i don't believe that sorry fuck the fda the food and drug administration more like the fake dictator administration liberal bullshit not for me no thanks uh I'm going to do some home remedies instead. So shut the fuck up. Okay. Uh, that's not over though. We got grapefruit seed, oregano oil, astragalus. What the fuck? It's like estafrullah. What the hell is astragalus? <laughs> estafrullah is a very important. Uh, it's a very important plant. Astragalus root. Benefits and side effects. It's also called huanqi or milk vetch. It comes from a type of bean or legume. Uh, it's supposed to protect and support the immune system, preventing colds and upper respiratory infections, lowering blood pressure, treating diabetes, and protecting the liver. Man, it's like funny as fuck that these things are just like, they're like, oh, it does everything. Like, hey, hey we put a little bit of this thing that like does everything. Okay, thanks. I don't believe a single piece of this shit, okay? But I'm a little under the weather. As you know, I'm on like my third day or fourth day of feeling kind of shitty. So let's say, let's see what kind of magic resistance this potion gives me. Okay, let's finish off. What else is in there? There's still <laughs> echinacea, echinacea. Is it effing? People are saying it's effing. Nice. Well, I'm going to fucking die. So, okay, right off the bat, I got to show you something. The color on the top of the potion is like different than the bottom. There's like yellow up here and then it's not yellow. It's like very brown down there. So I don't know what the fuck that's about. I'm going to shake it first. I'm going to shake it off, shake it off, ha ha, shake it off, shake it off, ha ha. Don't DMC Amy Taylor Swift, please. Okay, I'm sipping on slurp juices. This is plus 10 potion. Oh, it's like still going up. Once it's done being shook, it still goes up. I don't know what it is. Oh, it smells terrible. Oh my God. Oh, this one's going to be really bad. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's motor oil. That's that's mo this is motor oil. This is uh, 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 it literally There's no way this is oh Oh, it's like oh, my whole body. My whole body 
Oh, my tongue is numb. What is happening? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I just drank poison. I just drank poison. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just drank poison. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Uh boom boom boom. Do you have the poison control center phone number handy? Sorry, we required to tell you that one was topical. The fact that they have this is crazy. This is actually for real snake oil shit like Dr. Smith's revitalizing tonic type beat. Yeah, I'm very well aware that this is snake oil, for the record. I hope everybody I hope everybody understands. Oh. My mom sells those herbs along with 100 plus others on her online business that my homeschool dad's had to work for free my whole childhood. It's called child labor. It makes kids better at work. You definitely didn't take enough, but look up colloidal silver blue skin. No, I'm aware. Okay. The last one is pretty basic. This is a wellness shot. So another $8 wellness shot. This one is, is a cool color. I like it. Um, this one just has carrot, lemon, ginger, and garlic, which is pretty basic. And it's 98% juice. What the fuck is the not juice portion then? Carrot, lemon, ginger, garlic. What is the, is it the garlic that they are not considering juice? Is it, is it 2% ginger and, and garlic? Like, this last one is going to, like what? Okay, let's, oh, the gar, oh shit, bro. This is garlicky as hell. You would not expect it. When you look at the color of this and you're like, oh, this is going to be like juicy. It smells hella garlicky, okay? Okay, that is so garlicky. Wow. I like garlic, though, so it's not that big of a deal. This concludes our... Erewhon taste test portion of the broadcast. I feel like this is going to make me shit my fucking brains out. Hopefully not on stream. Hopefully not when, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ray gets here. Have you ever been to the stinking roads? Yes, I have. Ew, Erewhon isn't very proletariat, homie. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I I like to I like to be as proletarian as possible, which is why I find uh, garlic that someone discarded. Usually, yeah, I know, man. It's for content. Okay, I, I I'm aware. It's not like my daily consumption. I will give you guys updates on how I feel later. Um. very bad very bad not good not good at all that was fucking ass cheeks straight up set a few pee pads around the room in case it hits you hard yeah i probably should low key actually <laughs> Mm. 
Okay, we're done. Are you doing a vaccine injury acting, sir? Oh, fuck. God, that was so bad, dude. It's like crazy how bad that was. Anyway, man's on his cringe arc. I'm literally a professional Twitch streamer. There has never been a moment where I'm not professionally cringe. I have been on my cringe arc since day one. Okay, not day two. Day one is when I was cringe. And also, you're cringe too. You watch me every day for eight hours. We're both cringe. Just kill the side of you that cringes, okay? Ah, everyone is on their cringe arc. You're on Twitch. Exactly. It's so bad recently though. Really? I'm a dad now. I do dad jokes. This is me teaching Kai how to swim. That's crazy. Bro, your next piss is going to burn a hole through your porcelain throne. Yeah. Guard that kid for life. Sometimes they deserve it. Like with Kaya. I need to watch this so that I can, like, uh, forget how much of a piss monster she is, dude. You know what I mean? Here, by the way, I blast it off. Let the people know. Let the people know. Let the people know. Let the people know. Uh, also, new j Schlatt video just landed on our front page. Um, Where is it? Does anyone know? That's right. I, uh, I, I debated him. Is it on J Schlatt live? Probably not. What is it on? Capitalism versus, oh, it's called did Schlatt win? Capitalism versus communism. I could tell from the title that this was going to be extra good. Now that this was the biggest plot twist I've ever heard. Just had that one absolute worst nightmares I've had in, uh, in a year. We went from the amount of holes to straw to this truly innovative content schlatt. Guys, I don't know why uh, it keeps effing. It's not on my end. My bit rate has been consistent the entire time. It's probably a Twitch backend related issue. I'm just going to let you know that it's not on my end, okay? It's not happening because of anything I've done. Um, It's not on my end. Should we watch this J-Schlatt? Should we watch me fucking destroy this man, dude? 21 minutes? It was like we, we debated for like an hour. crazy to like it's a 21 minute video we debated for much longer than 21 minutes actually um i i guess he had to like cut out all the parts where i fucking destroyed him that's right ladies and gentlemen i debated jay schlatt or also known as schlatt we'll say i shouldn't be calling him jay schlatt um i did that On Twitch, I get Fs on my phone and desktop. It's too, yeah. The bat. I did the bat. And I'll be honest with you, I fucking cooked them. I cooked them harder than an unsubscribed person at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break. I cooked them harder than people who just want an uninterrupted broadcast experience 
um, and and don't want to subscribe at the same time. But fear not. At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account through Twitch account, where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. Um, you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. This Sunday fun day is going to be fucking slam. There's a lot going on today. So let's get fucking started. Let's get ready to rumble. Here's a three minute ad break now. Uh, so yeah, this video is communism versus capitalism. Now, if you think that I am going to defend communism, <laughs> you're wrong. That's for Schlatt. I, in this video, defended capitalism. Let's My name is Schlatt, and I'm a communist. And I'm joined today by Hassan Piker, who's a cold-blooded capitalist. Hassan, when did you become such a partisan hack? As a matter of fact, Schlatt, I take offense to that. I'm not a partisan hack unless the party that you're speaking of is freedom. Because I will be defending capitalism, the best economic organization of society that has ever been invented oh in the history of Here mankind. Goes already. But you wouldn't know anything about that because you're a dirty commie. I guess I wouldn't know anything about fashion either because holy sh**. I mean, look at look at what you're wearing. My God. This is made by uh, chinchillas that uh, Indonesian children hunted. What the f*** is going... Okay, let's rewind for a little bit. What made you get into capitalism, dude? What, I mean, this is this is a switch for you. I saw you on stream a couple months ago, and you were singing a whole different tune. Uh, what made me get into it is it's called George Washington. Have you heard George of George Washington got you in. Yeah. Can I tell you who the f*** got me into communism? A little guy by the name of Karl Marx. Yeah, he was, he was lame. Was it Communist Manifesto? And I got real into it. And then I actually was like, this is so good that I'm going to look into what else... He wrote. What, what, what else did he write? He wrote, he wrote some other shit. I, I don't even think I could talk about it. Yeah, of course. Of course you can't talk about it because you love censorship. That's no, what I don't. Love. No, I don't. I tell you what I love. I love I love equality. I don't think I don't think people should be wearing one at one of one chinchilla hunted bandanas, whatever the fuck Why that not? is. You look because you look stupid in it. I have the freedom to look as dumb as I would like. This shit was mass produced. This shit came out of a factory and everyone can get one of these It's affordably priced. It's got the Yankees logo on it. The best baseball team of all time. And also look at this. Look at this. It's my favorite communist on it. Barack Obama. Yeah, that's right. He is. He, Barack Obama is definitely a communist, but also the factory conditions that you are speaking of are no different than the one of one uh, Indonesian child uh, chinchilla. Nah, nah. Farmer. My my employees are they they're paid well. Unlike your fucking editor who scratches around for little pennies on this on the sidewalk, he picks up little pennies. It's called opportunity. My editor is not coerced to be working uh, for me. My editor could be working for it. Anyone as a what are you looking up there for? What are you looking up there? Are you looking at your talking points? Oh wow, you're you're moving the conversation you away. Brought from the you brought help, didn't you? You you're looking up no, there. That's where my my uh, camera is. Oh, so you're just so I'm just looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at myself because I feel like I'm owning you so hard. I'm like, am I looking good? While I you're not I owning me. Let me list you a couple <laughs> things that are going on right now in the United States of America. You got people dying on the streets. Okay, you got housing completely unaffordable. I could only buy two houses last year. You got fucking Dr. Fauci running around still. The fuck is going on with that? Dr. Fauci's a communist, so I think we agree that he's bad. Uh, you no, know, no, he's great. I love Dr. Fauci running around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this was so stupid because like, uh, while I am certainly capable of holding a coherent point, on on capitalism because like i've debated it so many fucking times uh this was schlatt's first time trying to defend communism but like he kept is this a bit no this is not a bit no it's not a bit man i'm actually a a, a factory owner and and schlatt is uh, a, a rugged communist <laughs> All I'm going to say is Dr. Fauci, you know who he works with? Who? Communist China. That's right. Good. Yeah. Is that why you like him? Yeah. Because he works with communist China? Ah! Yeah, that's ah! right. That's ah! right. Look at Dr. Ah! Fauci right there. Get him away. He's Get him away. I, I didn't want to see He's him. I hate that. six feet away. Look, it I comes off. I hate that guy. <laughs> I hate that guy so much. He took his mask off. No, I, I'll put it back on. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, I will say this much to you. Mm -hmm. You got your Dr. Fauci toy. You want to know what kind of toys I like to play with? This one. This. Exactly. 
Capitalism is so good that every single child could dump hot lead if they wanted to. How do you think the communists started? The fucking revolution, Hassan? What did it, what did a bunch of people have to get control over the government? They had these motherfucker, they had guns, okay? Yeah, and then, you know what this they is, did? This is the this is what gives people power, motherfucker. Or this maybe This is what it does. We both started waving guns in the middle of the in the middle of the debate. <laughs> It's so stupid, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now his third world is Jay Schlatt arc, dude. It's an average American argument. It's like that wow mouth video. It's like, you are dog between the Greeks and the Turks. But this time it's like two Americans. It's like, listen, motherfucker, I got a Glock. He's like, oh, your Glock is baby shit. Reason why. <laughs> your Glock is stupid, but it doesn't even fire on accident, <laughs> but it doesn't even have an accidental discharge due to his double trigger mechanism, bitch. Real Americans use real guns that have a safety on that you can drop on the floor and get shot in the fucking face with. Why we have armed our entire population pee, so that we can make sure that Nancy Pelosi with her big old titties don't Whoa. come around and try to Whoa. bring try to bring communism to this goddamn country. That's right. That's why all the patriots have the guns. None of you communist pussies have That's guns. That's enough. Let's talk about your house. Okay. $2.74 million house. I checked it recently. As a matter of fact, it's gone up in price because the housing market is unsustainable here in California. Exactly. And I love that. Exactly. Why do you love that? Why do you love people not being able to buy houses? Oh, I'm sorry. 55% of Californians actually own their own homes. You want to tell those hardworking mom and pop landlords that, oh, sorry, the value of your price went down. Why? Because Gavin Newsom, a communist, by the way, decided to control the housing market through scary government intervention. Seems like the free market is actually you very keep prosperous. You fucking going. Oh, my God. Yeah. How can you say so little in, in this amount of words? It's like you're hooked right up to a fucking septic tank. My God. I looked up your house. I looked up your house on the internet, Hassan. I saw some pictures of <laughs> I saw some pictures of your house. It's a nice house. It's got a swimming pool. Yeah, that's right. My house is only a million dollars. Why can't mine be more? Uh well, you know, currently I think there's too much landmass in Texas and, and uh there's probably more areas to develop, but don't worry, your the price of your place is probably going up soon too, because some goddamn commies are leaving. California to go to Texas where there's actual freedom. It's kind of weird that you're you're sitting there in Texas talking about, you know, uh, how much you love communism. Meanwhile, you literally live in the, the freest state in America. How about we switch then? How about, okay, <laughs> I got a plan. You come you come to Texas, you live in my house, uh -huh. and then I will go to California and I'll live in yours. Well, here's the thing. I like to live as a capitalist in the- Stop looking at yourself. That's so, that's so weird. I, you're just like staring at yourself as you talk. I like to live- well, there's cameras everywhere. I'm just like looking at, uh, I like to look at different things. I have ADHD. Okay, right. Don't focus on that because you're losing the argument, sir. I'm not losing. I just think it's weird that you're looking straight at yourself while you're talking. I mean, everybody does that. No, you're just saying that to make yourself feel better. You want to yeah. know why I live in California? Why? Because I'm doing fifth column style infiltration. That's right. Every single day out here, I'm talking to people who are also communists and I'm telling them you're wrong. And uh, capitalism is the way forward. I've converted so many people. Oh, okay. So you're you're doing work. Yeah, I'm doing good work. Yeah. So why are they leaving then? Uh, people are leaving California because communism is awful. And they hate the communism that's happening in California. That's why they're leaving and going to Texas by the thousands, by the millions, as a matter of fact. Are they leaving by millions? No. no. Uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> Yes, of course they are. What do you mean? How about you go outside, Hassan, <laughs> and you go outside and you make a little right turn or a left turn or go straight and you look at the walls uh, and, 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 and streets full of homeless people in California and you tell them that they don't deserve housing, that they don't deserve a good life like you have. As a matter of fact, I do that every day. Why? Because I want them to grind harder. Because when I see a homeless person, I think, well, here's an opportunity for me to film them and make some money. But also... That I can pay them an exposure when I film them for my TikToks, okay? When I do an act of kindness to them, right? That's a, so, that's terrible. It's a mutually beneficial situation. I don't know what you're talking that's about. That's terrible. This is a, that's a terrible thing you just said. You think it's terrible to give homeless people money? Wow. Yeah. Typical commie 
Talks a big game about redistribution. I bet you go to a restaurant and give someone a fucking company car with a Feastables logo on that. You think she wants that? Oh, oh, hell yeah. You think she wants that? Why does she want that? She does want that. No, she doesn't. Go ahead and tell a minimum wage worker, a hard worker, as a matter of fact, that, you know, sorry, you got to keep taking the bus, sweaty, because this commie thought that it was unacceptable that you're driving in a fucking Feastables car. Listen, this is because we have such a... (laughs) Oh, it's so much fun to be a capitalist, dude. It's so much fun. Such a, we place such an importance on cars in this country when every single perfect country out in Europe and in Scandinavia especially, they have a robust public transportation systems. Yeah, disgusting. Uh, I'm you mean sorry. disgusting? It's not disgusting. It's beautiful. Uh, no, it's not. I love when I get on a bus, Hassan, and there's a crazy person sitting next to me. I think, wow, I'm seeing how the other side lives. That's that's fun for me. It's like, a, I feel like I'm in the thick of it. It's, it's exciting. There were a lot of times when I wanted to stop and be like, Schlatt, here's how you're supposed to defend this, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and don't you think that this is just a bit more efficient moving people, hundreds of people in a tiny area? Uh, as a matter of fact, it's called freedom. Like I said, you should look it up in the dictionary. But you're about efficiency. Are you not about efficiency, about about finding the, the best way? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I am. And cars are significantly more efficient than buses, which, by the way, checkmate. Is Jay Schlatt actually taking your joke serious? That's kind of sad. Dude, why is it like this? No, man, we're friends, and we're doing a bit, okay? He loves capitalism. I love socialism. But we did a role reversal for his debate show. Why is it that, like, every single time we do any kind of fucking jokes in here, there are, like, perma-stuck, no-joke Andes in here? I could literally be, uh, like, a militant defender of, of communism in the third world or some shit, And like one time, God forbid, I make a joke and they're like, what the fuck is going on? It's a song guy. He fucking owns a factory, dude. What the hell? What is happening? I cannot believe how dense people are sometimes. Oh, my Lord. Mate, bus, also a car, Schlatt. That's right. It's just an uglier one. What the fuck are you (laughs) talking about? Yeah, you would know what I'm talking about if you knew anything about freedom. (laughs) Today's episode of Ditch Lat Win is sponsored by Manscaped, the global men's <laughs> lifestyle. Confused. <laughs> I mean, you seem to be dodging my argument. And enjoy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm confused. I mean, you seem to be dodging my argument about oh, public transportation argument? being a more efficient way to move oh, people. Absolutely not. How America. is it not? You just said a bus is a car. That's all <laughs> yeah. you said. Yeah. Which, again, checkmate, a bus is a car, is it not? This is not checkmate. <laughs> why, why are you saying it, checkmate? A bus is a car, is just an uglier car. And? Yeah. Cars are better. Like, other kinds of cars that let you only have four people, sometimes two, which I have many of, by the way. You know, I, I, I specifically will buy cars that only have two, uh, you know, two seats in them so I can, you know, I can grind harder. I can destroy the planet more. This is so immoral, and yet I have no idea how to. No idea yeah, you don't how to know how to counter it, do you? Yeah, I don't right. know. A it's bus because... is a car. This, I guess, man. Is it not? It's a big car. You, you can talk <laughs> about trains. Also, car. No. Trains. Really? Is that what you're say? Categorically reject that notion <laughs> that a train is a car. Yeah, it's way worse. Trains have cars. Tra- a one big train has a bunch of different cars in it it's a totally different definition though these cars don't drive themselves it is way worse try to go to a drive-thru with a train okay you can't exactly checkmate times two (laughs) i'm not even looking at you anymore i'm looking away am i losing this how am i losing this this is the (laughs) stupidest shit i've ever heard because capitalism is the greatest system of all time okay let's Switch gears a little bit. You want to talk about cars? Let's let's. Oh, he thought he thought he had me on this one. This one was the worst one because he. <laughs> God, I hate the character you're playing so much, dude. I love I I love doing. At that point, I was just like, let's just have fun with it. But when I was saying like trains are cars, buses are cars, like I was like done making like steel man arguments. I was just like, I just want to say some like dumb shit. But um, uh, we move on to a different argument where Schlatt thinks, perhaps foolishly, that he actually has a good 
he has like better standing on. Let's put it in reverse. <laughs> Good one. Let's talk about net worth. All right. I did some research online. Bill Gates, a hundred. Oh, never mind. This isn't it. Sorry. Ten billion dollars of net worth. Jeff Bezos, I looked this up. 125 billion. Used to be more until that bitch took half. Yeah. Hassan Piker. Finty.com reports you have four million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I I need to grind harder. Are you saying you, you have more? <laughs> why'd you why'd you put it why'd you put me next to those two? Those are my idols. I love them. Do you think that Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos did all that work? Do you think he, he did 125 billion? Dollars worth of work? Uh, yes, he worked harder, but also he worked smarter. Bill Gates made Windows 8. That was a that was the stupidest fucking product I've ever had to deal with. Well, without it, without Windows, you wouldn't have a computer. I'm running Linux right now. My CPU is hot, but my core runs cold. Beat you in 17 lines of code. It is a real communist operating system. You need to you need to run code to turn it on. It is. It's open source. Anyone can use it. It's free, Hassan. Yeah. You don't need professional. You don't need a fucking license that you have to pirate. Everything's just available as it should be. Yeah, except that's why it's unintuitive and incredibly difficult to work, just like communism. It might be good in theory. Oh, everybody gets a Windows. Everybody gets an operating system. It's going to be great. Turns out, if that was the case, nobody would be able to even use it. And that is actually the main problem I have with communism. It sounds good. It sounds great. Oh, everyone can be rich. Not everyone can be rich, especially when those lazy people who simply don't want to work hard are going to take advantage of hard workers like myself, the, the real jobs providers. Shut the fuck up. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you. <laughs> you're awful, man. I mean, you of course you hate me because you're fucking because you're a communist. I watch your stream sometimes. You make you have four million dollars in the bank from Finty.com. That's what they report. Four million in the bank, <laughs> and all you do is watch videos. It's the stupidest yeah. fucking thing I've ever seen. You what do you watch? Like car? You watch like car chases now? Yeah. Imagine if all those people were on a bus, you wouldn't be watching shit. Bus is just a cooler car. Exactly. You just proved my point Here's for me. Here's what you do. Here's what you do, Hassan. You put on you put on content that the proletariat make, and then you watch and you fucking you say fucking nothing, and then you get all the profit. How many subs do you have? Fifty thousand? Seventy thousand. That's way too many. Uh, exactly. That's what you would think. Except I, on the other hand, deserve it. No, you don't. You do yes, not I do. do. I worked hard. You do not make. You do not do enough work to justify <laughs> seventy thousand subscribers on Twitch. Yeah. Well, guess what? People like how I uh, end up changing the dynamic of the content by making sweet, sweet capitalist arguments as to why this content. Half the time, I'm looking at communist stuff. Ew, yuck. Is wrong and immoral and shouldn't be taught to children. Like sharing is caring. A concept that. I think is laughable. What did the French invent that shit? It's disgusting. The more I hear you talk, the more I want to come to your house and f <laughs> <laughs> Well, guess what? I have turrets outside of my house. You have apartment. turrets? You have, I have, you have I, turrets? I, yeah. I have, I have auto turrets outside of my house. Let me show you something. Let me show okay. you something. I'll send you a photo, okay? Boom. You seeing that? See that? Nice. Austin, 101 degrees, sunny. Yeah. You see that you see that you see the 10 day forecast? 103 high, 104, 104, 104, 103, 103, 103, 103. I took that photo a year and a half ago when it got really hot. Isn't that fucked up? This is what global warming is doing. This is because of people like you spewing out carbon fossil fuels and you're turning the climate into something that's uninhabitable. Well, it <laughs> of course, it's not surprising to me that the communist would bring up the falsehood of falsehood. global warming falsehood. of course is a chinese conspiracy i've heard Everybody so many that. arguments that say this is real okay <laughs> here's a counter to you uh 25 people died in buffalo be under a uh, heavy snowfall uh doesn't seem like the glow it doesn't seem like the climate's warming too much is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah go tell that to the people of buffalo i guess you couldn't because they're buried <laughs> under snow Exactly. Yeah. And if the climate was warming, which it definitely is not, perhaps it would be better for colder areas. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry that you get to sit in your capitalist created car with the AC that the capitalists invented 
and then you, uh, you know, look at your phone, an iPhone, by the way, I can see it. Your screenshot implies it's iPhone. Clear another invention by capitalists. Oh no, I'm in a capitalist world. I have to consume capitalist products. It's not like I can buy buy fucking Soviet phone five over here. Yeah, how about how about you live by your values? Is this too hard? Oh, I'm sorry. How about you say that? To the Zapatistas. What am I supposed to get? Am I supposed to get a? Am I supposed to get a fucking Moto G? You're supposed to do a revolution now. That's how this works. I haven't rallied the masses yet. I need to. I need more. I need to beat you in this debate. Yeah. Where people will vote at DigSlatWin.com yeah, and at DigSlatWin on Twitter. Once I get enough people to vote for my side, the communist side. That is when I think the, the revolution begins. I think it starts with me. It's not even a communist principle to think that a one man could create or bring about a revolution, sir. I want to go back to this argument about the house. Okay. 2.74. I'm not kidding. I, I could, when I say I could be a better right-wing broadcaster than like 98% of right-wing broadcasters, I'm not joking, okay? Oh my God, there's no shot How do I? There you go. You could debate yourself with the talking points. I could. I could. I should, honestly. I should do that more. I should just like debate myself and saying that you debated Schlag before e but that makes a lot of sense considering it's you and you're racist <laughs> true it'd be hard for you to keep up the right wing act someone is going to take that serious due to no tone indicators yes leftism is when uh, leftism is when you are neurodivergent and cannot comprehend uh, a context uh, and, and then turn around and, and <laughs> imply that it's uh, your fault, like someone else's fault. What is this? You forgot to mention Spooky Gaming? You couldn't do a Dave Hank Pecker. You'd never make it grifting for the right. Yeah, it would be hard. Four million dollars. Excuse me, sir. It's it's higher now. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I haven't checked his estimate recently. Five five million. Five million. It doubled. Maybe doubled in value. Some might look at that and say, "Wow, it seems like the housing market is fundamentally broken. That a house value could go up so dramatically over the course of two years." I say to that, I would say that. Uh, yeah, you would say that. I would. To that, I would say, you just hate freedom. Why do you need? Four beds and three and a half baths in this house. I looked up the floor plan. Why do you need that? Why do you need a full pool? Who who has a pool in their bed? It's just it's just it's unnecessary. I don't even use it. You don't even use the pool. You don't even use the pool. I just look at it because I can. That's fucked up. What I mean, what else do you do with your money? This is uh, obviously you spend it on shit you don't need. Mm -hmm. I bet you put it in index funds and it appreciates at a 10% rate per year. All the time. So fucked. I'm doing tax evasion, which I like to call tax avoidance, which is, of course, legal. Invest in defense contractors. Like, those guys are always getting money from the government. I mean, they, they do a great job. You know what they do? What? They look at American freedom and say, why not other countries also have similar freedoms 
and they drop bombs of freedom on other countries to liberate them. They drop bombs on innocent people. No, not innocents. innocent. Yes, innocents. Those are people living their lives. America has never killed someone who didn't deserve it. <gasps> Look up this guy. You want to see something funny? Look up Obama. Kunduz Hospital. How about that? Yeah. You know that, you know that hospital? You know that hospital he blew up? You know why he blew it up? Why'd he blow it up? The doctors in there were Italian and French. Ew. Doctors without borders? That's some communist propaganda. How about we have some border security? Let me tell you what I do. I <laughs> donate all my money. Uh-huh. <laughs> I am so unhinged. I'm sorry. I am literally my biggest fan, dude. It's fucked up. <laughs> all my millions that I make, Great. I donate all of it. Oh, you're... Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. So you claim to be a socialist? Yeah. No, communist. You claim to be a communist and yet you make millions of dollars? I give it away to the people. I give it away to the That's people. That's crazy. My house is even... only a million. Oh, yeah? Your house is only My a million? My house is only a million. My... How many homeless people have you opened your door up There's to? only one bedroom. Well, that one bedroom in your million dollar house, which is so expensive, I bet you paid more for it specifically so you could beef up the housing market make nope. it even worse and no. make it more that was the lowest price because it's so fucked up over here yeah yeah I don't know, at that point it like it slipped a little bit i forgot how, where at this point i was basically <laughs> i for i forgot what i was doing at that point you know i was like fuck i <laughs> which part am i which part am i debating again <laughs> I don't know enough about Texas housing market. Exactly. Like, you don't know you don't know enough about anything. You know what I do know though? What do you know? Communism means no house. Uh, you look real cool saying that. You look real cool saying that. Thank you. I donate all my money. Yeah, you know you know what you donated to the house fund. No, I didn't. I donate Cars for Kids. You know those commercials? 1877 Cars for Kids. I do not. K A R S Cars for Kids. Uh huh. 1877 Cars for Kids. Donate your car today. I don't. I, Who are you pointing at? No one. <laughs> I'm just I'm just feeling myself, dude. I'm like <laughs> I buy a car every month and then at the end of the month I donate it to Cars for Kids. <laughs> Wow. I donate to Susan G. Komen for a cure. Also capitalist, by the way. No. Yes. They're a great charity. No, they 501c3s are run by CEOs that make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Susan G. Komen being a, a primary example of this. Whose side are you on? Well, I, I think that that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. You know why? I got you, my... <laughs> I, like I said, I I slipped out of the character for a moment there, <laughs> and I like that motherfucker because they have to. I knew this guy <laughs> because they have to. They work hard. CEOs work so hard in this country, and mm -hmm. Susan G. Komen mm -hmm. wants to make sure that they have the best talent. You know what I just did, his son? What? I just showed you true colors. <laughs> I know what you are. I don't know what you're talking about. I love capitalism. I got you. I got you on my side right there for a second. I, love, I, I love saw capitalism. a little glimpse of something, of something beautiful. I saw a glimpse of Kami in there. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like if you want to be a right winger, it's so easy. Just look at, just point to a terrible thing and say, "I think it's neat." <laughs> okay, it's literally like 98 percent of Republican arguments. It revolves around someone. Pointing to something like awful, evil, and going, no, I actually like that. That shit slaps super fucking hard. Fuck you. Not. Oh, yeah. First of all, <clears throat> philanthropies are capitalists, though. What do I mean by this? It's wonderful capitalists like yourself, secretly, who have made a lot of money, who want to give some of it back to the people who deserve it. Why? Because the government doesn't know how to distribute it. When the government distributes those funds, who do they give it to? I don't know. They're friends. Are you done? <laughs> I can't believe he cut me like that. Okay. So let's be real. Let's keep it a buck fifty. There's another debate. Wait, I'm gonna ask him if he wants to like put it up. Cause I don't wanna I smoked him even harder than this one on that one.
Oh, perfect. Uh, don't vote for Hassan, guys. Vote Schlatt. What do you mean? That's crazy. You should do a debate where you argue Steven Seagal is the best actor of all time. The thing is, like, I love... I love debates on dumb shit. You know what I mean? Like dumb shit debates are my favorite. You're currently smoking Schlatt on the pole. Well, yeah, because his audience immediately voted for him. And then, and then, uh, and then I, wait, what? Rage gave Phantom yeah. weight loss tips? I'm finish out the day. Like, like for you to stay what you is or for you to get a little, you know what I'm I think I, I I think I think you'll be good off like 2300 2300 2300 2500 start there see if you gain or lose like hey go 25 go 25 and see what happens check this Rage is fucking so smart and he's so right yeah that's actually great I don't even know how much phantom weighs but like I'm 2300 at a deficit and he's absolutely correct on this. Yeah, on the week, see if you went up, stayed, or went lower. Yeah, I was doing it. I was eating 4,300 a day. And I didn't Whoa. notice. It, no, I didn't notice, though. I was like, why y'all doing that? <laughs> why y'all doing that? I didn't know. What? Bro! Bro! That's half of Michael Phelps when he's training for the fucking Olympics level. Bro, why is he eating like a linebacker, dude? What the fuck? There is no way he's like burning that. How much does he weigh? What do you use to track your calories? Uh, I uh, use use uh, my fitness pal. How you didn't notice you scarf your fucking? I'm like, out in the abs. I'm like, damn, I eat a lot. So you understand okay. you you eating what the average person eats in two days. That's like one and a half Big Macs. The fuck you mean? Actually, you're wrong. Big Macs are 550 calories a pop. So. That would be around, uh, what, like eight Big Macs. <laughs> so, no. You're wrong about that. Um, how is he eating that much and counting it still? It's smart. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, eating out will, will get you to fucking uh, that number easy by the way uh, like i have days where i eat that for sure no way he counted right no you can if you the reason why he hit 4k is probably because um he probably tried <laughs> he probably tried uh to 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 track his macros one time he probably tried tracking his macros without changing anything which is what you know, dietitians or trainers will suggest you do to get a better understanding of what your like, <clears throat> what your caloric intake is. So that's probably what he did. And if you're eating out all the time, like, yeah, you will definitely rack up for four k. Especially if you, especially if you enjoy treats, like, especially if you enjoy like uh really carby foods you know what i mean if, if you drink your calories for example oh my god there are so many ways there are so many easy ways where you can just like rack that up fucking drink two milkshakes you know what i mean like boom it's over the thing is snacks sugary shit chips donuts carby and fatty foods are not very filling, especially if the type of carbs that you're having are not like fibrous. If it's like processed sugar, um, you will rack up an incredible amount of calories without even recognizing it. But if you eat dense foods, like protein dense foods, it's going to be a lot more difficult. Like the example I will give you is this. One milkshake. Let's take a look. As the Hasanabi uh, gives you food tips uh, hour once again. Um, <clears throat> one milkshake from Johnny Rockets Oreo calories. Okay, milkshake Johnny Rockets Oreo calories. 970 calories. Okay, here's what that fucking looks like for the record. Let's, 
Like, this is what that looks like. It's just one thing of milkshake, okay? It always, it usually comes with the with a side too, like this, which I think is fucking sick. Uh, when I was a when I was a young lad, I used to love consuming these. Whenever I came to America, it comes with this like second, you know. There's like more Oreo in here too, okay. So that in and of itself is you know not that filling, not that big, but it's 970 fucking calories, right? That's a lot. If you were to have straight white chicken breast, okay, which has the best macronutrient density, um, for you to reach 970 calories, you would need to have more than three chicken breasts, like big ones, okay? Here you go. A chicken breast, two ounces of chicken breast have 60 calories in it. No one looks at that milkshake and thinks, oh, this is only like 200 calories. No one that drinks milkshakes thinks about the calories of the milkshake. Let's be fucking real. Okay. In terms of the most amount of pure protein and calories, egg whites are pure protein. Okay, calm down. Uh, egg whites are nasty as fuck, though, if you just s exclusively have that. Okay. Baskin Robbins Oreo milkshake. 2,600 calories in one fucking serving. Jesus, Lord, mercy on my fucking soul. That is... <coughs> 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 has more fucking calories than than like that's crazy brother that is so fucked up this can't be real i don't believe this Anyway, my point is this. Milkshakes have, uh, milkshakes are easy to consume. Drinkable calories are usually very threatening if you're trying to fucking lose weight. And um, if you do, if you just eat whatever the fuck you want and calculate it throughout the day, especially if you're eating out, you are going to, you are going to pack on a shitload without even realizing it. Days in one day, my nigga? Damn, you want to have days buddy. in one day? I understand now. <laughs> look, 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 look. Now I'm That's growth. Five hundred a day, but I'm gonna keep going down. I know. I, what? What the fuck? I saw this TikTok a while back. What is this? How to burn belly fat? This belly fat is known as this visceral fat. It's the fat that starts developing around your intestines, squeezing your organs. So let's. Is it's the most dangerous kind of fat too? Um. Men usually get this. That's why they get that, like, um, it's, it's more prominent. It's more prevalent in men uh, over women. Uh, there is no spot reduction for fat, for the record. I'm sure this guy is going to explain it to you, okay, for the record. There is no such thing as spot reduction for fat. I don't know if this video is going to say that or not, but it is entirely up to how your body, it's entirely up to your genetics there is no such thing as spot reduction. Um, you will never be able to like target a specific area and lose weight there unless you get liposuction, which is very dangerous process. <clears throat> you can just lose fat and your body has uh, a different distribution of fat. If you are not eating, uh, if you're eating at a deficit, which is lower than the amount of calories that you burn in one day uh, through survival and plus like your you know daily activity, your lifestyle choices and whatever, you're going to start losing weight. And in that process, your body is going to start losing fat that it has stored up. Okay? You can't do it, though. You can't do it in, like, a spot. Uh, you can't do it in, like, a particular spot. There's no such thing. So anytime someone tells you you can lose, uh, you can do spot reduction, they're lying. At most, something that, like, professional bodybuilders use oftentimes is, like, certain creams that will dry out areas and... It gives, it gives the impression that you've lost some weight there. All it's doing is like basically drying out 
the water in a, in a particular part, but even that is also junk science for the most part. You can just tighten your skin, but that's it. And uh, it's not going to work for you if you're already like, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds overweight regardless. Um, and, and you know, the, the, the bodybuilders only use that during competition anyway, and they're already at like, you know, a sub 7% body fat. So for that reason, they get like an additional... Um, you know, an additional benefit from that. So, <sighs> women tend to switch where they gain weight after menopause. Before menopause, it happens all over. After, it's the belly and breasts. Yeah. So, like I said, there's no such thing as spot reduction. You can just, like, lose weight and, and, and you know, if you're fortunate and you can hide it well, I guess, you know, maybe cause some people like, you know, pack it up in their fucking cheeks, for example. Like I'm one of those people that my face doesn't get very fat. Um, so I hide it. Well, it's like, I have belly fat right now and I have a little bit of fat on my, on my, you know, above my butt, uh, on my sides, but that's pretty much it. And a little bit of fat on my titties around my nipples. But other than that, you know, I'm, you know, the most common places uh, where you store fat regardless are your legs, your inner thighs, your ass, your boobs, your belly, uh, your arms like this, like around here. <clears throat> Those are the most common places that uh, store fat. You got gyno? No, I don't. Um, but, you know, I got a, I got, I currently have a little bit of a, a, you know, a little bit of muffin top action going on. Um. Anyway, I'm going to pee while this plays. Let's talk about how to shrink it. Fat is a type of energy in your body. And these are the two major hormones that control which energy source you're going to use. So when the insulin's up and the glucagon's down, you're burning more carbs for fuel. And when the insulin's down and the glucagon's up, you're burning more fat for fuel. So to burn the belly fat, we need the insulin down and the glucagon up. So now let's say you finished dinner and your insulin levels went up. Now your glucagon levels went down. And remember what that means. You're now burning the carbs because you got to burn the dinner you just ate. However, every food has a different effect on your insulin and glucagon levels. For example, look at the effect of your insulin levels from carbs compared to protein and fat. So if you have a high carb dinner like pasta or pizza or roti or a bunch of rice, your insulin levels would shoot up a lot higher compared to a meal that's rich in protein and fat and lower in carbs or more fibrous carbs. Fiber drastically reduces your insulin spikes. Look at the difference between oranges versus orange juice. The food industry removes fiber from our food so we eat more, keeping you in carb burning mode. I like to call this rule FFP, fiber, fat, and protein. Well, now your insulin only spiked that high. So let's say you finish your dinner at 7 p.m. At 8 p.m. you start fasting. By 12 o'clock, your blood sugar is normalized. By 2 a.m., your insulin levels drop. And by 4 a.m., your glucagon goes up. Now, this is if you had a healthy meal. If you had pasta and pizza. So basically, you need to be rich so you can eat well and have a trainer go to the gym, etc., etc. It used to be that Ruben S. bodies were a marker of wealth, therefore beautiful. Now it's the opposite because of the prevalence of high caloric food in the American diet, even for the poor. I mean, I was the most shredded when I was the most broke. So that's technically not true. You're right, being rich and having a lot of free time or being able to, like, hire these fucking people would truly make it easier for you. But uh, you're right on, on the systemic side, but that should not stop you from trying your very best. It's all a matter of... It is all a matter of... of uh, <clears throat> it is all a matter of lifestyle choices that you can change, that you have the power to do so. Um, especially when, uh, you know, the, the reality is that <laughs> Jeff Nipper would explode if he watched this. Yeah. I don't know what this guy's talking about. And also I'm not a big keto guy. Uh, I don't really, I don't really care about that. I'm a calories in calories out guy. Yeah. Honestly, I hate these arcane videos that make it seem so complicated and gamifying weight loss. Weight loss is difficult for many, but it is simple. At the end of the day, calories are a source of energy. So if you consume more than your body burns, you gain fat. And the less, you lose fat. Yeah. That's it. A lot of these like hormonal imbalances or whatever the fuck. Yeah, there's truth to it. You don't need to know. You're going to say poor people have less self-control. That's why they're fat. Absolutely not. I would never say that. 
that chatter is 100% correct. When you're poor, you have less time to make these considerations. When you're poor, it's harder for you to fucking diet. When you're poor, the healthy substitutes that are very expensive are not going to be easily accessible to you. There is a reason why in America now, poor people are fatter than wealthier people. Unlike back in the day when you were a fucking oil baron or gout was considered to be like the king's disease. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you have no time for food prep or anything like that. You might not even have time to, you know, work out. My point is, it's not impossible. It's certainly not impossible. I absolutely recognize the systemic problems, the systemic hurdles that are in front of you for anything when you're poor, really. I mean, it's not just weight loss. Everything fucking sucks when you're broke. It just doesn't mean it's impossible. It's much, much, much more difficult. Uh, but, you know, it's not impossible. What supplements do you take for your diet? I don't do anything. I guess uh, fish oil pills. And because um, I don't eat any seafood. Uh, I, I take fish oil pills for joint health. And I also take creatine pills because it's easier than drinking like a fucking big ass uh, protein shake at night. So, it's not keto. He's saying high protein makes you less likely to overconsume on calories because protein and fibrous foods fill you up more. Understanding this makes the calorie deficit easier to do because it guides you how to make your diet. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is true, though. High protein is good uh, because, you know, you need protein for muscle development. My doctor made me stop taking fish oil pills because she said it was raising my cholesterol. Wait, really? Anyway, do you take pre-workout? No, I take a double shot espresso before I work out. What is this? Fully convinced this anti-fat phobia stuff is being pushed by fast food, junk food lobbyists? Mm. You're judging my food choices based on a false standard of health again, aren't you? Guilty. Diet culture, fat phobia, and systems of oppression have created false hierarchies of... <laughs> yeah, that shit was... That shit I went hard on Twitter when it was popping so off. For you. Oh no, are they moldy? I've talked Wait, about this months poisoned? ago. Are you allergic? No, I'm just saying. Mm. You're judging my food choices based on a false standard of health again, aren't you? Like, the donut is the worst thing you could use to make this point. Like, the fuck is... That's crazy. Like... It objectively, okay, like I get it, good food, bad food, blah, blah, blah. But like a donut objectively is like one of the worst things you can consume. I say this as like someone who fucking loves donuts. You know what I mean? Donuts is not that bad. Yes, it is. It has nothing in it. It is just fucking carbs and fat. No, it's the worst fucking thing you can. No, it is so bad. Shut the fuck up. It's so bad. That doesn't mean you can't have it. Okay, you can as a treat. Just know what you're consuming, though. It's got literally nothing in it that is, like, helpful for you. It just tastes incredible, okay? That's it. That's the only... The, it just makes you feel good when you eat it, and then very bad if you eat, like, eight of them in a row, like I do, okay? Like, the argument that they're trying to make here... The argument that they're trying to make here is that, like, only, the only bad food, it's not good to say good food, bad food, blah, blah, blah. But, like, pointing to a fucking donut is so stupid. High sugar, high fat, zero fiber, zero protein, zero vitamins. Yeah, it's just fucking sugar and fat. It is a fried bread with sugar on it. Calm the fuck down. Like, she could have used a, yeah, a Whopper would be a better example. A, a... Uh, a, a Big Mac would have been a better example of like a uh, uh, food that is like something that you would expect is like really bad nutritiously. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's all fake shit in it. So it's like obviously not as good as like a real burger that you could have, uh, especially if you're like controlling how much butter you put in it or whatever the fuck. But like a Big Mac still has protein in it at least. 550 calories is like way more 
A Big Mac is like way more balanced than a fucking donut. Guilty. Diet culture, fat phobia, and systems of oppression have created false hierarchies of food and it shows up everywhere. For instance, harmful thought patterns like earning food through exercising or that dessert is the reward for the punishment of eating vegetables. Remember that you do not need to earn food. We are all incorrectly taught from a young age that our size and therefore the foods that we eat are markers of our self-worth. Moralizing food can lead to harmful relationships with food and disordered eating. Instead of focusing on good and bad choices, try to approach food with neutrality in mind. The only foods that are bad for you are foods that contain allergens, poisons, and contaminants, or food that is spoiled or is otherwise inedible. Eat without guilt. When people say something is bad, they just mean like it's not very healthy for you to consume. That's it. I'm sorry. The idea that we're having a fucking semantics conversation over this, especially when there's like a hidden nefarious agenda behind it, is so silly and it's so fucking stupid. Okay? No. We, I covered this back then and I lost my fucking mind when I covered this back then. Like, if you're talking about teaching people how to eat, hyper-focusing on vegetables being bad is really bad. That's a horrible thing to do. I love veggies, okay? For the, for the longest fucking time, I never really ate anything green. I didn't like it. I ate like a child. Now I love it. I eat a salad for every meal, okay? Both of my meals are salads. And it's awesome. It's delicious. It tastes great. Um, I just hate that, like, they make it seem like saying veggies is bad is not the same as, like, saying that, like, oh, a veggie tastes bad, therefore it's bad, but a donut is good, therefore it's good is so fucking annoying is so silly it's so stupid it's so fucking annoying donuts are bad in the sense that they have their macronutrients are fucking awful okay they're not good that doesn't mean you shouldn't have it that doesn't mean you can't have it ever but just know what you're having this is like shell doing the carbon calculator but for the donut lobby yeah regardless of what society says smarter and second I got us dope. Anyway, and then, you know, turns out black nutritionist creating false uh, video shared by LA school district features nutritionist teaching kids to be unhealthy. Turns out she works for Mondelez, a company that makes junk food. Yeah. It's like, turns out there's a secondary reason for why they were like, hey, I just want to let you guys know there's no such thing as bad food like Oreos. Nah. Let's be fucking real. It's not good. Okay? When people say it's good, it's bad, they don't mean like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's bad across the board. They just mean it's like not healthy for you. I saw someone talk about this on TikTok and he was making the point that it's not helpful to call food bad because it just makes you feel guilty. And in reality, all food has some sort of nutritional value because we need carbs and calories too. No, no, that's not true. I'm sick and tired of this fucking argument. You, are, you will not. No, that's not true at all, man. That's not fucking true. For the record, yes, a healthy, balanced diet is important. The entire reason why people say donuts are bad is because it, it makes it impossible to have a healthy diet. That's the point. That's it. That's the point, okay? I eat a balanced diet every fucking day, okay? Here, I, I will literally look through my calories yesterday, and I will tell you exactly what percentage I consumed yesterday. It's super simple on MyFitnessPal where I track all my fucking calories, okay? Okay? For lunch, I had the salad that I have all the time, the sweet green salad, warm wild rice, two servings of roasted chicken, one serving of sweet green roasted sweet potatoes, one serving of spicy broccoli, two servings of spicy cashew dressing, uh, and one uh, half of a, a thing of a miso ginger dressing. It's got some other stuff in it too, like tomatoes, whatever. Those are like 10 calories here and there. So I don't really care about it too much. I don't really care to like uh, clock that too much in there. And I had an Oreo uh, bar from Quest. I had 
34% carbs, 38% fat, and 28% protein, okay? That was 71 grams of protein, 42, 42 grams of uh, fat, and 85 grams of carbs. Then for dinner, I had a chipotle steak. Uh, I had a chipotle steak salad, okay, which was black beans, cilantro, lime, brown rice, cheese, fresh tomato salsa, romaine lettuce, green chili salsa, red chili salsa, steak, guacamole, and I had that with a side of Quest chips, sweet and spicy Quest chips that are 140 calories. Hold on, I gotta take this little one out real quick. My point is, that was Anne, Anne. I'm going to take her outside in a second. Bro, these are not salads. Brother, they are bowls, okay? They're bowls with greens in it. Okay? And, by the way, this is delicious as fuck, for the record. Like, what I'm eating is, like, a delicious uh, uh, and, and nutritious uh, two different, uh, salads, uh, throughout the day. It's, it's bowls. Um, so that was 25, uh, 25% protein, which was 62 grams, 46 uh, grams of fat, which was 42% uh, fat and 33% uh, carbs, which was 82 grams of carbs. Okay. And then after that, I had a little treat at night. What did I have? My mom made banana nut cake. I had uh, a slice of that, and I had that with ice cream. Nick's ice cream, campfire s'mores uh, ice cream. Can you take her outside? No, why? Are you feeling caffeinated? Did you like it? I made this bougie bitch drink an Erewhon uh, shake. This advice isn't for people like you. Language like that leads to disordered eating for some people, like people with EDs purging because they feel like shit for eating one to one donut. It's an inherently good idea to take morality out of eating. Maybe it's semantics for you, but don't knock the sentiment. What did he? What did she do? Did she pee? Okay. Again, I'm not talking to motherfuckers with eating disorders. Okay, we're not talking to people with eating disorders. When I have a normal conversation about like, let's say, let's say I tell you, hey guys, touching grass is good. Or, hey guys, working out and lifting heavy weights is actually a good thing. And then someone goes, I'm quadriplegic. How dare you say that working out is good for you? It's like, okay, well, I guess I wasn't talking to you then. You know what I mean? I'm talking to the broad majority here. Not everything has to like factor in every single person, okay? Those people are not talking to people with eating disorders. They're talking to everyone. And they're using a nefarious, they're using language that you should be directing towards people with eating disorders uh, that they're using to a broader public while they're simultaneously getting paid by Mondelez to make it seem like Oreos are not quote unquote bad by using this like incredibly pedantic semantics argument, okay? It's very frustrating to see this over and over again. I, I hate that because the takeaway from that is not that like, oh yeah, it's uh, I should uh, fucking have a healthier relationship with food. The takeaway from that is like, I shouldn't feel bad for fucking, uh, you know, I shouldn't, I, I should be fine with like changing my, I should be fine with like dieting uh, and wanting to diet and then like eating Oreos uh, as a, as a, you know, nutrient dense food instead of a substitute that would be significantly better. Why are you doing the same exact speech that you did five months ago? Couldn't you just link the video? I don't know. Uh, it's important to have this conversation again. These chatters are literally doing the individualistic thing you mentioned on the pod save America podcast. Oh yeah, I did do that. Nobody likes to talk about this, but there's no way we can hold the ideas. Black people have short lifespans due to heart disease and hypertension, and it is fat phobic to criticize the normalcy of obesity and unhealthy diets in our community in our heads at the same time. Good for Lizzo and her career success, but if that's the beauty standard, we're fucked. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't be judging ourselves and our bodies with the prism of multimillionaires who can afford whatever health care they need, but also don't really have the daily life stressors of working class existence to contend with if they decide to get fit. 
As racist as fuck, this is, this is a black person. Ethan and the H3 crew, did you wrong? Wait, what? I didn't go on Pod Save America. I went on John Favreau's new podcast uh, offline. Like, I, I appreciate what Lizzo's doing because, like, she's also working out. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like she's uh, trying to be unhealthy. You know what I mean? Their fan base really does not like you. Whose fan base? Pod Save America's fan base? Oh, of course they don't like me. They're fucking libs. The bully pulpit argument is such a dumb one. The only re dude, are you kidding me? Of course their fucking fan base doesn't like me. One, this is on Reddit. The problem with the song's bully pulpit argument, along with pretty much any of his opinions on the effectiveness of Sanders' presidency, is that he believes that most Americans secretly agree with everything he does, and if only the corporate media stops sabotaging him. Everything from how he judges the actions of Biden and Obama to how he thinks the Sanders presidency would play out is nonsensical because he's unwilling to accept the reality that most Americans don't agree with his politics. The student loans thing is a good example. He just can't wrap his head around the idea that not Americans are leftist college student. Yeah, except student loans, the student loans argument is like a relatively popular one, except the media tries to make it seem like it's not. I, I hate this. Trump also tapped into people's deep-seated hatred for the other, which is highly effective in motivating people. I cannot imagine caring what this numbnuts has to say. He literally made the Bernie will hold a rally and force senators to change their positions argument. Law, this guy's like the 1% of the top, line, uh, top online left. Um, I suspect the Friends of the Pod uh, subreddit is full of the most smarmy, annoying, delusional neoliberals that keep saying good things cannot happen. Good things cannot happen. Better things are not possible. Shut the fuck up, Andes. There's also 35 people online here, and I've given this subreddit more clout than it ever has. And given random fucking uh, uh, weird internet debate lords, uh, more clout than they will ever get. These are ideas that I have debated a million times over. Hassan Piker is literally the face of the scold left. That's going to be a much better guest. Okay, yeah, exactly. There you go. That's all you need to know about these fucking weirdos. Uh, they're they're neoliberals who want to fucking go in and like uh, debate in in uh, you know in 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 forums. It's worthless. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because, like, guess what? Hey, sucks to suck, but uh, I guess John Favreau likes me, okay? There was this brilliant and positive Reddit thread on you the other day on the socialism subreddit. A group of a lot, people a lot more intelligent than a friend. Is Hassan Piker a champagne socialist despite his great efforts to distance himself from those claims? As a young person, I found it pretty nice to have a person who adopts some socialist values be a streamer on Twitch because that's super accessible for me. But everyone calls him a hypocrite because he doesn't actually practice what he preaches. I'm not being a hater by saying that. I'm genuinely asking with peace and love. What do you guys think? Personally, I don't think he's in the wrong. He's not exploiting anyone for money. His money was made through completely optional donations and subscriptions. I think he's doing a good thing. He's brought thousands of young people into socialism or at least anti-capitalist mindset. People are definitely overly critical of him. We all have angles. He was a literal bourgeois capitalist with factories. Um... <laughs> they are, they moderate like crazy. That's probably why it's like a more positive take. Marxism is entirely hating, isn't entirely hating on rich because they're rich. It's mostly critique on how people make money. None of Hassan's wealth comes from stealing surplus value of employees because of this. I don't think any of his wealth or resources, while maybe abundant, are contradictory socialist views at all. Although I'm sure he's happy with how much he's making. You could literally argue that Hassan himself is having some of his labor value stolen by Twitch and Amazon. Did she pee and poop? Okay, great. Thank you. If you were an unsuccessful streamer, they would make fun of you for being a loser. You can't win. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you, Marop. Kaya Cam is back on. Kaya is back. What is this? Buying Gucci bags and other super luxury clothing is probably something he could live without. Gucci bags and other super luxury clothing. He was also bought. He also bought other expensive clothing, like a six hundred dollar Versace shirt. I've, I don't own a single Versace shirt. I don't know what the fuck this guy's talking about. I have bought things that are way more expensive than that, though. Of course I have. I have money, and I buy expensive things. I'm a fucking idiot. Like 
Suck my dick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone engages in this kind of thing. Oh, she went outside and got a little taste of freedom. Now she's going fucking crazy. Guys, all right, I'm going to turn off the Kai cam for now because, uh, you know, you guys are going to be unbearable. Buying into hyper-capitalist con uh, consumerism is probably not good for socialism or anyone of any ideology, really. The vast majority of clothing and other products, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it, again, this is so stupid. This guy is just simply saying, I don't like that he buys expensive clothes. Like, that's all he's saying. That's not an argument for political economy. That's not an argument at all. You are literally, once again, personally subscribing to the same kind of fucking dumbass right-wing uh, perspective. Like, you might have a genuine opinion on it. You might be like, I don't really like uh, expensive clothing. I think it's hedonistic. I think it's stupid. For me, I agree. I, I do think that you're correct on that. You know what I mean? You're correct. You're correct on that assessment. I recognize it. I don't really give a shit, though. That's the thing. I'm not supposed to be this, like, fucking moral arbiter of what is right and what is wrong, especially in the way that I conduct myself. And the way that I conduct myself, I usually do. Back up. On... Go back up on the bed. Go to bed. On the bed. Like, I'm not racist, transphobic, that kind of thing. But as far as like buying expensive clothes, yes, I do that. And uh, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? I, I don't have an issue with it. I don't think there's a problem with it. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, that's it. I just want people to have more liberties, uh, both in their workplaces and also in general. Oh, my God. Except for Kaya. I don't want her to have any liberty, as you can see. I did because she's being annoying and, and uh, I'm trying to mitigate how annoying chat will be. So the vast majority of clothing and other products are made in child slave sweatshops. So by your logic, you're also betraying your ideology because you also buy products in these hyper capitalist sweatshops. No, him buying a Gucci shirt does not betray his values and the optics of buying a Gucci shirt is simply a dog whistle by the right to continue label socialism as this poverty cult where you can never have nice things. I agree. I would never turn around and say I'm buying expensive things as a, as a form of activism to like fucking, uh, you know, tell you that like socialism is about, is not about being poor. I don't believe that. I think these are stupid, foolish consumer choices. I make them all the time. You make them all the time. The entire point is that you should have enough financial security so you can make those foolish consumption choices if you would like to. It is incredibly fucking stupid to, to uh, police the, the personal consumption of people as long as it's not like something that is like truly abhorrent, okay? Exactly. There's much zero difference between buy Gucci or probably 99% of brands and consum consumer ethics. Yet, yep, and ultimately, if we were to break down every single aspect of our lives, you could argue that everything we do is against our ideology. My point wasn't about consumer ethics. Look at the above comment. Why is buying designer clothes, if you have money, any different than buying anything else that isn't strictly necessary for Herman's survival? People were mad at Hassan bought a Gucci suit for that one award show. There's literally nothing to be upset about that. Look at my point for the above comment. My argument has nothing to do with ethical consumption. Of course, there's no ethical consumption. My argument is about buying into hyper-consumerist capitalist culture. It's probably not good for anyone to buy into. And that is also what makes you a hypocrite if, you, if I ever talk about it, which I'm sure Hassan has uh, condemned. This motherfucker doesn't even know my positions on this stuff. He's calling me Hassan and uh, he's just like making up arguments in his head to like perceive hypocrisy. Internally, he recognizes that uh, at the systemic level, there is no uh, inherent contradiction, but he's made up uh, an assessment in his mind. And now people are expected to debate this person on what he has created in his mind. That's fucking crazy. And it basically is like 98% of um, 98% of, of, uh, online debates. This is what it devolves into. This is what it reduces. This is what it is like reduced into. Also, I don't care what the right would say this because I have a completely different argument. People have addressed your take very well. She's barking in the background, but we are not going to pay attention to a crying puppy because that would be feeding into negative behavior. 
People have addressed your take very well. I don't understand how you can see no difference between consumers, capitalist uh, culture, and ethical consumption. <sighs> both, both have to do with consumption under capitalism, consumers' consumption, in which way my argument still stands. You got to stop arguing in bad faith and just hating on people for no reason. Consumers, capitalist culture is just mainstream culture. There's no escape of that under capitalism. Anyway. Also, I've never said I'm a perfect socialist. I don't know what, a, what that even means. I don't know why that is the expectation. I am a fucking Twitch streamer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that guy literally goes, there's no ideological inconsistency, but I've made up a social inconsistency. And I've also simultaneously uh, claimed that like uh, you're, you're engaging in something in a way that you would actually uh have an issue with i made that up in my mind anyway um speaking of uh dickheads online uh this is internet anarchist who uh is, is addressed in a tweet that uh you know he got a false copy strike which is really fucked up by the way um I, I, from Aiden Ross, which I got as well for the record, it was a false copy strike of a video that I'm in, I'm in, which is uh -huh. fucked up. It, it's insane. Here's Aiden Ross celebrating the false strike. W chat, by the way, this is, um, Hassan's head moderator chat. Put a W. I don't know who this person is. I've never met this person. This person is not my head moderator. Aiden Ross somehow manages to be dumber and dumber every single fucking day. It blows my mind how he has become even stupider than before. He's like reaching new levels. I don't know how the fuck he's doing that. I don't even have, I don't have a head mod. That's not a thing. For the chat, we stole $8,000 from him. W. He needed that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. W. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, he reached he reached negative into like the long time ago. Uh wait, there was one of the quotes uh Jobry actually quoted him and fucking made fun of him as well. Aiden Ross is worth so much money he'll never have to work another day in his life. Here he is celebrating one of his false copyright uh claims that stole 8k from a YouTuber a fraction of his size. That's this disgusting abuse from YouTube's broken copyright system that needs to have consequences. Is Trainwreck aware of his talents or bragging about doing fraud? Hold on, I'm just tweeting. Sorry. I said, this dude isn't my head mod. I don't know them. You false strike me as well for a video I was in, and here you are, dumb enough to celebrate false, false copy striking people. Aiden Ross hitting new levels of stupidity I never knew were reachable. Here you go. I am. I tweeted it. I'm going to send this to my YouTube account manager as well.
Somebody who I think might be the biggest copyright troll in the history of YouTube just outed himself. Let's talk about how we got to this point, who this person is, and what this all means for YouTube. So this is iShow Speed. He is the biggest, most watched streamer on all of YouTube right now. He's got over 15 million subscribers. He is a grinder. He's been streaming almost every day since the summer of 2020. He makes a ton of content. He's been making some music videos lately that have gotten over 77 million views, 29 million views. He is extremely popular. He's blown up. There was one point in the summer of- Guys, he's probably wearing it ironically. This is from two months ago. I'm pretty sure at that point, everybody understands that FDX was uh, busted. Okay? 2021, where in 14 days, he gained 1.4 million subscribers. He is an absolute phenomenon. He understands content like almost nobody else. But I Show Speed is also really controversial. He's been in a bunch of different controversies where he's like almost gotten canceled. He was brought on to British TV. They invited him over to watch a football match with them. And they actually rescinded their invite and cut all the clips with him out when somebody told them all of these like cancelable things that he's done. I discovered Speed uh, about a year ago and I ended up making a video called Uncancelable I Show Speed, which I basically wanted to show how he overcame all the different times where he was almost cancelled because I think his rise to fame has been really cool and interesting and something I thought would be cool to talk about. But he does wade into controversy a lot. It's also worth mentioning, he's very young. He's about 19, maybe 20 years old now. His age has always been kind of a mystery, but he recently did finally confirm that he's actually 19. He used to tell people he was much older than he actually was. But in the summer of 2022, a lot of YouTubers who were talking about iShow Speed started to get copyright claims. Here's the first one I could find from a YouTuber called Omni. Now, Omni does commentary. You can see his thumbnail down there. He makes great videos. His face is on the screen. He reacts to things. He's not just reposting clips. With that said, he tweeted, I'm getting copyright claimed for the iShow Speed clip in my latest video. Disputed it and got rejected in 10 minutes by Thumb Media Affiliate, who I don't think even exists. Am I getting screwed over or is this legit? Puts my channel at risk. Yeah, Omni talked about this under one of my uh, tweets as well. This is like literally a company known for doing false copy strikes. YouTube is aware that they know uh, that they are knowingly doing false copy strikes. And YouTube doesn't give a fuck for the record. YouTube literally did nothing to this company. They, they have been doing this. Thumb Media Affiliate is the one that also came after me as well with Aiden. It's the one that Aiden is currently celebrating in this fucking tweet. of getting a strike. And Omni is right. If you get claimed by a company who says that they own your content and they're gonna take your money, you can dispute it, but that does put you at risk of getting a strike. So you have to be very careful as a YouTuber if you're gonna fight back against this kind of thing. And as you'll see throughout this story, a lot of people just yes, roll over cool. and give up because it is terrifying. Throughout the summer, more and more YouTubers continue to get claimed with YouTuber Jalen, who does commentary saying, these fuckheads claim my video and rejected my appeal and it's not even a valid claim whatsoever. They even claim parts of my original video. They didn't even copyright it correctly. Another YouTuber, Papa Gut, says, something like this happened to me on my iShow Speed video. Hopefully Team YouTube can do something more about these blatantly bogus claims. YouTuber Internet AJ says, I got striked and disputed it and they are fighting it. So these claims were very prevalent throughout the summer. And on August 11th, 2022, I woke up to this beautiful email in my inbox. I love getting love letters from YouTube. This email was not that. They said, hi Jabroni, a copyright owner using content ID has claimed some material in your video. Your video is live in the visibility settings you selected remain applied to it but it is now either being monetized by the copyright owner or they have chosen to receive analytics about it. This is not a strike. It doesn't affect your account status, but here's the video. It was copyrighted by DRM protection for Cardigan Media by Aegis TM, claimed by Thumb Media Affiliate. So they didn't just choose to get the analytics. Here, here you have it, I, I, identical for the record. A copyright claim was created for content. Andrew Tate cannot handle my questions. Uh, he claimed it, uh, Thumb Media claimed it on behalf of Aiden. This is the video. I'm right here. The entire content of this video is me debating Andrew Tate. If anything, I should be able to fucking content claim Aiden Ross for trying to fucking pose this as his own content as all he did was sit there like a fucking dumbass. I'm literally in the middle of the fucking video. Are you out of your fucking mind, dude? And his dumbass fucking fan base turned around. This has 1.5 million views on my YouTube channel. 
And they're just trying to fucking milk it. They're trying to take these views and trying to make money off of the video that absolutely is is uh, uh, is a video that I could claim is mine. It's crazy. I'm on the video. Like, that is the next level of, of uh, copyright bullshit, okay? It's not even like I'm reacting to the fucking video. I'm not literally... I'm not reacting to someone else's video, which is certainly... Aiden Ross tried to retort this by saying it's actually his video since his socials are in the corner. Saw a clip of it a couple days ago. Yeah, I should have never been kind enough to keep his fucking socials in the corner. That's what, that was my problem. That was my issue, I guess. I never signed a fucking release. Suck my cock. I'll see you in court. You stupid fuck. You fucking imbecile. You absolute fucking dumbass. Holy shit. You stupid little bitch. What a fucking idiotic, what an absolutely idiotic baboon-like thing to fucking do. Like, oh, dude, oh, yeah, you, you signed a release? What release did I sign? You stupid shit. Are you, did you pay me to appear on that fucking Zoom call? No, you didn't. Suck my dick. You don't own that fucking content. It's quite literally me in the fucking video. See you in court like you're going to do shit? What do you mean? You think, I, you think I'm not going to pursue this? You think I'm not going to fucking counter? Are you stupid? This is such an objectively incorrect thing to do. And this fucking dumbass is also, again, stupid enough to like do this. Not only is he stupid enough to do this, he's done it to so many people. And most importantly, perhaps most significantly, he's dumb enough to gloat that he's false copy striking people. You fucking idiots. Look at him. W, chat, by the way, this is um Hassan's head moderator, chat. Put a W in the chat. We stole $8,000 from him. W, he needed that. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, W, yes. Oh, yes. How fucking stupid can you be? How absolutely idiotic can you be that you're like false striking people and celebrating it? But here's the thing with Aiden, he's in the gutter, right? He's already shit. He's already dog shit. He, he already knows that people don't like him at this point. And he's made more money than fucking God at this point, okay? The reality is that the crypto gambling casino that runs stake paid him a fucking fat bag. So now, so now, no matter what happens, Hassan Abi has been found banned from YouTube and Twitch. Oh my God. God, his fucking fan base is so incredibly stupid. Yeah, he's already made a shitload off of crypto rug pulls about fucking, you know, uh, uh, getting his dumbass fan base to, uh, hooked on, on gambling and numerous other things. And yet he's still over here gloating fucking false copy strikes. It's so, it's so incredibly dumb to brag about it too on top of that. Imagine being so stupid that you literally self-snitch. Oh, my God. Oh, what a fucking idiot, dude. The people that hang with him every day are bad too. Do you want a link? No, I don't care. I don't care about like whatever fucking Nazi he's at on his stream again. Ethan had won on a very similar case and clapped up the claimant. You could easily send him to Allah, depending on how merciful you want your lawyers to be. Aiden and his fan base are the brain power of a hundred year decomposing corpse. 
Anyway, it's just... And he's about to roll up with an attorney like this. I mean, no, there's plenty of lawyers that would take it. But he literally said stole. Like he said, first of all, the $8,000 is not even correct for the record. I don't think an internet anarchist understands that like, that's not how that works. It goes into, it goes into a separate pile when someone uh, copy strikes you and you can counter it and take all of those, uh, take all those dollars back. Okay. If the video is made eight grand overall, then uh, it doesn't matter. That means that you made that eight grand until they fucking copy striked it. They never go to court. They threaten until you give up or back off in a month after you counter twice. Yeah, 100%. It would be fucking so unimaginably stupid to go to court uh, over something like this when you have a, a false claim here. They chose to take all the revenue from my video, which they had done with everyone else up to this point that I had encountered. They're not copyright striking. They're just claiming. Claiming means keep your video up. Give us the money. Win win, right? Wrong. These people don't own the content that I posted. The video I posted and a lot of the other people in this story posted are fair use videos, which are completely allowed under United States copyright law. You are allowed to show a piece to critique it. You are allowed to show someone else's clip while you're doing a commentary video, especially yeah. if you're reacting to it. Do you guys want to know why? Do you guys want to know why that's like legally permissible, by the way? Because someone who happens to be my fucking podcast co-host made it legal precedent, okay? His name is Ethan fucking Klein and his court case quite literally is taught in law books now. Like, it's copyright law. It's, it's, it's literally ridiculous to do some dumb shit like this. On top of that, there are certain rules that like every content creator knows not to fucking break. Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder, and the like will usually not turn around and fucking uh, false strike someone because, like, I'm responding to their fucking videos. No matter how big of a shithead they might be, they understand that it's, like, an unspoken rule among content creators because that would be ridiculous. That would be insane to do. However, there are scumbags out there who don't give a fuck about that, okay? Who don't give a fuck about the unspoken rules that every content creator understands. There's a reason why so many people lose their fucking minds, like, so many random YouTubers will get incredibly fucking mad about this because it would ruin the entire space, okay? That's what Aiden Ross is doing. Now, Gavin McGinnis did this to me, and no one really gave a shit. Why? One, because it was behind a paywall, technically. And two, I didn't pursue it. I didn't really care enough about it. And he's a fucking Nazi, you know what I mean? Aiden Ross, on the other hand is maybe a little bit better, supposed to be a little bit better than an out and about fucking Nazi, which is precisely the reason why, especially as someone with like an online uh, presence outside of kick, okay? He should know better than to do some dumb shit like this, but he doesn't. Especially if you're editing it, there is so much nuance that goes into this, but these Cardigan Media and Aegis TM people seem to just be claiming literally anyone who mentioned I show speed or talked about him for even a moment. And when I posted this, I took it to Twitter. So let's see what happened over there. I said, there's a company called Thumb Media Affiliate that's been striking commentary YouTubers who talk about I show speed. I'm not sure if this company is actually affiliated with speed or if they're just falsely striking videos. I DM speed to see if he can confirm. And that's true. I DM speed. I DM cardigan media. I DM everyone I possibly could to try and get a hold of speed and see if this is legit. Nobody would answer me. I couldn't get a hold of anyone at all. And it seemed like I was just screwed, right? So I had a decision to make. I could either roll over and let the claim stay on my channel, taking all the revenue from the video I posted. I didn't know if the video would take off or not. I didn't know if it would get a lot of views. And to me, it wasn't about the money. It never was about the money. To me, it was about the principle of the whole thing. Like I made something, I put work into it. Whatever comes, I should get it. Not somebody else who had nothing to do with it. And the thing that's really screwed up about YouTube's copyright system is when you get claimed like this, they don't have to provide any information yeah. to whether or not they're even a legitimate or a real company. So this created all of this speculation about all these people saying, hey, I'm... 
Let's see what Hassan said. He said, I'm L. Someone trying to copy strike me with my own content. Is that T Pain? Me direct, bro. I'll make sure that's taken care of. It's my new editor, probably, bro. W editor? Oh, no, tweet. it's not T Pain. <laughs> Yo, you guys are going crazy on this tweet. Aiden, coming, Aiden this W. Is, uh... Yo, W. Racist? Man, shut the fuck up. It's like tiny as fuck. I can't see, okay? Give me a goddamn break. For a second, I thought it was T-Pain until I realized this is a security guard. Ew. I don't know <laughs> Yo, every y'all are going crazy on this shit. My, my editor said, Hassan is tripping. He literally posted your content. Look at the tweet. His video says your watermark. Let me see. I was kind enough to literally fucking leave, by the way, which was so which was so incredibly stupid of me and my editors to like leave his fucking socials. It's like courtesy. You know what I mean? He said your watermark? The fuck do you mean? Dog, I'm in the video. What the fuck are you saying? It's transformative. It's not a replacement or a container for the original video in its market, which means the audience for it is not the same audience. Bro, it's not even transformative. It's me. It's me, me. There's no transformative in that video. It's literally just me, okay? Here, this is the video, dude. This is the video what? that they copy striked, dude. Uh, yeah, Hustlers University is a product I stand by. There's a reason we have so much, so many fantastic reviews. We just had our one year anniversary today, actually. I did a stream to the 110,000 students. Had our one how make the argument that this is Aiden Ross's video, please, to me. Like, uh, he's he's he's, spoke, so he's speaking a lot is. in it. You've never seen it. Yeah, look at look how transformative Self. this is. You're just going based on what you've decided, and that's that's completely fine. You're not. Also, I saw you uh, talk about joining the Marine Corps as a pussy shit, which is another rare W for you. But outside of that, it's usually just a sequence of L's. Wait, I was wondering. This about him? Andrew what Tate doesn't have. Uh, Animal. Andrew Tate doesn't have. Uh, any like he has a lot of social media footprint but not necessarily a lot of accounts how is this happening i, I wondered how is it. other people so they can get it. like striking this is so scummy dude like imagine striking this is incredibly fucking scummy it's like my editors edited the fuck out of this video and it's also quite literally me versus andrew tate it's a fucking Zoom call. That is so psychotic. Isn't his argument similar to the photographer and the model argument of who owns this video? Who owns the photo? Yeah, there are, you know, sci uh, there's, there's paperwork that distinguish that. There is no paperwork in that situation. Make more money. I already make too much money. I'm good. So, no. Product I stand by. There's a reason we have so much, so many fantastic reviews. We just had our one year anniversary today, actually. I did. did they search through ACU's VOD to see if any of his channels didn't post it too? This is clearly targeted. Yeah, I know. The stream to the 110,000 students had our one year anniversary today. 110,000 students in one year. So we're doing also, I love that even in this community, even in this fucking community, we still have people who are like, wait a minute, hold up. Let's give him, let's give him the, the fucking, uh, Let's make it seem like Aiden actually has, like, a reasonable argument here. Like, what do you mean? He openly says he targeted me. He says his editor fucking targeted me. And, and they think it's, like, totally fucking valid. What the fuck are you talking about? Why the fuck are you sitting here and being like, wait, hold up. Let, let's, let's think about this really quick. Uh, really quick. Uh, let's think about this clearly now. Maybe there is a validity to it. Yeah, I just realized that. Look at this shit. My fucking socials are here and you uploaded my video. <laughs> what the fuck? You stole my content. My content, dude. Insane. My content? You're not even doing anything, you fucking donkey. You're just sitting there going, uh, uh, on God, W, W. My editor's not only fucking edited this video. You My editor's not only edited this video, but it's a video between me and Andrew Tate. That's You're just not doing anything. You're reacting to it, literally, in the fucking Zoom call. It is mind-boggling, dude.
There's no fucking release forms on this shit. It is such a fucking idiotic thing to just like claim that like you own. I think his argument is that you grabbed it off his VOD since it has his socials because we didn't screen record it on my end, okay? That's that's the only difference. This was after I was live. I was kind enough to go on his fucking... Uh, I was kind enough to also appear on his fucking broadcast. That's it. That's an insane fucking argument to make. It doesn't change anything. There is no validity to that stance. The only reason why he's able to do it is literally because he can target motherfuckers and copy strike them maliciously as you are watching a video of him and fucking Aisho Speed doing the same shit using the same fucking company if I had signed a contract like we're not even talking about the morality we're talking about the legality here right if I had signed a contract from a legal point of view that like he has full ownership, I give away full ownership of this content of my own commentary to him, then he would have at least some kind of fucking IP argument to make. But because I don't fucking have that, it doesn't matter. XQC himself also fucking posted the entire thing. And yet for some reason, he's not copy striked. I wonder why. Perhaps because he doesn't want to go after fucking the juicers. He just wants to go after me so we can be like, yeah, on God, W, big W. I came across the, I went across him. I'm glad that this is, uh, you know, enough content for Aiden Ross for a week so that he's like not watching his sister get fucked on OnlyFans and mulling over it again and again and again, or his like ex-girlfriend, which by the way, there's no issue with, but it, apparently it's a big deal for Aiden Ross. So, you know. Incredible stuff, dude. Big W's, boys, W's, boys. On God, we did it. His sister and his girlfriend, by the way, multiple girlfriends. I'm getting claimed. I don't know if this company is even affiliated with iShow Speed. And this kind of came to a boiling point because people were really upset. A lot of people thought that their favorite YouTubers were being claimed by some random company that had nothing to do with anything. I posted video. Yeah, yeah. These guys fucking suck, dude. I mean, they're such pieces of shit. Okay. It's such it's it's fucking ridiculous. Um not as ridiculous as me forgetting to run the top of the hour ad break and then running it in the middle of the hour and telling you that if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free prime subscription a month, or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three minute ad break now. So, hey, Bozo, thank you for the five get the subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the fucking hour. Let's go, baby. Video showing how it looks to a YouTuber when you get claimed. If you're going to dispute it, you have to give whoever claimed you your full name and address. You literally have to give them your docs so that they can sue you if they so choose if you dispute the claim. So... They give you nothing, and in return, you give them your literal docs so they can serve you with a lawsuit if they decide that their claim is still valid. And guess what? Less than 24 hours later, I got this email. Hi, Jabroni. After reviewing your dispute, Thumb Media Affiliate has decided that their copyright claim is still valid. Great system. So based on absolutely nothing, the claimant can just decide that their claim is still valid. I wish I could decide that my counterclaim was valid. Why can't I decide that? I'm kind of freaking out at this point. I'm like, okay, I, I'm either gonna get sued and win, and they're gonna have to pay my legal fees, or I'm gonna get sued and lose, and I'm gonna have my channel like deleted. I, I don't, I'm scared. So I start emailing lawyers in my area who do copyright law, 
and trying to figure out how much money it would cost to defend myself from this. It ain't cheap. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, this is not a cheap lawsuit to try and defend yourself from. And it's also very difficult to really tell if something is fair use or not from a legal standpoint. Now I can sit and watch commentary videos all day long and say, yeah, that's obviously fair use, but is a judge going to see it the same way? Is a jury going to see it the same way? Am I really willing to pay the money for my dinky video to stand up in court? All of that went out of my head because I was so mad and I, just on principle, I was like, I'm going to fight this to the end. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to fight it. And so I did. Why the Twitter thread is relevant and important is not because of anything I said in it, but because after I made that thread, it got <coughs> indexed on Google because there weren't a lot of people talking about this yet. And I got people reaching out to me from all over the place from from then until literally now. YouTubers have been DMing me saying, I got claimed by speed. What do I do? On August 13th, I got this DM from a YouTuber middle of the conversation. They said, what's funny is the video got claimed. I trimmed out the clip and then they claimed the video again a few hours later, which is literally just me talking over gameplay. I'm just not going to make videos about speed anymore. It is mad annoying. And that's what's wild about these claims. Usually when you get claimed on YouTube, it's by an automated system. It's by content ID. The copyright owner gets a list of videos that are using the content that they claim to own. They can just go through a checkbox and say, claim, claim, claim. It's all on one screen. The claims we were getting last summer were manual claims, which means somebody was going to our videos and manually clicking the claim this video button, which is even more infuriating because there's also like when you go on the eligibility, okay, on the channel dashboard, it says dispute claim. Andrew Tate and Aiden exposes Hassan and XUC live on stream. So that's what he's saying. My video is called Andrew Tate cannot handle my questions, right? 1.5 million views. Remember that the following are not valid reasons to dispute a content ID claim. It says uh, underneath, it says, uh, I own a copy of the song. I'm not making money from the video or I gave credit to the copyright owner. I checked the little tiny check mark underneath that says my dispute isn't based on any of the reasons above. I would still like to dispute this copy content ID claim. So in it, you have four main options at that point. You have four options that you can engage with. You can say original content. The content claimed in my video is my original content and I own all the rights to it. Uh, I have permission or a license to use the content claimed in my video Copyright exceptions such as fair use. I have significantly transformed the content claimed in my video. The video is protected by fair use, fair dealings, or similar exceptions of copyright. Public domain content claimed in my video is the public domain and no longer protected by copyright. What, what can I say here? I'm in the fucking video, dog. This is me in the video. Like, here, this is the, this is the disputed parts of the video. Let's play it. Okay. I'm following the steps. Everything, everything you told me that I did, and it just, it just fucking... Domain. $50 might not come across like a big amount of money, but over the over uh, 110,000 people, that's a lot of fuck. Just sign up, people. And the fans channel will finally give in. It'll happen time and time again. I have a like, what do I say? Original content? The content I claim that video is my original content and I own all the rights to it. <clears throat> I'm going to say that. Confirm everything is yours. Even if you filmed or edited the video yourself, think about whether you included someone else's work. Did you record from a TV screen or include other video clips? If so, the video isn't entirely your original content. Okay. So why don't you give this warning to the person who is copy striking? You know what I mean? Give this warning to the copy striker. Do you? They do law is just ignored. Find out who claimed the content. Creators are represented by companies. Understand where you fit in. If your content is popular enough to have been reused in another video or TV show, then it's possible that the owner of that show has claimed your video in error. If you created the content, it's appropriate to dispute the claim. The content claimed in my video is my original creation. It does not include anyone else's work. I mean, that's not true, though. The problem is it's not true. We foolishly gave... Why didn't you click that link? You gave him credit in the first stage since you included his watermark because that's a trap. So including someone else's watermark doesn't change the reality that they can copy strike you. They give you those first three fucking uh, uh, things so that they can turn around and say, oh, well, that doesn't mean anything. You literally gave someone else the, 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 the license. It's basically, it's not a watermark. Why not fair use? 
because I'm not actually looking at someone else's video and responding to it and reacting to it. The problem is copyright law isn't fully definitive on this type of novel collaborative content. I know, which is why he's fucking up the bag for himself. That's the point. This will open up an opportunity if it goes to courts for people that he collaborates with without signing a fucking release form to sue him. So every Instagram model that has ever appeared on Aiden Ross's streams could turn around and sue him for every fucking dollar that he has. Do you understand? Because he's not sending release forms before having people appear on his fucking streams. So, hey, Aiden, have fun with that. I will literally personally pay the legal fees of other fucking Instagram models and people who now hate Aiden Ross who have appeared on his stream to sue him for every fucking dime he has if he keeps this dumb shit up, okay? I will go and work with lawyers to ensure that that happens. There's a reason why YouTubers don't touch this, okay? There's a reason why YouTubers don't touch this because it would open up a legal battle that would be bad for everyone, okay? This is why false striking is fucking stupid. That's the problem. Bro is butt hurt. I'm the one who's butt hurt. You fucking idiot. He's the one who's butt hurt. He's the one who's false striking. There was a time and place when like, there was a time and place when people would literally look to this and go, oh, that's scummy. But it turns out now we're at a point where it's like, oh no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if this person is being a scumbag. I like him on God. He's W. You're a fucking L. So it doesn't matter. This used to be looked down upon for this very specific reason, for this very same reason. But unfortunately, because there are so many fucking dumb idiots here uh, that are uh, in the fandoms of other dumb fucking uh, brain-broken dipshits. Hold on. Anyway, is W to have a fourth grade education? There are They are new wave kids who never experienced years of no content due to the H3 lawsuit. They have to learn one way or another. I know. It's like, it's, a, it's the same cycle, dude. It's the same fucking idiotic cycle. I am Joshua Decker. Thank you for the 50. Get the subs. Could this be an issue beyond Aiden Ross? I mean, he acted mean and all, but legally, maybe the agency tries to claim. No, no. He knows that his editor did it. He knows his editor did it himself.
I know it might not be your bag, but starting a fun for small careers to fight this shit would help. Bro, this is Aiden Ross. We're talking about save your energy for actual haters, King. Fuck him. No, this is so fucking frustrating, dude. I mean, it's like, it's ridiculous. He's like, he, he has so much fucking money. So he thinks he can bully people like myself and others that do not have enough finances to fight back. Fuck that shit, dude. Are you joking? Look at how many fucking smaller content creators he is like. Look at how many smaller content creators he's done this to. That he's like celebrating as a fucking major W. It's disgusting. I am Joshua Deckard, by the way, didn't just give 50 subs. He gifted 200 subs. Holy fuck. It's so fucked up. Like, it, it's so ridiculous, dude. Its monetization is now an escrow, too. It's for prince it's for the principle of the thing. It's not even for anything else. Like there's more. There's other ones too. Like there's people who are fucking there are, there's another one. The the Karen uh claimed her own fucking TikTok. Uh remember the the Towns Creek Karen chick? Very bottom of a large corporation and worked two jobs so I could afford community college before transferring. Oh, the winner takes it all actually claimed it. Never mind. Fucking Christ. TikTok is so that one I can't really do too much about. The winner takes it all. The song this video uses the song's melody content found during 206. This is the type of shit that I fucking hate dealing with. There's nothing you can do about that one. Anyway, but yeah, it's not about me. It's about fucking uh smaller content creators who cannot uh fight back against this kind of uh you know ridiculous copy strike abuse. Because whatever they decided was their copyright wasn't even flagged by a bot. It was literally some person who I believe was just typing in I show speed into the search bar and claiming every single video that wasn't posted by one of speed's channels. So I fought back and I put my channel on the line. And on August 15th, I got yet another okay, email from YouTube. Hi, Jabroni. Good news. After reviewing your dispute, Thumb Media Affiliate has decided to release their copyright claim on your YouTube video. Oh my God, I was so relieved. And I felt like the weight of the world was like taken off of my ass because I was so worried about what was going to happen to my channel. The interesting thing was the same day, they released claims against a bunch of YouTubers, including Internet and Jay, who I had been talking to behind the scenes about this. And it made me wonder what was really going on at this Cardigan Media Aegis TM agency. I started digging a little bit to see the background of these companies. And what I found was pretty interesting. On July 25th, someone had DM Thumb Media on Instagram and asked if they own the copyright of iShow Speed. And they replied saying, yes, Thumb Media manages copyright on behalf of iShow Speed. And people in Speed's community wanted to know, are you actually claiming all these people's videos? Are you actually copyright claiming everyone who talks about you on YouTube? Because that would be wild. So Speed finally responded after it got upvoted in his subreddit. Oh, all right, Chad, then where's the... All right, I'll watch the video again then, Chad. What's the video, bro? Like, oh my God, dog. Bro, that is... What are y'all... A company called Thumbini is copyright striking all the... Chad, how do I... Like, Chad, how do I stop this from happening? Like, because it's not happening to me. Like, Chad, like, how do I, like, stop this from happening? Dude, every time this dude gets caught in fucking 4K, 8K, 10K, whatever, 12K, he always is like, oh, man, I just totally didn't know it was happening. I doubt that he didn't know it was happening. The fuck? Like, yeah, only when it, his bro. own fucking community starts shitting on him over this does he does he turn around and, and do something about it. X noobs okay, alright, bro. Alright, so I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Ooh, no, it is just So that was the clip. He said, How do I stop this from happening? Because it's not happening to me. 
How do I stop this from happening? Because it's not happening to me. And he he acted really surprised. He acted really upset about it. And so I think that's what his fans would have expected. They were upset. They didn't want all this stuff being claimed. And after that clip we just watched went live, Dexerto posted this article that says, I show speed calls out company for false copywriting fans who post his YouTube clips. I, I don't think that's what happened there. I think he saw that and said, wow, that's crazy. How do I stop this from happening? It doesn't happen to me. Notice that he didn't deny, he didn't say, no, that's not me. Because if he were to say that, then everyone who's fighting back against them could point to that clip and say, look, he said it wasn't him. You guys are false copywriting. That's illegal. It's literally illegal to do in the United States. You can be fined $2,500 for every video that you false copyright. It is a criminal offense. And so they would be shut down. There's absolutely no way that YouTube would allow them to continue to claim people, right? Right? This got the attention of a lot of people on Twitter with Jake Lucky saying, I show speed is called at a company known as Thumb Media for false copywriting people who post his clips. The company has been claiming multiple YouTubers videos for months now with nobody seemingly knowing who they are. And this was the general sentiment was that these people are just copyright trolls. They're just thieves. They don't actually represent speed. One commenter said, it's most likely not speed's fault. That company will take unclaimed media that they know is going to go viral and upload it for themselves for content ID claims. Same exact thing happened to me with another company. They count on creators creating viral videos that they get the revenue off of. You just have to fight them. They will fight back as long as they can, but they will never take you to court. Speed needs to sue. Fake copyright claims have been going on for years with YouTube and they continually show how little they care about their platform and creators. So just a few days later, Jake Lucky got the opportunity to ask Speed about all of this on stream. But then, uh, on a lighter note, this whole thumb media situation. Did you hear that, Speed? Can you talk about that? Uh, what'd you say? Can you talk about that? Move on. You say you can't talk about it. Oh, okay. All right. No reason. No reason. All right. So did you hear him there? He didn't say they don't represent me. I don't know who that is. You know, they're trolls. He said, I can't talk about that. Move on. Keep that in mind because Speed's fans definitely didn't move on for the next several months. Actually, up until today, I got constant DMs from YouTubers asking for help with their claims from Cardigan Media, Aegis TM on any video talking about iShow Speed. I want to read you guys a few of these now. I got one on August 26th that said, I'm amongst the list of plug channels copyrighted by Thumb Media Affiliate. It's screwed up. These are only some of the hundreds of videos they have copyrighted from me. Another one from August 26th, the same day. Hey man, similar thing happened to me with my short, wondering how the claim went. It seems it may be an offshore company owned by Speed, but I'm not entirely sure. November 25th, I got a DM that said, hello, sir, big fan. Wonder if you ever experienced with Thumb Media Affiliates copyright. It seems that all the creators on YouTube got false copyright claimed when posting iShow Speed content, including me. I got three false copyright claims under Thumb Media Affiliates name, and I wonder if you can help me with this situation. Here's another one from December 8th. It says Thumb Media just claimed speed content of me on a four second clip of him screaming on my video. Here's a DM I got December 16th that said, yo, Jabroni TV, hit me up ASAP. I replied, what happened? Did you get copyright claimed by Thumb Media? Yeah, I saw you tweeted about it. Did you ever get that appeal to work? December 29th, I got a DM that said, yo, Jab, I know you don't know me, but please, I need your help. I also know you suffered a copyright claim on your iShow Speed video with Thumb Media affiliate. I also heard that you won the dispute. Please, how can I remove this false copyright claim on my video? January 17th, I got a DM that said, hey, bro, how are you? I have to ask you something. Thumb Media has sent me a copyright claim. Is it fake? I said, it's real. I think they actually represent speed, but I don't know for sure. If your video is truly fair use and you can fight it in the YouTube studio, if not, don't fight it. And they said, I used iShow Speed's Instagram pictures only, and it was a short YouTube video. I got 4 million views off that video. I said, it's up to you. I'm not a lawyer, unfortunately, but they backed down after I disputed them two times. January 23rd, I got a message that said, hello, there's this new entity, false copyright ID claiming iShow Speed content called Cardigan Media by Aegis TM. I saw your tweet encouraging creators to DM you about this. Are there any updates on how to handle this? I have a creative ISHO speed trolling video perfectly under fair use with 2 million views and climbing, which has been claimed in its 13 minute entirety. These DMs have- Bro, these are, this is, this is a great video showing the extent that like Aegis Media or the Thumb Media affiliates go to copy strike people falsely. Okay. Um, Aiden is Aiden is doing that as well, uh, and and weaponizing it as well. 
Except he's, I guess, doing it exclusively against people he doesn't like because it doesn't seem like he's doing it to other people. Because, like, here. Bro, there's no f***ing shot. I... I destroyed Andrew Tate featuring Aiden Ross and Hassan. Like, it's the same exact Bro, fucking video, <laughs> but on XQC's channel. It's like copy striking this. You know what I mean? If he has ownership over this entire call, which he doesn't, he would have to fucking copy strike XUC as well, which he can't. But it's the exact same thing. That's, Look, that's completely fine. You're not going to reduce our subscriber number. Every single time I do one of these Twitches, we get three, four, five, six thousand. But of course, he doesn't have his fucking socials. He, he doesn't have Ada Ross's socials on there, so it doesn't even matter. Not only is the video transformative because we made edits to it, but it's literally me. It's me talking to Andrew Tate. What is this? YouTube's Heard, I got a message that said, hello. Yeah, we're, we're still on that video. Hold on. We're going to finish it in a second. Here, let's... You never stopped rolling into me. And my tweet didn't even have that much reach. There are probably dozens, if not hundreds of YouTubers who have had their videos claimed. Now, some channels who are uploading this kind of thing are just re-uploading Speed's clips. But a lot of people are doing commentary type videos and everybody's getting claimed no matter what, which is completely illegal under United States law. It is illegal to abuse copyright this way. The thing that stinks about YouTube is YouTube has no way to report it. There's no message you can send them. There's no flag you can click that says, hey, YouTube, these people are abusing your copyright system. They are just mass copyright claiming anybody who even mentions I show speed. They'll probably claim this video. There has to be something for YouTube to do. And Speed's fans wanted him to speak out more directly and say, these people don't represent me. YouTube, I need you to do something about it. But instead, we got this clip just a couple of days ago. YouTube asks y'all to stop spamming about these emails uh, about the cardigan and the thumb media affiliate. That is me. Just wanted to let y'all know everybody know that. So, y'all guys, please stop. Thank y'all. Love y'all. There it is. It's been him the entire time. So the whole time people were saying, this company is fake. They don't represent Speed. Speed would never do that. It's him. The entire time, this guy no who's a multi- No way. I thought he didn't fucking know. No way. Turns out he was doing it on purpose. Because they're such fucking scumbags, dude. Like, it's just so frustrating. Like, there are things that I excuse with respect to, like, age when people are like, oh, you know, they don't know any better. Oh, like, he's young. He'll get better at, like, uh, understanding certain concepts. But this is transparent greed. You know what I mean? Like, you're a multi-fucking millionaire, and you're milking small content creators. Like, this guy that got claimed, Jabrangus has, what, like, this is, I, I assume this might be his, like, second channel. Like... This guy is 177,000 subscribers, bro. Like, you're really going after motherfuckers with 177,000 subscribers? Like, you got 15 million subs. That shit is so whack, bro. That it, it, It's so fucking gross. Like, how much more money do you fucking need, dog, that you're, like, literally trying to milk people like this? Oh, he's just a kid. He's just a kid. It's evil as fuck. It's so greedy. Millionaire has been claiming anybody who even mentions him on YouTube. And not only does he, he's not sorry. He doesn't care. He just wants you to shut up about it. Stop spamming in my chat about me claiming hundreds of people's videos. Why would you guys bring it up? Shut up and get back to the fucking content. I can't wrap my head around why he thinks it's a good idea to copyright claim anybody who even mentions him. Now, don't get me wrong. If I was a huge streamer and there were people just re-uploading my clips, I wouldn't feel guilty about claiming those videos. If all they're doing is taking my clips and re-uploading them and monetizing that, I wouldn't feel guilty about copyright claim. Yeah, and by the way, this makes it even funnier because as a fucking huge streamer, I don't even do that, okay? I don't even do that shit. My expectation is not for other streamers to do the same. Obviously, like, I get why. I don't even do that. 
So like to come after me in this regard is, is even more fucked because like I have told you guys time and time again, and as you all already know in this community that like I allow people to basically use my content, my IP in whichever way they fucking see fit. And it's so incredibly fucked up. Wait, what? Super Bam Inc. also claimed your stream, but since I stole it too, I guess it's fair game. What the fuck is this? What is Super Bam Inc.? Are they just like copy striking my streams now? Like we got other content creators, uh, other companies deciding because like Hassan doesn't maintain ownership over his IP. We'll do it for him so we can make uh, some, some bucks on the side. Like what does that mean? That's just me. They're false claiming my fans re-uploading my fucking videos. What the hell is this? Content over a two-hour fucking VOD? What the hell? The entire fucking VOD? Yeah, I mean, this happened back in the day. Hassan confuses Joe Rogan. YouTube hit with manual copyright claim. <laughs> it appears some of Super Bama rights management company allegedly doing... Uh, they took the revenue off one of our Jubilee videos and Jubilee loves when other YouTubers react to that content. Yeah, I remember that. I remember they did that shit for a Jubilee video. When Jubilee like literally wants us to fucking use their content. The streamer group that formed with Aisha Speed, Aiden Ross, Kai Sinab, basic people that rose to fame after Angel Tage capitalized off dumbass teens are a bunch of greedy, toxic crooks. Obviously, Train jumped on that train, pun intended, and so did XC Kana when he saw the gambling money. I don't think even... No, I I, I wouldn't put Kai Sinat in that fucking uh, group. Like, Kai makes his own content. I don't think he would... I think he's definitely a lot more careful with what... Uh, a, a lot more careful with, like, what is... is uh, how his image looks like on the fucking internet. You know what I mean? I don't think they do that shit. students everything's going fantastic for us yeah, because just so far yeah we're no just, you, you admit it you admit it this is a good way to market your you might also own the zoom recording as a participant if yeah there's of course one platform I do. we've all used of course i fucking own it i'm in the fucking video man that's crazy like it's literally i could have just very easily fucking filmed it on my own side it's just like this was done for chat this literally was done because it's just easier. That's it. That's it. That's the only difference. That's the only reason. And out of the pure courtesy, I fucking foolishly left his goddamn socials on there. I mean, those. would I do it? I don't know. Probably not, but I've never been in that situation, so I can't really say. But for him to just claim commentary videos about him, I think is absurd. And then for him to react like this, this is like 10 times worse than, can we copy strike PewDiePie? And this has pretty much gone under the radar. This hasn't been talked about enough. And I think it's really important that I show Speed get the message that it's not okay to do this. Speed, you have to tell these people to stop claiming videos that are fair use. You have to tell these people to stop breaking the law. What they are doing and what you are doing, because they represent you, you just admitted that you pay them to do this, is illegal, okay? And YouTube, I'm going to talk to YouTube directly. You all have to put a stop to this. When I got copyright claimed by these people, I went through the entire process. I had to give them my real name. I had to give them my home address. I had to give them every way to contact me so they could serve me a lawsuit if they decided that they owned my video still. They had to provide nothing, absolutely nothing. I didn't get a link to their website. I didn't get any kind of. You love the watermark, take the L. Thanks 25 month subscriber. Thank you for $5 for 25 months. I'll see you on the other side, okay? Digital signature saying, down the fucking drain, dude. I will be using 
the 25 months of $5 that you gave me on the fucking legal funds to, to you know, take it up the court if I, if I have to. Hey, it's actually them. Nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Literally anyone could do this. And so you have to forgive YouTubers and just people in general for thinking this is fake. This isn't real. All the people saying, oh, Speed should sue. And it's Speed's own fault for kind of egging those people on and giving them ammo and saying, what? How do I stop this? That doesn't happen to me. How do I stop this? He wanted them to take the fall for him. But I think finally the noise got so loud, his chat really just giving him a hard time and saying, Speed, you have to stop this. Put a stop to this. And he finally had to admit it. He finally had to admit it. Now, I don't think there's going to be nearly as much backlash against I Show Speed as there was against Alinity when she said, can we copy strike PewDiePie? Because I don't really think Speed's fans care. We're in a different era of the internet than back then. And it's just a different time. Like, yeah. to be honest, I don't know how many people actually care that I Show Speed is stealing revenue from hundreds of videos when he's already a multimillionaire. Just from his ad revenue alone, he's making at least $250,000 a month. And he has sponsorships, and he has merch, and he has brand deals. It wouldn't surprise me if he has months where he makes a million dollars. Months, not years. Months. And he's claiming every person who mentions him 100%. on YouTube. And I think we got to put a stop to this. And if I show speed won't listen, YouTube needs to fix its broken system. So please, guys. Yeah. Um, that 25-month subscriber won't be able to, but you can also support the Hodson Ever Broadcast and avoid ads at the same time. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Or you can get gifted a sub. Your food is here, Marat. Larazington, thank you for the five tier one gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. The three-minute ad break is here. Do you think the new YouTube CEO will care? No, because, like, they can't. They can't do anything about this shit. They're not going to take action on this. unless It's it's basically, like, Elements of Style, thank you for the 50 gifted subs. Dead Trees, thank you for the 5. Sakura Gore, thank you for the 10. Saranoid, thank you for the 5 gifted subs. Cosmic Day Fit, thank you for the 5 gifted subs. Just a 3-minute ad break now. People always say YouTube needs to fix this broken system. They will never do it until there's, like, actual, literal... Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, litigation that that serves material harm to the company in some way. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, yo, chat. I actually am thinking about buying a cane corso, y'all. And when I do get the dog, shout out Hassan. I know Hassan has a new dog. I watch Hassan a lot. I fuck with Hassan. He put a, a dog cam. I was obviously going to do that anyway because I want y'all to see when the dog grows up and everything. I'm sorry, uh, yo, chat. I actually let's go. Yeah, or if there's a large amount of backlash, yeah. All right. Without further ado, let's move on to how much the British royal family costs. There's no doubt the British royal family is rich. And if you were to add up all of the land, properties, and castles linked to the monarchy, you'd end up with assets of around 26 billion pounds. Not to mention the Fabergé eggs, the crown jewels, drawings by Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, and what- For the record for Bruce, cane corsors are massive and they're like pit bulls basically, which is why you don't even need to buy one. You can like very easily adopt a cane corso. There are, um, I mean, in California, they're super, super fucking e uh, easily adoptable because people are just like, oh, fuck, this is a pit bull and it's massive. I'm not going to be able to take care of it. Or there's like hella litters for it and shit. One of the most valuable stamp collections in the world. To some, the Windsors are an out-of-date money. We'll do the new Mario movie in a second. To the history books. It is a grubby and secretive and corrupt institution. While to others, they are the very best of British combining history with majesty and bringing in billions to the country through tourism and business. Harry and Meghan's exit from the family known as The Firm has undoubtedly done damage to the royal brand. So how much does the royal family cost? And are they worth it? The answer is no. The answer comes down to whether or not you think the royals cost more than they give back. 
This is an imprecise science, so bear with me. It might surprise you that on top of all their wealth, the royal family receives an income from the UK government, over 86 million pounds a year, or 106 million dollars. And if you are a senior member of the royal family, you get to live in places like this. Buckingham Palace has 775 rooms, and the balcony up there is where you may have seen the royal family gathering for special occasions like weddings, birthdays, and jubilee celebrations. It's not for sale, but the palace is believed to be worth as much as four billion pounds. But here's the thing, Charles couldn't sell it, even if he wanted to. Like most royal properties, it is independently managed, meaning that while it may belong to the reigning king or queen, any money it generates through tourism goes to the state. The monarchs love- Yeah, except, once again, Palaces with no kings or queens, no living monarchs inside of them, generate more revenue for tourism. Uh, France immediately comes to mind. So that argument is completely null and void. I just want to let everybody know about that. The largest portfolio of land and property is called the Crown Estate, and it includes all of this. London's iconic Regent Street, also, the entire seabed around the UK, as far as 12 nautical miles from land. That means these valuable wind farms too. The estate even owns shopping malls up and down the country that are home to brands like McDonald's and Victoria's Secret. In 2021, the Crown Estate businesses made a profit of £312.7 million. And again, all of this is paid to the government, not to the royals. This arrangement dates back to 1760, when King George III struck a deal with Parliament in which he would give up the earnings from his estates in return for an annual income. That payment is now known as the Sovereign Grant. That's the £86 million we mentioned before. It covers things like the cost of maintaining the palaces, paying the wages for over a thousand staff and royal travel. In 2022, when William and Kate toured the Caribbean, the flights alone cost £226,000. But the royals do have considerable private wealth too. For example, yeah, the king owns what? a large amount of land and property exactly. that stretches right across the country, called the Duchy of Lancaster. Why? And William, the Prince of Wales, gets money directly from another portfolio, the Duchy of Cornwall. Both Charles and William get to keep the profits. Together they provide a private income of over £40 million pounds a year. Charles inherited Sandringham House and Bath. For the record, why? Why? Just think about that for a second. Capitalism justifies this, by the way. But what do you mean? It's private ownership over land. Why? Well, they earned it. They earned it by being born into the family that earned it before them. By being born into the family that earned it before them. You do not understand. We are subjects to our royals. Balmoral Castle in Scotland when his mother died. He is also now the owner of many of the nation's swans, part of a tradition dating back to medieval times. But here's that question again. Are they worth it? <laughs> Well, there are more costs beyond that annual sovereign grant. For a start, there's the undisclosed amount spent by the government on security for every event the royals attend and every parade. In all, it's estimated that the royal family could be costing the British people anywhere between 300 and 500 million pounds a year. But then if you start adding up the revenue from the Crown Estate, and a string of other economic benefits linked to the monarchy, then they start to look like quite good value for money. Um, <clears throat> my name is David Haig. I'm the CEO of Brand Finance. Brand Finance have tried to put a number on the benefits that the royals bring to the UK. I wanted to check one fact here. Yeah, There's lots of evidence that the monarchy does create this wealth. Something in the order of 800 million nope. pounds a year is generated every year incrementally to UK tourism because people specifically come here because they want to see royal events. It definitely stimulates air traffic, hotel usage, restaurants, and all that kind of thing. 
Brand finance also account for the free advertising Britain gets around the world every time there's a big royal event, like a wedding or a new baby. They also argue that the hundreds of businesses that are endorsed by the royal household and can use a royal coat of arms reap the benefits in terms of extra sales. Oh, and don't forget the crown. And the bigger the brand, the bigger the value. Our estimation is that the monarchy generates about two billion of uplift based on all these various different slivers that we have identified. Take away the estimated 500 million pounds in costs and according to brand finance, that would mean that the UK still gains around 1.5 billion pounds a year from its monarchy. And if you talk to Graham Smith, who runs the Republic, who's a very cheerful chap, he's always trying to knock down our economic argument. So we did speak to Graham Smith, CEO of Republic, the campaign to abolish the monarchy in Britain. For a lot of people, the monarchy was the Queen and the Queen was the monarchy. And without her on the throne, a lot of people just aren't that interested. Opinion polls show support for the monarchy as an institution has dipped considerably over the last year. It's not just... Wild, it is still at 47%, though. Since the change of monarch, Smith believes recent scandals have devalued Brand Windsor. The Prince Andrew scandal has done a lot of damage. The fiasco around the exit of uh, Harry and Meghan has done a lot of damage, and the accusations that have come out from that. Harry remains a prince, but since moving to California, he and Meghan have given up the income they received from the royal family, turning instead to lucrative book and TV deals. Republic argue that without a royal family, the tourists would... They've betrayed the fucking royals, lad, they did. They've betrayed them. ...would still come, and that an elected head of state would be far more democratic. Charles wants his coronation to be less lavish than his mother's, but it is still likely to cost the government tens of millions of pounds. At a time when people are struggling to put food on the table, at a time when um, people are being denied uh, cost of living pay rises, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of resentment and anger. Republic will be out on the streets protesting at the coronation. Not my king! Not my king! But many will be in London to celebrate, while many millions around the world will watch the ceremony on TV. But money aside, many feel that having one single family that passes on wealth and privilege to the next generation without any kind of mandate is just wrong. Others like the sense of stability the royals represent, especially at a time of political and economic instability. And it won't be easy to break with tradition. Westminster Abbey has been the setting for every royal coronation since 1066. So can the royal family survive? Most people would say the notion of a hereditary ruling family is ridiculous. The monarchy is a very resilient organisation. Despite the short-term damage by Andrew and Harry, I think it will sail through. Because people are inherently conservative and inherently they don't want to change anything. I like that in the eyes of this guy. Prince Andrew's pedophilia is akin to Prince Harry being like, yeah, I, I, you know, this shit sucks. I'm just going to go be like an American live with my actor wife who was in the suits. Like, who's to say which is worse, really? You know what I mean? Sea Dog Via has a new activity for you to do on your next Japan trip? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I'm trying to go to the next But I think so. Um, career events. Hey oh my god, Curtis Connor did a Disney adult video. Oh, I'm Jake Paul from Bizarre Park, and you're watching Curtis Connor. Oh, no looker, first ever. Oh. 
Curtis Connor. Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's really it's good so to see you again. Dreamy. I hope God you're doing it. well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel, you get an extra greeting. So do it. Folks. All right, Disney fans, cover your Mickey Mouse ears. I'm about to get controversial. Not really. About <laughs> That's not what this video is going to be. I just kind of wanted to make that Mickey Mouse ears joke. So we all know Disney, right? The multi-billion dollar entertainment company started by a man named Walt Disney in the 1920s as responsible for some of the most popular iconic movies of all time. They own Pixar and Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm and 21st Century Fox and pretty much everything else. That Disney. Disney films actually played a huge role in my childhood and I'm sure they played a huge role in yours as well. I had an extensive VHS collection of all the old animated Disney movies. And I would watch Fox and the Hound like every other day, dude. Cried every time. And I also went to Disney World in Florida when I was three years old. And I don't remember a second of it. I don't remember anything of it at all because I was three years old. So it's a good thing my parents spent all that money. <laughs> and I'll admit it, okay? Disney knows how to make a good movie. Have you seen Min- Before we get into this, I need to watch uh, a, a TikTok video that went viral on Twitter recently um, about an adult with two children- they spent four thousand dollars on Disney over like the weekend. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can find it really quickly. I'm sure you've seen that tweet. It was on my timeline, and we are a hive mind, so I do think that. <clears throat> Does anyone have that? Let's watch it. It was 4K in a single day. Fuck, it was a single day. I thought it was over the weekend. Um, I saw another tweet about it where uh, someone basically said, oh, here, this is one of the worst scams in modern history. Here it is. I saw one of the quote tweets on this that basically said, you know how what a family's net worth is by how frequently they visit Disney. If they are upper, if they're wealthy, they go to Disney once a year. If they are middle class, they go to Disney once or twice in their entire lifetimes. And, or sorry, uh, yeah, once once every couple of years, they're middle class or upper middle class. If they've never gone or only been one time for the re uh, forever, that means they're poor. How much we spent at Disney day two of five. A mediocre breakfast at Hollywood and Vine cost us $223. That's... Then when I saw that, I was like, there's no fucking way, dog. I had no idea it was like this. Right off the jump, you're like, what? Turns out it's like a huge deal in Disney. It's a meme at this point. Like, they upcharge like a motherfucker for the meals. Why would you pay that? What's the alternative? You die. Then we headed over to Toy Story Land, and even with Lightning Lane, we still only got to ride one ride. Ice cream was $25 and popcorn was $16. Then the over fuck? at Galaxy's Edge, three lightsabers cost us a whopping $800. They also no longer hold them for you until the end of the day, plus different airlines have different restrictions when flying home, so we opted to ship them to us for an additional cost. Every ride had a 120 minute wait time, so we only got to ride one ride in this section of the park as well. We tried the infamous blue and green milk and had lunch at Backlot and Funnel Cakes at Epic East. Bro, in the future, when I have kids, I'm being so fucking frugal on purpose. I don't give a fuck. I don't want them to get comfortable with this kind of fucking spending. I feel like that's how my parents were too. For me, especially, they would buy everything for Marat, who was with an earshot, but does not have the capacity to defend himself. They would buy everything he wanted. They wouldn't buy any of the shit that I wanted. Because, like, all of his shit was, like, smart, engineering-related toys, like robots and whatnot. Whereas my shit was, like, actual toys, like action figures and, and you know, things that, I guess, uh, pertain to my artistic vision that they consider to be ridiculous spending. Um, anyway, all I'm going to say is I would have been fucked up if I got everything I always wanted, like Marat did, which is why he's fucked up. 
I don't want my kids to fucking think like, oh, yeah, no, we're spending $44 on funnel cakes. Like, that's the normalcy. That's the normal experience. Hold on one second. Anyway. Photo pass was an egg. Make your living yelling at YouTube videos. Wait, what? What does that have to do with like child development? That's such a weird take. Uh, okay. I mean, that's true. I'm literally saying, despite the fact that I have the financial security to be able to easily pay for this. I don't know, man. I forgot what we were talking about. Yeah, that's. I love that. I, I'm literally saying, despite the fact that I have the financial security to be able to afford all this shit, I don't want my children to think that this is like a normal thing to fucking uh, spend money on. And you literally turned around and you went, uh, actually, uh, <laughs> you make your money yelling at YouTube videos. And then when called out, you said, I don't know, man. I forgot what the fuck we were talking about even. I just wanted to yell at you. Extra $170 for cell phone quality pictures. And finally, we had dinner at Planet Hollywood. Factoring in our nightly hotel rate of $997 brings our total to... Like, that dinner being $311 is fucking insane. It's like hamburgers, man. $3,758 for the... God damn, one day! One fucking day! Anyway, let's get back to this. Minutemen? It's a goddamn masterpiece, okay? That film should be projected on a wall in the Louvre. All right, I Louvre it. And since people hold these Disney movies so close to their hearts, some people really go all out with their admiration for uh, the Walt Disney Company well into their adulthood. And that's Judy what Cinderella. we're gonna be talking about today. Unfortunately, the only definition I could find for Disney adults uh, if you think I'm only watching this because I'm about to do a Fear M podcast with Cutie Cinderella later today and I need some ammunition to spark up some drama, you would be absolutely correct for thinking that because that's precisely why I'm watching this video. Uh, it was on Urban Dictionary, so apologies in advance. So according to Urban Dictionary, a Disney adult is a millennial adult with or without kids that can't stop talking about Disney including the movies and the parks. Even if they do have kids, they're still way more obsessed with it than their kids ever would be. They probably engage in casual Disney bounding, which we'll talk about later, and visit the theme parks at least once a year. They're obsessed with everything Disney and probably have a Mickey Mouse bumper sticker and or tattoo. One of the most terrifyingly intense people you'll ever encounter, okay. Now that's a problem with Urban Dictionary. No one can just give a definition, you know? They always have to like throw their own opinion in there at the end. Could you imagine if like Webster's Dictionary did that? <laughs> you look up the definition of peanut and it says, the oval seed of a South American plant, widely roasted and salted and eaten as a snack. I don't like them, I'm allergic. But you can get the general public's opinion based on that definition alone. People just think Disney adults are weird and cringy. And a few years ago, I for sure would have made a video just, you know, roasting these people, goofing on them. Cause you know, Silly adult, Disney for kids. But dude, I, I'm 27, <laughs> you know, I'm an adult. I feel like instead of just making fun of something I don't understand, it's better for me to just try to understand it and then make fun of it. Because I'll admit it, they, you know, some Disney adults do weird things. Like here's a hypothetical thing a Disney adult might do. Like maybe they'll make a TikTok about trying all the water from inside the park and you know, they'll, and they'll grade it one to 10 and, and they'll include all the, the gross fountains with pennies in it and rivers and shit. And then they'll get banned from Disney because obviously that's the weirdest thing you could ever do. You know, that's just a thing that might happen, but no one okay, actually ever content. do that, right? It'd be insane. I that part is content. A lot of adults do like onboarding. Which is a concept that fucking blew my mind. The onboarding shit is crazy. Did you already watch this on stream? She wasn't too mad about it. Yeah, but like I'm going to slander her. So then she will get mad. Because the entire purpose of this... Uh, uh, the entire purpose of what I'm doing here is to make Cutie mad. That's why I'm doing it. Here's the one minute ad break in the middle of the hour, by the way. 
I just got banned by Disney. So folks, today we are going to take a close look at the world of Disney adults, and I'm going to try my best to understand why they do the things that oh, they Disney do. Oh, Disney bounding. Disclaimer, if you are a Disney adult, please don't get mad at me. Fair warning, I might take the piss out of it a little bit in this video because I still want this to be a little funny. But at the end of the day, seriously, I just want to learn. I just want to see what, what all the fuss is about, okay? So without further ado, let's see what's what's up. You know, like the movie. Okay, so when you search Disney adults on Google Trends, pretty stagnant up until about September 2009, which is actually right around the time where Disney acquired Marvel Entertainment. So my guess is that articles were using the term Disney and the word adults like more often than usual when they were writing about this. So it's Are you still mad him and Ethan kissed? Uh, no, because I kissed him for New Year's. So guess what? That's right. Me and Curtis Connor kissed on the lips on New Year's Eve as the strike, as the clock struck midnight. Sucks to suck, doesn't it? I bet tough. you're jealous. Now, think about that. To find the actual origin of the term Disney adult, but I mean, pretty obvious as adults. What else do you call adults obsessed with Disney, right? Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Losers, I'm kidding. <laughs> Obviously, Disney movies aren't just for kids. I know that. Don't look up Disney adult films, though. That's probably a bad idea. Or maybe it's a good idea. <laughs> Who knows? Most Disney movies like, actually include jokes that like only adults will understand, you know? Like this one. I have over 30 accessories and I deserve more respect. Ah, uh, that's better. Hey, no one takes my wife's mouth, except me. Mr. Potato Head? More like Mr. Potato Getting Head. Yeah. But those jokes aside, I feel like Disney movies are just good, except for Cars 2, which was great. Disney knows how to tell a good story, and they really know how to tackle these emotional and complex issues and ideas. Even when there aren't any humans in the actual movie, their stories are always very human, and we can all relate to them, which is genius because it appeals to kids because it's silly, you know, goofy, it's bright, it's, it's nice to look at, but it also appeals to the adults who are the ones that are gonna be spending the money on movie tickets, and streaming service subscriptions, and t-shirts, and action figures, and lightsabers, and cruise ship vacations, and theme park tickets, and just fucking everything else that Disney sells. But when it comes to Disney parks, I'm sure the parents are down to go too, right? Because it's like, yeah, sure, my kids get to go play on the rides, I liked the movies as well, and also they have beer there. So I'll get a little buzz. And then maybe I'll get a little buzz. Like, could you imagine if any other weird, like, kids content channels on YouTube started a theme park? Fucking Johnny Johnny Land? Yeah, like anybody would ever go to a Spider-Man and Elsa theme park. Oh, wait. Like, people don't really have an issue. Wait, hold up. Like, kids content channels on YouTube started a theme park? Fucking Johnny Johnny Land? Yeah, like anybody would ever go to a Spider-Man and... Oh, for a second, I thought this was... I thought this was something different. I thought it was Sasha Gray. Elsa. Theme park. Oh, wait. Like, people don't really have an issue with parents going to Disneyland with their kids. But when an adult who doesn't have kids goes to Disney like every week, they dress up for it, they have Disney memorabilia, and their whole life revolves around Disney. Uh, I feel bad, but like, I know him. He's a cosplayer. It's like kind of his job, I guess. Yeah, he's a... Fuck, when did I meet him? I met him, like, many, many... Uh, I met him many years ago, back when I was at the Young Turks. He's a very kind guy. What a creative cosplay. Well, this one is... I mean, I think he is an... Uh, he is a... Uh, he is a Disney adult, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But he also is a... Cosplayer. They dress up for... They have Disney memorabilia and their whole life revolves around Disney. Uh, that's what people seem to have a problem with. And obviously the main group of people who are Disney adults are millennials. And you know what? Especially in the Dude, dude. No, it's not. I'm torturing my puppy, okay? In a cage. I'm torturing her in a cage. No, the cage is not open for the dog to walk out. Like, what the fuck? This person, literally, using one of their many alt accounts at this point, comes in here, waits for a fucking, not even for an hour, literally waits for the 10-minute barrier to end, so he can go, is the cage open for the dog to walk out? Is the cage open for the dog to walk out? Is the cage open for the dog to walk out? Periodically. 
Of course the cage is not open for the dog to walk out. The entire point of it is so that the dog doesn't fucking piss where she sleeps so we can train her to not piss where she fucking uh, piss inside the house. Okay? Please. Jesus, fuck. Lovely puppy, by the way. There you go. Why would there be a cage if she could just walk out? The entire purpose of a cage is so that she can't walk out. The entire reason why the cage is just as large as the the uh, bed is so that she doesn't piss on the bed and then lay in her own piss because she won't want to piss in the bed and then lay in her own piss. You're talking to a wall. They want you to react like this. I just want a human response for once in my fucking life. I want him. I want someone on the internet that is a fucking troll to just like literally go, oh my God, maybe I am being kind of weird here. I'm just going to stop. I want you to be human. I want you to be human and not like a fucking chat bot. Okay. I want a human response. That's why I'm doing this. In like the last year or two, the hate towards millennials has been pretty gnarly. Deserved though. <laughs> I'm a millennial. I'm not proud of it. I'm trying to quit. And it is extremely millennial or chuggy to be a Disney adult. Honestly, dude, the lengths these Disney adults go to show their love for Disney is honestly pretty impressive for example there's this thing called disney bounding that we've heard about in the definition where people will take inspiration from a certain disney character and incorporate that into their outfit that they wear to a disney park so say you want to dress up like goofy you know maybe you throw on an orange shirt and a yellow cardigan and a green hat and there you go dude you look goofy as hell in like a in like a nice way they have to do like subtle costumes because obviously if you pull up to a disney park in like a full sully fursuit some little kid's gonna be like, oh, you work here because you're dressed up like Sully. Can I get a photo? And they maybe say, no, fuck off, kid. I don't want to take a photo. And that kid cries and then the parents complain to Disney. So it's a whole thing. No furries at Disney, I guess. And dude, I get why people poke fun at this stuff. I understand. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've never, you know, thought this was a silly thing to do. But honestly, man, looking at it now, whatever floats your boat or whatever touches your butt. Like when I see photos and videos of Disney adults like at Disney, I don't think I've ever achieved that level of happiness, right? What's that like? What, what is that like? They're way happier than I will ever be. And it's not hurting anybody. Or is it? There is a bunch of criticisms towards Disney adults. So I figured we'd go over the main like three that I think people have against them and see if they're, they're warranted. Number one. Devoting your life to a corporation. There are people out there who think it's a little odd to devote so much of your life and identity to one of the biggest corporations in the world. And some could go as far as, you know, saying the very concept of Disney adults could be pulled like right out of a dystopian like sci-fi novel. And honestly, I can see where they're coming from a little bit. There's something almost Orwellian about a group of people buying everything related to a corporation, dressing like the characters, getting engaged at the company's theme park and sort of forming a, a symbiotic relationship with a business. It is, it is Orwellian like a is a word. I had to Google to make sure. But again, I'm trying to be as open-minded as I can. This isn't my cup of tea, but if it makes someone happy, who am I to say it's bad, right? Like if there was a Legend of Zelda theme park by my house, I'd go every single day, okay? So I get it. Criticism number two, Disney's problematic past and present and future, probably. So when you're yeah, I don't care about that part as much. A corporation as big as Disney, you're going to get caught up in a few scandals. I think it's inevitable. You don't become one of the biggest companies in the world without a complete lack of business. business. Are you as passionate about anything similar? No. You can get a Disney wedding and pay to have cast members attend your wedding. Even ride the Cinderella Crystal Coach, take you to the Disney cha Chapel. That's insane. Um... No, not One Piece, not Japan. Wait, what? Are you saying I'm passionate about an entire country? It's not true. Okay, that's kind of true, but like also Japan won Disney Zero. Japan literally has a Disneyland. And also, I am very open and very honest about Japan's shortcomings. So let's remember that. Whereas, like, Disney adults are not. 
ethics. Let's go over just a few controversies that Disney has had. They've used countless offensive stereotypes and imagery in their movies over the years. A total of 29 animals died either on the way to Disney's <laughs> Animal fuck? Kingdom or while they were there. Pixar's what? John Lasseter was accused several times of sexual harassment over the course of more than a decade. A four-year-old who died of leukemia was a huge Spider-Man fan and his father wanted to put Spider-Man on his dead son's headstone, but Disney refused, stating that its denial would help preserve the innocence and magic of its characters. That's awesome. That is really fucked up. That's wow, dude. That's what I do care about. Like Disney's rigorous control, like it's methodical and almost like animal like control of, of uh, all things that pertain to Disney IP. They copy striked a gravestone of a child who died of leukemia. You do not get to that level, dude. That is, ooh. That's awesome. Disney was like, fuck that four year old. <laughs> it's fucking dope. Uh, and oh yeah, Disney tried to trademark the Day of the Dead, Dio de los Muertos, the, the holiday. They tried trademarking that because Pixar was working on a movie that featured the holiday and they wanted to sell Day of the Dead themed merchandise. Disney tried to trademark a fucking holiday. Hey, I know you've been celebrating Day of the Dead. Don't they have like happy birthday trademarked? Hold on. Is that a meme? The song is in the public domain in the United States and European Union. Warner Chapel Music had previously claimed copyright on the song in the U.S. and collected licensing fees for its use. In 2015, the copyright claim was declared invalid and Warner Chapel agreed to pay back $14 million in licensing fees. Oh my God. What the fuck is that? <laughs> That's crazy. That was why every corporate restaurant had a weird version they sang to people. Bro, I swear to God, they would copy strike fucking the air if they could. Yo, bro, I'm not gonna lie. We are literally bleeding purple until we die. We are on Twitch for life. They literally treat us amazing. Twitch, y'all are amazing. We love y'all site. We love y'all platform. Y'all give us everything that we really ever dreamed about. Yeah, and bro, like everything that we talked about in October, like that we asked for, y'all dead ass gave it to us. Y'all been bro. helping us, coming to us. What are supporting us? We love y'all to which for life. Meetings, like everything purple, about man. like the boys night and shit, you know, everything that we even spoke on in the meeting. I wouldn't rather so be anywhere else than twitch.tv, dog. <laughs> that shit. I mean, they're being sarcastic. Wait, for like thousands of years and it's really important like personally and culturally, but how much? Aww. I have, can't have it. I want to make a t-shirt. And of course, there's that whole thing about Walt Disney being anti-Semitic and how he froze himself and then Disney made the movie Frozen. So when people search Walt Disney Frozen, the movie pops up instead of articles about Walt Disney being frozen. In The Lion King, there's the sex written in the stars. And there's also this weird clip from Aladdin. Good to take off the There's the topless woman in the background of that one scene in The Rescuers, the penis on the Little Mermaid cover, and the hard penis in the Little Mermaid marriage scene. There's a lot. And all of this is terrible, I know, but the worst thing Disney has ever done is this. Oh, hey, Dixie and Noah. Hey, Disney, Disney Park Snack. While we have you here, we just have to know, what is your favorite Disney Park snack? Mine's probably the spicy pickle. Mine's gotta be the frosty parfait. Ho cap. See you real soon. Bye. Ho cap. Obviously, like the racism and stuff is worse than that video, but 
I had to see it, so now you had to see it. And the other main critique is sort of the uh, environmental impact of the Walt Disney Company. When it comes to the parks, Disney is actively like trying to lower the impact and energy consumption of their parks, which is good. You know, they got a whole page about it on their website, but they do produce a lot of plastic and textile ways to make toys and merchandise, and they don't have anything about that on the website. I feel like that's what people are upset about. Like Disney adult critics don't understand how someone can support a big corporation like that just to have a fun day at a theme park, you know? But really, man you could say that about anything drinking coffee is no fucking terrible for the environment don't worry why am i gonna stop absolutely not no fucking chance man i like i like the way it makes me feel am i a shitty person for that i honestly don't think so also disney owns fucking everything so it's inevitable okay you're gonna be supporting them some way there is no ethical consumption under capitalism so you might as well just let people enjoy the things that they like right unless it's like clubbing seals you know what i mean clubbing with seal that'd be pretty fun <laughs> Okay, so now we have like the surface level definition of Disney adults and the main criticisms, but I think it's time we go a little deeper. Okay, so I needed a way to structure all this. I have a top three least favorite style of chatters and rewind chatters are number one on that list. It's it's really funny to have like your least favorite type of Hasanabi chatters list. Uh, I do think it's valid, though. The rewind, you have to watch this chatters, are so rarely on the money. Like, usually they are absolutely off base. They are always, the run it back chatters are like, literally, it'll be like a fart joke or something. And they'll be like, dude, you got to rewind, bro. You got to rewind, dude. But like, honestly, it's not probably, it's probably not the number one. Um, because the number one has to be fucking backseat, uh, dog dads right now. That's a change. This is a fluid list. It's constantly changing. It's ever changing right now. It's dog dads, like backseat dog dads. Um, there are worse ones. Like the drama perverts are really bad. The drama pervert who like immediately clips and ships it to LSF chatter is probably the permanent stain though. Audio files are pretty bad, too. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Hello. Daddy neglecting you? Yes. No, no biting. No bites. Biting. No, don't bite that. Don't bite biting. Yeah. She's <laughs> biting your face. Hello. Wait, isn't that the girl from Vogue? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh my God, is that? Is that the hundred these Valkyrie? Wait, hold on one second. Stop. One second. That's crazy. Wait, what? What a big get. This is a big get for the Hasanabi broadcast, guys. This is a big get. A big get. Like this is this is a content play. What are you saying? This is a huge this is like having like an actual real celebrity on here. What do you mean? Seven page? It's not even a th it's not even a one page, two page. Wait, how many pages is it? Seven? Seven page spread in Vogue Philippines, Pinoy Gang's very own no. Oh, no. Rachel 100T Valkyrie Hofstetter in the building. What the fuck? Yeah, she's chompy. What is he teaching? You, huh? she, she hates women just like I do. <laughs> she has internalized misogyny. Oh, no. Can you guys not hear her? Oh, yeah, yeah. I Let's see. Wait, speak into the microphone, please. Hello. You can hear her. Why Hello, test, test, test. Yeah, you can. You literally can hear her. That's crazy. Oh, 
Yeah, she just no, 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 let her run away. Audio pedophiles, armchair diagnosis Andy, three dog diagnosis Andy. <laughs> audio file turned into audio pedophiles, pretty funny. Misophonia chatters are a really a special breed as well. We were thinking as as far as like annoying chatters goes because like I'm so good at like my noise gate. I'm so fucking goaded with my noise gate that like the misophonia chatters are like they have to be extra listening in intently, listening in extra hard. Uh to to be like, "Oh, you're chewing." It's like, "No, you don't." We're talking about uh, the tier list of like worst chatters, the worst type of chatters. Do you have the do you have worst type of chatters like in your in your worst mind? Types of chatters? Like what would you if you were to rank like off the top of your mind? What type of chatter is your least favorite type of chatter? <laughs> um, besides spamming. But just everyone that spams is like your worst type of chatter. Yeah, I think just spam like we were really... we were thinking about that. Like I mean, to be fair. <laughs> I don't think anyone has a chat like yours. What do you mean? Really? She well, said you guys are unique. She likes it. No, no, no. You have really, really, really good chatters, but since you do address like the, okay. the one negative chatter, you have like 10 negative chatters. And okay, since I, you address the nine I, negative I, I chatters, don't, I don't like that the camera, the camera chatters. is literally not even focusing on my face. It's only focusing on your face. What the fuck? What the fuck? This is my camera. How dare you? How dare you? How dare me? Also, very bright. Uh, that's nice. because of the, the camera. Ow. Oh, now you want her? That yes. Are you serious? Yes. Stop now fighting. he will pick her up because someone else is picking her up. Yeah. I got jealous. I made a list of games for you today. Wait, what? No. I made a list. I no. even took the time to write whoa, down whoa, how long whoa. they would be. And also, okay, first of all, he didn't tell me that there was a time limit for today. Oh, so I was going to come at four. That's right. Run away, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Run away. God. Uh, Just get them. Okay, she's running away from you too. So, yeah, how do you feel about that? Um, so I, I picked like five shorter games that are like 30 minutes to an hour. They're all spooky. What? And I think we should, what do you mean? What? What was your plan for today? Literally planned for your end today. So he wouldn't have the game shaking my head. Ha <laughs> ha. Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. My plan was, I thought you were coming, uh, at like one. Which, you know, uh, we are grateful to have you here regardless of whenever you come. Um, but uh, my plan is it's at 4.30. At 4.30, no. my... What is that? Is that your shoe? <laughs> she grabbed her shoe and is running with it. Okay. Uh, my plan was to... Uh, you know, look at some puppy training videos, you know, do some puppy related content possibly and, uh, do all of that. And then what my plan was to do some puppy related content and maybe do like one murder react. And then at four 30, my brother's spaceship is going to launch. So that's like kind of a big deal. And we were going to watch that together, exciting. me and him, you can be a part of that as well. Um, yeah, I would love to. Hello. And, uh, and then after that, I was going to do fear and the podcast fear. I'm on, I have a podcast podcast called fear and yeah. Not cuties. I mean, technically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Wait, so you're saying there's a crime video you haven't seen yet? There are plenty of crime videos. There's so much crime. You don't How understand. How have you not seen them all? There's so much crime. Speaking of uh, uh, crimes, it would be a crime not to talk about this seven-page spread. <gasps> Valkyrie, the Filipina-American live streaming okay, icon, pause. 
is there pause, a, pause. Are you pausing? Pause, pause. You're I pausing have pause me in yes. real life. You're, there's an Can IRL pause. Can we talk about his stupid comment yesterday? What? He can't just be like, oh my God, Ray, I'm proud of you. Or, oh my God, Ray, you're so pretty. Can't say that. He said, swagapino activity. What do you mean? That's what it is. It's way cooler than saying some swag-a-pino basic, pino like, yeah, you activity. want me to, you want me to tweet like I'm Austin. You are iconically yeah, look gorgeous. At, look at Austin. Or Brooke, you're everything. Congratulations, Queen. Instead, nobody's out there defending Swagapinos, okay? <laughs> like, that's... I, I think that this is literally the right thing. What this is the right... Swag... I couldn't even reply. I didn't even know what to say. Yeah, I was I originally going to say Pinoy Gang, which I don't know. I should have said Pinoy Gang. Anyway... She reveals how her childhood shaped her love for video games, Stop. her grueling rise to success, and sexism in gaming. Where are you going? Do not. I'm about to leave. No. This is so sick. Do you do you actually use that? Do you use that camera for vlogging? Wait. Not, Wait. Like, this was, is fake. It was their prop. You, do you think I'm playing a game here? Wait. You're not playing a game here. I thought you were like a big. What is this? A Nintendo 64? I, I thought you were a big. GameCube, Nintendo 64, whatever fan. <laughs> wow, this was Cube, fake. Nintendo 64 fan. This was fake? Yeah. What the even, hell? The TV wasn't even plugged in. What the play. hell? Yo. I've actually never played a game in my life. Okay, where, when, are, when is it coming out? It's out. Wait, so we can actually currently see the seven-page spread? I told... No, please... Uh, if you think I'm not looking at the Vogue Philippines <laughs> seven page spread right this very moment, you're My out mom of your is mind. In the Philippines right now, and uh -huh. I told her that it came out, and she went to the store, and they said it sold out. Like, wait, really? Yeah. Do not sell my personal information, please. Confirm my choices. Okay, so where is it? Where Where is it on the website? I don't know. I haven't looked. Well, what? Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't like You are so, okay, you're so swagged out that you didn't even fucking look well, for I, your. I post, I sent the, I posted the screenshot that they said. It's this. That's all they've said. That. Whoa! It's on your IG. Okay, let's take a look. Let's read. Why? We're going to, what do you mean why? This is huge. What are you talking about? Damn, I'm a fraud. I liked it and I didn't even see it. See, I said, you look so good. Fire. <laughs> look at that. I'm going to self like that. Yeah. Okay, let's read. For Filipino American <laughs> Rachel Ray Hofstetter. Where are you going? Yeah, so Better known as... Better known as Valkyrie. Clocking in over thousands of hours streaming gameplay on Twitch and YouTube are... But other ways... <coughs> Can you come back? I can't... Uh, dude, what the fuck? Bad ho Bad guest. Bad guest. She's a bad guest. Do you see this? Hassan is like an embarrassing parent showing off their kid's trophy. I mean, it's, this is cool host. as hell. No, you're a bad you're guest. A bad host. You're a bad guest. You're a bad host. You're a bad guest. First of all, you didn't, you told me what we were doing today. You said something about crime. I lied. Scare, lots of gaming. I gameplay lied. I lied. Today, this is what we're doing Kaya today. stuff. And you did not say anything this about is what we're doing today. making me look at stuff about me. This is so sick. I don't like this. It's cringe. It's this cringe. is, well, it's not cringe. It's so cringe. Okay. Uh, but, okay. Clocking in over thousands of hours. Are you serious? Streaming gameplay on Twitch and YouTube. What? This is sick. What do you mean? Why didn't you like look at this before I got here? Okay, can I just say something? What? It's kind of fucked up. She even Don't played even, with personalities. I know what you're gonna say. Personalities from rapper. <laughs> oh. Shut up. Shut Hello, up. He, thinks, he continues to think that he is the reason that AOE or AOC. <laughs> AOE? AOE? Area of effect? Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please Yo. Please. Okay. That's fucked up that they didn't put me in that. <laughs> I, I did that. That no, was me. Didn't. Yes, no, I was. Didn't. Yes, it was me. It was not you. Yes, it is. No, I, it wasn't. I made you. I think. It <laughs> I'm kidding. You have, you I'm have, kidding. It's a joke. It's you a joke. have. 
<laughs> it's a joke. Some audacity. I'm sorry. Some audacity. It's fucked up. Politician okay, Alexandria Ocasio know- Cortez. How about politician Hassan Hassan Abi Piker? There's a reason they didn't list you there. I'm literally. There's a reason. I'm erased. Hey, hey, nope. I'm erased from history. No. This is so fucked up. I'm literally erased from history. Vogue Philippines fucked up. I'm the number one Pinoy gang defender of all time. I am a champion of Swagapinos. Have to stop saying Swagapino. Wait, what? Why? Wait, what do you mean? Why should I have? Wait, no, I will never. Because it's cringe. No, it's not. It's It's sick as fuck. Okay, to the Swagapinos in the chat, should I stop saying Swagapino? Blah, 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 blah. They're all saying no, never. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, gang, you just got outvoted. You're like Toast right now. Toast says that he's Filipino because he's literally 0.03%. I have no Filipino in me. I'm <laughs> Turkish. <laughs> I can't say that. Read this in Filipino. Para se Filipino Americana nasi Rachel Re Hofstadter mas kilala bilang. She doesn't know Tagalog anyway, so there's no reason to read this like that. Uh, ang paglalaro ng libu libang oras sa Twitch at YouTube ay iba pang paran upang magpahinga at makahanap ng mga kaibigan. Is that fucking... He's fucking casting a spell right Was that now. good? What the fuck? I'm speaking <laughs> that, Tagalog! That did not Yo! Sound good. Yo! You just looked at... You just that looked at Tagalog, which good. was very good, by the way. That was pretty good. Did I nail it? Did I nail it? Be honest. Did I fucking nail that? Did I nail the accent? No. That was perfect. Thank you. Swagapino slash Flexigans are staples of the Hasanabi broadcast. Exactly. Do you have a bully stick or something? Uh, you're, yes. Um, I give her my arm. And back there somewhere, <laughs> if you want to go search for it. But she erased you personally from Vogue. Yeah, that literally is what happened. That's crazy. This is a real. Fo- this is real footage of you. That photo of you. <laughs> this is a famous make the rich pay photo. So famous. <laughs> what the, the, so famous. No, famous in the worst ways possible. <laughs> it is actually, unfortunately, a very popular photo. I wish it wasn't. So you're right. You don't know about it because you're not brain broken, uh, but certainly infamous is the right term for that. <clears throat> if you ever want to sound like a Pinoy, just replace your Fs with Ps and say Po at the end of your sentence and you'll fit right in. Don't tell me stuff like that because I will do that. Um, Instead of saying bed sheets, you say bed shit. Bed shit? Not actually. What do you say oh instead of... Oh, my God. You took that so what a, what literally. A, what, a, what if you say... What do you say oh instead of top of the God. hour ad break? Do you say avoiding said ad breaks by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime? Fucking got him. That's such a good debate. Holy fuck. At the top of the hour, we're back. We're so back. At the top of the hour, there's a streaming ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. Whoo! Sheesh! Here is the three-minute ad break now. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Guapoco, thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour, reaching Swagapino status. Here's the three-minute ad break now was fused thank you for the five get the subs how do you know if she's not being everywhere um i just kind of did you just give up on taking care of your dog no 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 um she's actually pretty good at not peeing in places that she's not supposed to be sometimes she fucks up but overall she's pretty good just roams the hole pretty much it's really? yeah why don't you just shut this door Wait, what? No, 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 no. No, because then she she gets like uh antsy and tries to like claw the door and try to run out or run out oh. of the door. Yeah, I'm t- I don't know. I don't know. I just be bonjour. 
Uh, thank you for the five. Get the subs and was fused. Thank you for the five. Give the subs. Shout outs to AOE, one of my favorite politicians. Me too. Got to be one of my faves. I was so close to getting it right. Yeah. <laughs> He's a roaming dog, so it makes sense. Okay, uh, we were watching a video on Disney adults, but let's look at a, a different video instead. Let's get to the dog content. Tibetan Mastiff, the pros and cons of owning one. Name itself, the Tibetan Mastiff was created centuries ago in Tibet. During those times, they were used as guard dogs for livestock and property. While some families still <laughs> use them for the same purpose, today, they're also used as family companions and show dogs. For today's video, We'll talk about the pros and cons of Please owning one of these dogs. Perhaps the very first thing that you may notice oh about these dogs God. is their massive. Like, oh my like God. One, You're, what's it at? Oh my, you are literally, one, you are the chatter. You are the. 1.15. Okay. Size. It's yeah. perfect. 1.15. Yeah. Shouts, shouts out to Ray. What, it gotta be one of my least favorite chatters, the chatter types on the list. I'm Can not gonna out? lie. You that having a kayak cam makes me watch longer actually helps smart however behind their big bodies is a dog with a soft heart towards their humans while they may still be protective in nature these dogs tend to be affectionate <laughs> towards the people that they love later on we'll get to know more about these wonderful dogs to know if they suit your lifestyle hi there and welcome to animal insider if you're new to our channel make sure to subscribe what if it's first. not a tibetan mastiff then we go back to the yeah, drawing board the, baby the DNA test coming back? oh turns out i gave it in immediately after getting the dna test done mm -hmm. and embarkvet.com responded to me and said oh yeah you want to know when you get it back uh never no they literally were like they've only sent me more fucking ads since i since i set it up but just turn the ads off they just here i listen just you just re at what? the bottom it'll say stop getting the emails like okay this. regardless you want to know it says breed id test pro processing results will be ready by late may <laughs> can they hear her right now i don't think so where's kaya cam well it's for your That's daily of dose of dog related Where contents as mentioned earlier, for today's video, back we'll there, talk but all I can't, about the pros and cons of around, Tibetan so Mastiff. We can't have it so, on without side. further ado, let's begin. Pros 1. Tibetan Mastiffs are natural-born guardians. One of the biggest benefits of having this dog around you is that once you're able to gain their trust, they will be loyal around you and will protect you until the end. It is true that they will not be as playful as other dogs, but their natural instinct and capability Wait, to protect you and your property is a unique attribute that not all dog breeds have. What? 2. Tibetan Mastiffs make excellent companions of elders. With their traits as loyal, faithful, and natural protectors, Tibetan Mastiffs are highly recommended for elderly people as protective companions. Because they are vigilant dogs, they can give the best protection that not all dog breeds can provide. As a matter of fact, their presence alone is enough to make intruders think twice before entering the property. I don't Aside care about any of this. I want dogs, playfulness. They're also quiet and not too active, <laughs> which again makes them a perfect match for Yeah, they are citizens. not too active, except they are fucking insanely active right now when they're a puppy. Three, Tibetan Mastiffs are not regular shedders. While they Yeah, that's right. Let's go. Uh, when are you going to When are you going to evolve Kaya? Kind of getting bored of her puppy face. First of all, how dare you? Secondly, it takes some time, okay? It's not Pokémon out here. But when I do evolve her, I'm going to make sure she's a Vaporeon build they still do shed tibetan mastiffs Why? are not constant shedders this means that they require less uh i don't know i think it's like uh the most majestic one and i can use her as a floaty in the pool like she so pure what do you never heard about vaporeon <laughs> he doesn't know oh no <laughs> No, 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 no. Why would you even think that? Well, I don't no. know. Maybe I'm brain I broken. know the fucking. I don't know. No. Oh my God. I'm sorry that I don't have fucking encyclopedia knowledge of internet copy pastas. No, you guys are. I'm surprised you're this fucked up. <laughs> I, chat, it makes sense. No, you want to know what's actually fucked up? What? This morning at the airport at 6.30 a.m. Uh-huh. 
I'm getting ready to go onto my flight and I get recognized by this guy. Flex. And he comes up to me. He's, he's like, like, damn, is oh that is that Valkyrie from it's the Vogue early. from Shut the up. Vogue 7 pager? Shut up. What? It's Ow. early. 6 30 a.m. It's a violation. He comes up, I don't have makeup on. I'm chilling. I didn't think I would get recognized. He comes up and he's like, oh, well, you're a YouTuber, right? Yeah, I am. He goes, oh, I recognize you from that clip where Kai Sinat is talking about your age. I was like, I want to die. This is life after 30. Literally life after 30. Okay, why know. are you wired? This is oh. when he finds out how old I am. <laughs> you pull that up Kai so fast. And it came up immediately. Valkyrie got a, does Valkyrie got a, got a, got a. Valkyrie's guy. actually like super nice, bro. She's actually like a really, really cool. This was before Aiden Ross became a fucking yeah, massive before... shithead. I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, I, bro, like she, she followed me the other day. Gave... Watch out, you might get copy striked. Aiden Ross I'm has appeared in one you of your videos. There's a butterfly in my stomach. <laughs> She's very, um, you know what's crazy? She doesn't even look her age. Can you guess how old she is? How old is she? She's 30, bro. 31, actually. I love this. Yo, what? 30. <laughs> what? 30. I can't listening to my like own laugh. I love oh, this cringe. clip. Bro, he's got to stop pulling out that shit, bro. I mean, it's just really giving me some real PTSD. What the f you say to me? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> whoa. Whoa there. Whoa. Oh whoa. Whoa. Sir. Uh, Put it down. Oh, man. It's funny. <laughs> this has 24 million views. This is your fault that people have seen it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Also, there's nothing uh, wrong with being 30 no, years old. No, no, 30 is not old. Copium, it's not. I mean, actually, it's old. Copium, it's, it's old. Not. But it like, really there's nothing wrong copium. with being old. It's not, okay? It really isn't. Actually, it isn't. There's nothing wrong with being old. No. That's the way I see it. It's not, it's not bad. It's just, you know, when you're on the internet. And also, you look like you're 20. So there's that. I, I definitely look I at look least old. 28. I look old. That's the difference. Like You don't, you don't look old. I think you looked much older when you had your full beard and your long hair. I think you cutting your hair and shaving your beard maybe dropped you by like 15 years. <laughs> okay. okay, let's continue. Grooming compared to other dog breeds, they blow their coats once a year, so you may need to brush them more often during these times. Other than that, this breed is relatively easy to groom. Four, Tibet. So uh, yeah, scared. look at this is Hoscord. Ray being 30, swooner. Hassan being 30, boomer. <laughs> nice. I mean, it is like that. Mastiffs though. are easy to potty train. <laughs> what? Although Tibetan Mastiffs are quite a challenge to train, many owners find it easy to housebreak them. Of course, the very first thing that you need to do in order to successfully train your dog is to earn their trust. Since they are not easily trusting of humans, these dogs need an experienced, firm, and strong leader who can provide them the leadership that they need. Five, Tibetan Mastiff. Okay. Okay, this is fucked up. Wait, am I not a firm and strong leader? What the fuck is this? Gaia! I think she's just not a Tibetan Mastiff, that's why. I know she knows how to sit. I taught her that. Eh, eh, no. Come here. Okay, she, you're just flexing now. You're just flexing. You can't, they can't even see. They can't even see, but. Okay, I'm starting to get jealous. Leave. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. This treacherous bitch. Oh my god. Oh my god. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? She's like, no, no, I want off. I don't want I want off this ride. That's what she's saying. <laughs> the little fucking pause. God, you hurt my feelings, ma'am. I I'm a little jealous. I really I should have gotten 
a male dog. I fucked up. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Hurt people hurt people. Mastiffs are healthy dogs. In general, well-bred Tibetan Mastiffs are considered as healthy Ray's dogs. Ray's not muted. While they may still suffer from some health conditions, it is not as much as compared to other dog breeds. If you're considering this dog, some of the health problems that you need to look out for include hip and elbow. Hip and elbow dysplasia and droopy eyes. Okay, I know. I've seen this. Hold on. Here, I'll just take off the noise gear real quick. One second. What was it? Roadcaster Pro. No, 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 no. It's just like, I just need to take off the noise gate. Fuck it. Here you go. You're uh, dysplasia. unlimited eye no problems and oh, yeah. hypothyroidism. If you're buying a dog, it is important to purchase from a reputable breeder to ensure that you get a healthy dog that can live for a long time. Six, the Tibetan Mastiff's no, appearance is enough to deter intruders. As mentioned earlier, this breed is what? huge in size. And they Hold on. Is it off? What's this? What's this? What's this? What is that? Why, why, what, what's going on there? Hmm. I wonder why. fucking up that door okay is it working i don't know what happened but it's austin's fault yeah no totally look at her they can't even see how cute she's being Hold on. Here, I'll, show. I'll show with the kaya cam new kaya cam uh, not even a new one but oh she stopped she she's like she knew kaya kaya kaya, kaya come here come here kaya Hello. Hello. Ow. Look at her chomping. There she goes. She's so goofy. Oh, she did pee. She did? Where? So, unless that's just slobber, but I'm pretty sure. No, she definitely peed right there. Oh, Fuck. Right there. Okay. I, you know she's like still. Okay, well, I guess I haven't right? fucking earned her trust. They also have an imposing look. This alone is enough to keep intruders away from your property. However, if they're persistent enough to enter your home, then they must be seriously looking for trouble, as this breed won't back down to threats and dangers. 7. Tibetan Mastiffs it's can get there. along with other pets. <laughs> they may be massive dogs, but Tibetan Mastiffs are actually easygoing animals who can get along well with other pets in the house, provided that they are socialized at an early age. This is especially true if they are raised together. When they see unfamiliar dogs, it is common for your Tibetan Mastiff to show their dominance at first. After all, they were bred to protect. With proper no, supervision, I will not piss they on will you. calm down in no time. 8. Tibetan Mastiffs are excellent family dogs. I don't know why I read that. Provided that they are properly trained and socialized <laughs> early, you won't have a problem keeping this dog in your home, even if you have younger family members. As with all dog breeds, it is important to watch your dog closely whenever they interact with children. He's just to currently make sure asking her why happen. she peed. As with Tibetan Mastiffs, they will enjoy having close relationships even with children. So far, what do you think about Tibetan Mastiffs? Do you think they'll fit just right into your home? Or is their personality too strong for you to handle? Let us know your thoughts later on because for now, we'll continue getting to know more about these dogs. So, without further ado, let's continue. Cons. One, Tibetan Mastiff must be kept on. Pause. All right, I know you guys want to learn so much about the Tibetan Mastiff, the pros and cons of owning one, but I think this is a good time to go over what scary game Hassan should play today. So I have five options, and I think we need to eliminate one, or actually I have six options. So I feel like I need to eliminate two of them so that we could do a poll so you guys can pick which one. All of, all of these are about 1.5, 30 minutes to 1.5 hours long. So the first one is called... The Toilet Chronicles, which is about a uh, toilet escape room thing. Um, it's about 1.5 hours long. And I, I've never played this uh, this before, so I think it'd be kind of good. It's supposed to be comedic, escape the toilet room. Um, and then there's Bon Bon, which I've been interested in. What do you mean that one? You haven't even heard the other options. Bon Bon, I th it's 30 minutes long. I think you role play as a baby, and it's traumatic. And then there's the closing shift, which I've played before, which is 1.5 hours. The convenience store, which I've played before. We don't have time for any of these. Hush. Well, I'm just saying. How dare you get 
all of our hopes up. Anyways, one late night is one hour, and then there's a game called I'm Scared that's one hour. The 30 minute one. Bon Bon? I don't know. Whichever one it is, the 30 minute one is the shortest one, right? Yeah, that is the shortest one. It's going to take me an hour to fucking finish anything anyway. That's true. So we just add an extra hour to all of these times. Because he's probably going to stall. I do. I am curious about the toilet one as well. Which is the scariest? Um, the game called I'm Scared. You can't be disappointed in her for relieving her bladder. <laughs> Uh, the I'm scared one. Apparently, they the game puts actual stuff in your computer files. <laughs> oh my god! Come here. Stop. Might be a little spooky. Yeah. The toilet one. Okay. Let's see the trailers. I'm afraid to touch his computer. But maybe when he gets back, he can pull it up. It's just. Very overwhelming. He has chat visible on all three of his monitors, which is deranged. Literally, chat here, there, and right there. And then, it's, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen plus tabs open. It's really um it's very overwhelming. Desktop. His keyboard is disgusting. Very gross. Oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like he should do like a keyboard cleaning stream. What? Um, nothing. What'd you, you say? Huh? What? No. What I'm are just, you saying? We're talking about your setup. Exposed? Wait, what? I was just talking about the condition of your keyboard. Oh, yeah. My keyboard's uh, nasty. I know. It's gross. I was Everybody knows that, though. You should clean it. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Show Ray how you got adopted by the worst weebs on TikTok. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Wait, what is this? Wow. Wait, what? Why am I? Bro, what is the... I did not consent to be in this. I'm about to fucking pull an Aiden Ross and copy strike this shit. I like how they have Haas instead of Hassan. <laughs> oh, no. That was cute. That was terrible. I liked it. <laughs> that was fucking awful. Why'd you guys do that? Number one. Having been existing for centuries, Tibetan Mastiffs are nomadic dogs. This means that they will most likely wander <laughs> around when you keep them off leash. Therefore, if you take them out for a walk, you must keep them on leash. It is also important to ensure that your yard, if you have one, is securely fenced to avoid them from running away from your home. 2. Tibetan True? Mastiff can be aggressive. Because they do have a strong temperament and can be aggressive during confrontational situations, it is vital for Tibetan Mastiffs to receive proper training as well as early socialization. These tend to especially be aggressive toward another dog of the same sex. <laughs> Three, Tibetan Mastiff can be difficult to train. Oh, I know. Tibetan Mastiff. Except like they said, uh, easy to potty train, which I don't agree are with. Intelligent, but they are highly independent dogs, which makes mm. training a challenge. They may know what you're trying to say, but they will not listen to your commands just because they don't feel like it. This is especially true if they don't trust That's you as the leader of the pack. Too. 
With that said, Tibetan Mastiffs need a strong, firm, and patient owner who can when provide them with the kind of training that Kaya they need. And Mika gonna meet? These dogs, like all other dog breeds, when uh, Kaya gets vaccinated, and thrive on be? positive reinforcement. I'm going to get her techniques. vaccinated tomorrow. Therefore, it'll be really helpful if you give them. But there's still more, um, like the first round of vaccines. I'll ask. I'll ask the vet. And plenty of playtime as a reward for their good behavior. Never use harsh punishments, such as yelling and hitting, <laughs> to train your dog, as it will only reduce their self-confidence, which may lead to shyness or aggression. 4. Tibetan Mastiffs can be vocal and messy. Tibetan Mastiffs like to express their emotions with their voice, so you may hear them frequently barking or howling. As huge dogs, their loud and strong voices may disturb your neighbors if you live close to them. But that said, this breed does not make a good choice if you live in a home with noise restrictions, or if you simply prefer a quiet breed. Tibetan Mastiffs will bark excessively if they are bored, or if you keep them in a closed space for a long time. Aside from being loud, this breed is also known to be slobbers. At home, you may find drool all over the floor after they have a meal or a drink. Has she been drooling? Five. No. Tibetan Mastiffs. But they're not easily enticed by food. This part is like kind of true, I think. Even at eight weeks, like she doesn't really give a fuck about treats all that much. Are not easily enticed by food. Unlike most dogs, Tibetan man. Bro, what the fuck? Please listen to Alex G. Who is Alex G, man? You've been saying this all day. Hassan, can you listen to Alex G? Please listen to Alex G. I need to know what you think about his music. Please listen to Alex G, bro. Hassan, please listen to Alex G. Hassan, please listen to Alex G. Well, who the fuck is Alex G, bro? Stop. Mastiffs are hard to reward you with could have treats. Just said no. They are not commonly motivated yeah. by food. I'm saying stop. So you need to explore and be creative to learn as to which reward to they best to respond to. Man. Remember, only use positive reinforcement techniques when training your positive dog. Positive reinforcement. Six. Tibetan <laughs> mastiffs are extremely <laughs> territorial dogs. Positive Having a protective dog is a good thing. However, That's how he said it. <laughs> what? This guy is giving you an informative video. He is. About is killing it. This is Alex you're G. Making fun of his voice. This is Alex G. By the way, this is the person. Shouts out to Alex G. One of my favorite YouTubers. When does it go bad? A dog, regardless of the dog breed and temperament, can be dangerous when he is not properly trained and socialized. A dog that doesn't know how to act in different situations can be a threat wow, to strangers and to other animals. Dog. With Tibetan mastiffs being extremely territorial and protective dogs. They can be a danger to other people and animals if they're not raised properly. Therefore, it is very important to consider your capability in handling these dogs before owning one. 7. Tibetan Mastiffs are not for every household. In order for you to successfully raise and bring home a Tibetan Mastiffs, there are certain factors that you need to consider first. One of these is their exercise <laughs> needs. Although Tibetan Mastiffs don't require a huge amount of exercise, you have to be extra careful not to overexert them while they're still young. If you do, your dog may suffer from several anatomical problems. Another thing you need to consider is that because they were bred to adapt- <gasps> That looks like Kaya. She's floofier. In colder yeah, climates, these dogs are not suited to live in warm environments. It is best that you take them out for a walk when it's not too hot out. So I think, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I think, I, I think that she's like not full to it. To Such as I don't early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Also, but, I never thought I never I never thought that she was full anyway. But like I I don't know how what percentage she is is what I'm yeah. saying. Like I don't fresh know. Fresh water with you. To summarize, here are the important things that you need to consider when you want to take home a Tibetan Mastiff. First is that they only shed once a year, which makes them a great companion for those who don't have enough time for grooming. Second, they are healthy they dogs with only year. minimal health problems. They're yeah, what's up? Right. Also loyal, like, smart, and independent you know dogs that are capable of protecting you and your property. And despite their you strong temperament, I mean. <laughs> these dogs will get along well with children and other pets, so long as they are raised properly. And that ends our video for today. Do you think you're ready to own a Tibetan Mastiff? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. She's outside right now. You want to bring her inside? Yeah, she just, she's just chilling? Yeah, she just roams. I, I, I have to let her roam. No, I, I, she peed, so she's allowed to be, uh, outside. She might be under the hedges. The new thing is she, oh, I forgot to mention this in the pup date, but the new thing is she actually figured out how to go up the stairs. So now, 
so now she's like up the, she goes up the stairs and and to my bedroom sometimes wait hold on Oh my God. You're not alone. I just had a heart attack. <laughs> okay. What you, I told I you. Out there. I told I yelled. You didn't hear me. It's, I said she's under the hedges. She hides under there. Which is I just never look under hedges because that's something Mika would never do. Mika. Uh, an adventure. Come on. She's going to go. Yeah, she she likes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You guys have a lot of trust for an eight barely eight week old puppy. Yeah, it's fine. Um Alex G got a light seven from God Save the Animals. That's my take on it. I don't listen to music. I only listen to Anthony Fantano listen to music. Puppies may not walk the stairs. No, like it's it is a it is a danger, uh, actually. Like she's she's like runs up the stairs now. She can't go down though. <laughs> but she only knows how to go up the stairs, which is, you know, these are big ass stairs too. So I'm like shocked. I didn't even know she was able to. She was a little fearful at first, but, you know, it's taken, like, seven fucking days for her to, like, overcome her fears of the stairs. Alex G isn't just music, though. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know who fucking Alex G is. Please, Alex, get the fuck out of here, okay? That's what the G stands for. <coughs> I don't care. <coughs> I don't... <coughs> Stop. What is this Alex G psyop up in here? What the fuck is happening? Um... A chatter a while back sent me a, uh, a, a YouTube playlist that I want to take a look at called Dog Stuff. And the, the chatter said that this YouTube playlist was actually very helpful and very informative. Teach your dog to listen no matter what, even if you think they are stubborn. Get your dog to calm down with this common sense protocol for relaxation. How to get your dog to behave anywhere. And introducing your dog to the treadmill, dog treadmills, 10-month-old border collie is more interested in other dogs than me. Michael Ellis on how to correct reactivity. And his POC, his last name is Gianos. Golly. <laughs> um, Guards property only goes up. This is the anarcho-capitalist dog. This dog is is ice, basically. Kiko pup is the best. What to train your puppy first. The first thing you want to do when using food is teach your puppy how to take the treat out of your hand. Some puppies won't... Oh, my God. Look at this beautiful little pupper. ...won't find the treat very quickly. So if you're trying to train them something, then it interferes with the training. So make sure that they can find the treat immediately and chilling eat it. on the couch. Also, if you're going to be using treats on the floor... Teacher, what? Oh, did she pee in the house again? Oh my god! She literally spends her time outdoors, uh, browsing, and then comes inside to pee now. And I don't stop. I hate that you guys do Giga Kaya every time she pisses inside the house. It's been getting really fucking bad. I'm gonna have to unfortunately start crate training her. Like literally, I mean, you should have done that first. No, instead of letting her free roam. No, I I thought that because she was only using the pads, and she was only uh, peeing on the pads. I took the pads off, and I'm like what? trying to get her to. Uh, I've I've taken the pads off, and I've been you know giving her a lot of treats and stuff like that. What? There are no pads. There around. are no pee pads. Yeah, there are no pads. So why are you surprised that she's peeing on the ground? Because because there are no pads and uh, I'm only training her to pee outside while also simultaneously letting her roam. She's too young. Oh. Pads, seriously. You can't have her pee in the house. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We have a whole bunch of them in there. There's so m there's so many pee pads? Yes. Yeah. I think I'm like I'm rushing. Are you letting her outside every 30 minutes after water? Yes. She's literally outside, uh, not even every 30 minutes. She's outside for an extended period of time on top of that, too. Um, 
Shouldn't have started on the pee pads, man. Shut up. Oh my god. There's no problem with the fucking starting on pee pads. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with starting. I on think pee I should pads. put the pee pads outside. That's what I should do. I don't know, but you have to have something in the I think I think you just train her first to pee on pee pads, and then when she's older, you can she, start she knows training her to go outside. It's a step by step process. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, we are hearing too much. Turn the noise gate back on, which I agree with. I think we should. They can hear your mom. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna put the noise gate back on and then. Did I miss? If it's not in your hand, then you missed. You're so violent. Serious? <laughs> <laughs> Attack is the same. What am I supposed to do? Just let it fly around? Okay, the noise gate is what now do you mean? on. You should be out there with her while she pees, treat her, and then bring her in so she knows the outside is proper. You can't leave her to pee alone. There's no reinforcement. Dude, exactly. I oh. am doing that. I'm doing that. I'm giving her a treat and then I'm letting her out, letting her roam afterwards. Okay, listen. Listen. Thing is, when you're streaming, you're not reinforcing good and bad behavior. When yes, you're streaming, I am. no, you're not, because since she's free roaming, she's getting water randomly, so you don't know when she's gonna go pee. You should probably give Kaya to chat. You clearly don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I know. No, he he knows what he's doing. It's just. I don't know how you're doing it while streaming 15 million hours a day. I am getting my mom and Marat to also help out. Yeah. After paying thousands of professional dog training with a stubborn Shiba, p has just trained them to know it's okay to go inside. I mean, I trained, I trained fish with a pee pad. And then after like, you know, once he was a couple months old, I swapped it out. I swapped the pee pads out and cuz I was it was a mixture. Like if you really 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 must go, I would let fish go inside and in moments where I couldn't like uh you know control the pee or anything like that. And then I would reinforce it by uh you know giving her treats, giving him treats when he was peeing outside. I didn't even have a yard back then. You didn't have a yard, but it doesn't matter. I no, that's not even true. I there was I was living in a fucking fraternity house, so there was like an outdoor area to pee, and um and that's what I did. She's too young; she can't control her bladder. She still has like ang anxiety pees. She still does excitement pees. It's a normal part of the process. Um, I think like I haven't. If you have any training questions, let me know. I've been training dogs for 10 years now. Five of my own company. Also, I'm in LA. The piss pads are fine. Yeah, pee pads are fine. I don't know why the fuck chatters are like chirping me on it. Test, test. You're not muted. Um, Is it bad if my dogs still use their pee pads? They're adults. I don't know, man. It's for you. If you don't mind your dog pissing indoors, then I guess there's no issue with that. Puppy, to find the treat, I like to use a pointing gesture to help them out if they can't find it. No, Good you're speaking job. too uh, quietly. With young puppies or new rescue dogs. <laughs> Why do you... You get more quiet every time. You literally go, is it too quiet? If I talk like this, I... Uh, yeah. Loud. Be loud. Ah! I don't like to ah. use the lure right near their face to begin with because what happens is you get the dog frustrated and trying to get the treat out of your hand. So I suggest instead luring the dog from a distance up above at first. It really depends on your puppy's personality as to what behaviors you'll work on first. If you have a puppy that's very shy and reserved, I don't suggest working on that game which is no mugging where you get the puppy to back away from your hand and then reinforce. Instead, I suggest teaching that puppy, if they're worried about hands, to touch your fingers and receive a treat for that. So I'll link a tutorial on how to train that you know what? Let's do the puppy pee pad instead. How long should you train your dog? Common newbie errors using food to train dogs. Stop puppy biting with handling games. Stop puppy biting clothes. Capturing calmness. Teach your puppy his name. Teach to go in your crate. Teach go in your crate. I've done that already. How to train drop it. Okay, I know all this stuff, but I want to know the peeing. 
or what not to do in front of a hey puppy. Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be talking about things not to do in front of your puppy in the first few weeks that you bring your puppy home. Now the first one I think is the most important is not tying your shoes in front of your puppy the first few days that you have your puppy or dressing and undressing yourself in front of your puppy because you're setting yourself up for a failure. The puppy most likely will become very excited and want to grab at your clothes and it will begin a very bad habit. So instead of doing that, you can either put the puppy away or give the puppy a high value chew if they have to be in the same room as you while you're tying your shoes or you can train your puppy so someone else is tying their shoes and you can be feeding your puppy treats for simply watching without thinking to grab and start tugging on the shoelaces. Another really important thing to keep in mind is that if you have your puppy outside, you might be thinking that you might want to do a little bit of gardening, and that is the worst idea to do in front of a puppy because they oftentimes will copy our behavior that we're doing. So if you start pulling out weeds and digging, your puppy is going to start digging and also noticing the places that you've pulled out the weeds and wanting to eat the dirt and screw around and dig. So instead of doing that in the first few weeks, do your gardening while the puppy is in his pen, or you can reinforce your puppy for watching you, but I really suggest waiting a few weeks till you have a reinforcement history of the puppy listening to you and doing things for you before you expect your puppy to listen to you while you're doing something very exciting and you- Are you bored? Why are yeah. you looking at me like that? Looking around. You're giving a look. Around. Are you bored? You want to wait? People are saying yes, we are. I think this is good stuff. You don't want your puppy to join in. I suggest that the first time that you expose your puppy to something that could be exciting or arousing, that you set it up as a training session rather than just leaving everything to chance. Because most likely, if you just let your puppy watch your kids play around with toys, it... okay, this stuff is like that's silly, but door potty training with potty pads is what we're going to talk about today and then at the end of the video i'm going to explain why using potty pads will not make it impossible for your dog to eventually go potty outside this potty training process has been so damn easy that i have used it on over 20 rescue puppies that i have brought into my home fostered and helped find their forever home so let's start with step one find a dedicated spot to put your potty pads popular spots are by the back door, a bathroom, a guest room, or a laundry room. Pro tips on picking your potty pad spot. Whoa, that was that was an alliteration if I ever heard one, is to make sure it's a spot that the pads can stay in so they're not in the way, but it also needs to be a spot where the puppy can easily access it at all times. And ideally you put it in a spot where you have tile so if there is a mess in and around it, you don't have to worry as much and you're not doing like on laminate flooring. Let's start with four to five potty pads, give or take, depending on the size of your dog. Then I want you to lay them out. Oh, Finn, so Finn, are you trying to help? Oh gosh. Finn is showing you what not to do. Do not let your puppy chew on this. Good do boy. a quick training intermission. If your puppy tries to chew on the puppy pads, do not scream or scold and do not make it exciting because if you yell at them, they're going to think it's a game. So what I do is I hold it and I stay completely still. Yes, good jo job. And I had a little bit of accent there. And when he releases, I give him a marker command, which for me is Y-E-S. And you can re reward with a treat. So he learns that, okay, when I let go of the potty pad, I get rewarded. Your pro tip with this is you can use a play pen or a crate to make the area more designated and more specific for your puppy. Yeah. I like this play pen because it comes with a little built-in door, makes it easy for puppies to go in and out. When you're laying down your potty pads, make sure you overlap them just a little bit and you have at least a few inches outside of the play pen or crate. to start. Okay, right off the bat, the fact that she's using like four pads, four giant pads, immediately smart. I've only been using one, and I'm sorry, but uh, Kaya literally never fucking uh, makes it onto the pad. Like, she's always pissing near the pad. Start, you'll want to introduce your puppy to the potty pads. So you can walk over to the potty pads with them and let them smell it and reward every time they smell it and show interest. But as you saw earlier... 
do not reward if they start playing with them. Instead, redirect and get them focused on something else and try. Again, only reward when they show interest in it, smell it, but not when they try to buy it. Next step is walk them to the potty pads every single hour. Yes, once an hour, I want you to walk them over to the potty pads. Good job, Finnegan. In addition to that, you're going to walk them to the potty pad area after they eat, sleep, or play every single time. So that means that you're gonna be making a visit to this little dedicated potty indoor area several times a day. And for those of you who are subscribed, you know that I like to get the most bang out of my buck on training. So what I recommend to do as a pro tip is you can use a leash with a harness on your puppy and physically walk them over as if you're leash walking to the potty area every single hour. And that means that you're gonna get to work on leash skills. And yes, you can start that now. If you're potty training, you can start working on obedience training, right, meow? Hi, dude. And because you're gonna be making so many trips to this area, your puppy is eventually and undoubtedly going to potty in the potty area. And you know what you do when that happens? You get so super excited. As, this is the key, guys, as they are going potty, not after, not before in the middle of it, I want you to give a marker word. That could be a clicker if you're clicker training, or for me, it's Y-E-S, which is what I've trained my dog, even at a young age, to recognize as a positive reinforcement. And then you give him a treat with a command. So for Finn, let's say he's going potty on here. Yes, go potty, good job! And you can give a treat. So you see that I started the reward and the reinforcement as he was completing the action. I know he was just sitting here, but that was just for demonstration. And now a brief message from our sponsor, Finn. <laughs> just this would don't yell, don't scold, don't rub your puppy's nose in it. What I do with all the rescue puppies that I have fostered is I simply pick them up and I put them on the potty pad. Most times they still need to go a little bit, so they'll continue going potty on here. A pro tip on this is watch your puppy for signals. A potty signal is typically sniffing the ground or pacing back and forth. If you see that, gently pick them up or whirl them over with a leash and put them on the potty area and wait. The reason I like this playpen is I can close them in. Now, once they go potty on here, you can replace the pad and put a new one on. What I've seen some people do, and it's worked for me some of the time and not other times. Can I ask Jaren? He has three dogs. Yeah, dude, that's right. I should ask Jaren in Turkey how to train uh, a, a dog, even though I've had a dog and I actually perfectly trained him. Um, like, I'm not watching this YouTube video because I don't know how to fucking train a dog. I'm watching this YouTube video to see if there's anything that I'm not uh, aware of that I've been doing wrong or uh, things that I might have forgotten, okay? And I'm realizing that this is only encouraging backseat uh, uh, dog advice, uh, which is making it really fucking annoying. So I'm going to move on from it, especially because hella people are just saying like, oh, this is boring, which is really fucking annoying to me. It is so fucking annoying. There is no other form of content where dickheads will just be like, dude, just turn it off. Just turn it off. Plenty of people have. Why don't you fucking turn it off? You know what I mean? Just turn off the stream. You don't have to sit here and be like, dude, you're so boring. You're boring your guest. You're boring us. I'm sleeping. Like, it's it's very, very, very frustrating and very fucking annoying to do that. Anyway, here. Hollywood is done for. Two tickets is a generic AI-generated movie with no artistic direction or real acting performance, uh, please. world of glamour and intrigue where nothing is quite as it seems one chance encounter leads to a night of unforgettable adventure and romance i love that people post stuff like this and go dude hollywood's done for look at this and it's like is this a scary movie like i don't understand what's going on with the fucking hands you know and romance Music, the atmosphere. It's like stepping into a whimsical dream. Ew. Care to dance oh and make this God. dream even more enchanting, madame. Featuring stunning dance performances, unexpected twists, and <laughs> what the fuck? That is an unexpected <laughs> twist. <laughs> Look at that cat. <laughs> is that cat conducting? Oh, What's that, happening? Oh, the cat's left. Look at his limbs. I know. I'm saying like well, that's. I don't even know what the <laughs> fuck that is, but. Um, just weird is <laughs> what are they doing Expected twists their best are, are they trying to best. dance like what's happening there i would watch this a cat butler a touch of feline elegance like really really creepy. this whimsical and captivating romantic comedy set in the glamorous 1930s era is sure to sweep you off your feet this night just keeps getting
I love when my trailers keep telling me that, like, with words, that this is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the glorious 1930s era. This era is sure to sweep you off your feet. This night just keeps getting more and more peculiar. Well, they do say that curiosity killed the cat. But in this case, it seems to have given it a double oh my bite. God. From the visionary creator of Taste of Duality comes a movie that will leave you oh. spellbound and craving more. Get ready to experience. Well, like, what is Ron DeSantis? What is the hand doing? Oh my. What's that Get hand doing? To... Spellbound and craving more. Get ready to experience the magic of. The Great Cat Spy. A celebration of passion, humor, and the pursuit of the perfect romance. Coming okay, this is cheap. You want to know why? Oh, why? Because cat lovers will literally... Look, see, cat mentioned obligatory cat TikTok link. Like, cat lovers will eat up anything that has even the mention of cats in it. No matter how much they hate AI, they're just going to still be like, oh, well, this is sick because there's a cat mention. Oh, my God, cat mention. And they're trying to tailor it to that market of people that are going to eat yeah, it up no matter what loves happens. Cats. I don't know about that. I don't know what you're talking about. Soon I think to you a screen like near cats. You. You're in denial. You really like sock. Yeah, even though he's fucked up. She. And he, she's not fucked up. <laughs> okay. Sock is a boy. Sock is a boy. <laughs> Mushroom is a girl. Uh, um, yeah. You're the Mushroom. one who fucked up. I fucked up. Sock literally looks like an affront to God. I said this already. Sock looks like Sock looks like uh, he he was a financial criminal in an early life, and then God punished him uh, in the form of looking like that as a cat. Also unnecessarily horny, even though he's fixed. But I still like him, though. Love mushroom. Oh my! Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at his foot. I I would watch it just because it looks so wrong. Yeah, it's it again. It, this looks like sock. <laughs> like. The cat doesn't look like sock or mushroom, but like that's how busted they are no, in the real world. They're not. Cover your ears, Leslie. What do you mean? She knows they're busted. Not busted. Oh, let's watch the Mario movie from Meat Canyon. Wait, will this have spoilers? Because I haven't seen. Oh it. my god! I'm, I haven't either. Rainbow Ro spoilers, Mario. Yeah. What, what kind of plot twists are you going to be shocked by in a Mario movie? Maybe Bowser gets the girl. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? It's Mario. It's I like don't the know. most. They might have changed basic... it up a little bit. No, <laughs> I, I refuse to play along with this. Road. Rainbow Road, dude. I know. I know. This, oh. uh, this is a nostalgia overload. Uh, uh, good golly, Mario. My diaper is so full. Oh, pee you, Mario. This is stinky. Wait, wait, wait. What did you just tweet? Uh -oh. oh my god. Wait. What did you just. Oh my god. It's Juniper. Chat, it's Juniper and Drill. Wait, why won't it show me in the frame? Yeah, it's drilling. How did I clap that? Look at that. Juniper and drill. Meat Canyon's feed looks exactly like our feed chat. What did you just tweet? Uh, hey, what did you just tweet? 
Oh my god! Uh, Look at his hat! Uh, they captured thank you. it perfectly! Uh, yep. This yeah. one's hitting me right in the childhood. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, it's a me! Wahoo! And just, just watch the movie, alright? Just focus on... Remember that? You remember seeing that in the games? <laughs> yeah, I just think the pacing feels a bit off for me, you know? What did you just say? I said the pacing feels a bit off. I just, yeah. Feels a bit rushed is all. You know, you to clean it. I don't know. Oh, oh my god! The, the mushroom! The, the mushroom! He has the mushroom! I haven't been happy since I was seven years old. <laughs> I mean, it's a Mario movie. You're in a children's movie, you ape. I mean, do you just go into children's movies and bitch and complain the whole time? I, uh, what are you gonna do, break down Paw Patrol next? Everyone in here, uh, is in their 30s. Oh. <laughs> I'm actually 42. Oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> hey, I mean, everyone in here is in their 30s. I mean, look around, it's true. Not everybody's you know I mean? in- it is. Not everybody's 30. God. Listen, retard! No. Oh. No, I, oh. Oh, that's I didn't in poor taste. Mario just that's used just the I didn't mean to say- I didn't mean to say- <laughs> Someone just dropped me back in my childhood. Just li listen. You're gonna gobble this movie up. You're gonna say that it was everything you wanted out of a Mario film, okay? Because it is. I am a low stakes movie meant to get you to buy more product. And that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> I know, I certainly am. Shut up! Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, buddy. You have zero lives left. <laughs> I, I just wanted a nice night out with my son. All right? I'm just glad he likes it. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Mario. Whatever. Mario. My diaper is so stinky. Okay, Luigi. Let's go visit the Donkey Kong. Now be sure to get a new diaper on. Because uh, you have to take a big step here. Hey, what's he typing? Oh my god, a Koopa! What the fuck is he typing back there? Um, I wish Bowser got Peach's pussy. Oh, oh you motherfucker! <laughs> this is very good. Me Canyon, another Meat Canyon banger. Um, yeah, it's no Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots, everyone knows, famously represented the most real anxiety attack anyone's ever seen, and that was really important. I've heard so much about that movie and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I cried. You've seen it? No. <laughs> oh, come on. Of course not. What do you mean, of course not? Um, <laughs> why would I watch the Puss in Boots movie? Oh my God, you know that. Like cat. Oh my God, you know the meme? Yes, I'm on Twitter literally nonstop. Where is it? Someone, the link is. Hold on, let's see if I can find it real quick. Puss in Boots Anxiety Attack. I saw it on TikTok. It was on Variety Magazine. Puss in Boots, the last wish director, Joel Crawford, on why panic attack scene was an important moment for both kids and parents. Meanwhile, Puss in Boots has the most accurate depiction of a panic attack I've ever seen in media. Let's watch it. Puss, what's wrong? Thank you, Perrito. Oh, that's not, I was not expecting that to be the voice. Um, Haven't seen Shrek? I don't remember the Puss in Boots voice, but I watched a new Mario movie on Twitter last night. Oh, yeah, me too. You know what's crazy? I watched parts of it um, because someone uploaded it. I think it was like vids that go hard. It was like, fuck it, full Mario film. And it was cached on site for 14 hours after they suspended the user. Yeah. The thing is, though, um, 
They've done that to so many movies because, like, Twitter's DMCA guys are, like, you know, asleep at the wheel, basically. But one thing I will say is respect to the Nintendo. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this. But much respect to the Nintendo because if you ever engaged in piracy, like I used to all the time back in the day, um, one thing that you know is the lowest form of piracy is the type of piracy where there is uh where they have a camera in the movie uh camera in the theater. It's like the worst kind of piracy, unfortunately, out of like movies, like movie rips. It's like the worst kind. And it was it was a it was a fucking theater filmed uh, one. So Nintendo is so aggressive that like they literally instead of putting like a fucking DVD uh it, instead of like actually ripping it off of like a streamer or anything it's the it's the you know instead of giving you like a screener one i'm pretty sure that one was a cam rip and it was so bad cam rips have gotten better but it's still you know What is this? There was a fucking brief panic attack. Let me find out. There's one before that. Why is it that like everyone is doing panic attacks? Covered up in oil. Who's winning the panic attack off? Spider-Verse short film. The spider within follows Miles as the experience is the experience of panic attack, which forced him to confront the manifestations of his anxiety and learn that reaching out for help can be just as brave as an attack, as an act as protecting his evil, uh, protecting the city from evil. What is happening? I mean, I don't it's even relatable. mind. I don't even mind like uh having like uh, you know, like mental illness uh, that humanizes the character more and and shit like that, but like why is this turning into like uh like a selling point? Spider-Man swings his way to therapy. This is just making my mental illness cringe, and in that way, it's going to help me get past it, Lamau. Bo is afraid it's a three-hour panic attack fever dream. Tumblr is finally behind the wheel of animated movie studios. Heroes have panic attacks too, Himbo. I just, I don't know. Being serious? You don't know why? No, I just like I, I don't I don't know why this is like being hyped up so much. You know what I mean? It's just like it feels so weird to just be like, dude, this movie is riveting. It's incredible. Like there's a well, there's I mean, a it panic. It hasn't been done a whole lot in the past. There's a panic attack scene in it. No, I mean demonstrations of like mental anxiety, mental illness, and things of that nature are utilized all the time uh, I think as the a. Fact it's I think it's it, it being utilized as a marketable feature is what uh, kind of irks me a little bit. Like it's the difference is like Sopranos did it incredibly well, right? Sopranos is not a story about uh, you know uh, a, an Italian man. Sopranos is not a story about an Italian man that is like going to a therapist. That's secondary. That it's 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 used to humanize the character that you're watching. She's not muted. Wait, speak again. Hello. She's not muted. She's just speaking. Wait, really? Very uh, gently, turn? very quietly. My mic up. Um, it's. I think if you turn over test, here test, when test. you're talking, that's when we they can't hear you. Conservative take mad at over rep of gay characters and top of the hour ad break. Oh fuck you! God damn it! At the top of the hour, there is a, a, a an attack of the ads. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Ray will eventually get this fly. I get it. That wasn't even a good effort from the chatter. I thought it was good. No one wants to hear about what upsets you right now. If you're unaware, it's the top of the hour. I know, we already did that. The therapy scenes are used to show that Tony knows what he does is wrong and still chose, chooses to do it. The panic attacks are like his body's telling him to stop as part of the character. This isn't the key plot line for these movies, though. Just characteristics, which is important for the youth, I think. I think having, like, uh, I think depictions such as this one are not new. It's that marketing it as, like, a marketable component is the new part. 
which is what is like, I don't know, odd to me. These movies are the same. The panic attacks are not the selling points, just Twitter. No, I know. I know. That's what I mean. That's what I'm talking about. You hate mentally ill people? Well, first of all, every single movie has uh, some form of mental illness. It's a part of human existence. Um, have, on. what's up? I have 30 minutes left. Okay. Well, I'll run the three minute ad break now and then we'll move on to scary. What's the game you want me to download? Bon Bon. What is it? Bon, is it on steam? Yes. The only game we have time for because it's 30 minutes. And I mean, you are the one, you're the one who's like coming in hot with this. Uh, I want you to play a scary game. I said, maybe you scary. You don't. I said, even. maybe you scary game. Is it Bon Bon? Is that how you write it? We don't even, we don't even have time anyways. What is, oh, oh time. damn. Oh, shucks. I guess we got to do it another time. No, we, no. You keep debating me and chat. It's crazy. <laughs> what do you mean? I just, oops, I guess you got to come back another time. Lying about gaming again, classic? No. I mean, no, because you did. I just said maybe gaming. I never said we're for sure gaming. That's the difference. But I can't find it. Bon Bon? Like, what is it called? It's not showing up. Um, O-N? Oh, Bon Bon. Bon Bon. Uh. Okay. supposed to be 30 minutes but we don't even have the fuck is austin calling me it's something about chick-fil-a austin what do you want hi austin no i'm good i gotta go yeah why would he not know that you're alive all right bye Okay, I found the bonbon at least. I'm adding it to the cart. Wait, let me take a look at what this is first. No, just don't, just don't look at it. No, I want to see the trailer. No, it's not. What kind of scary don't shit watch are you the trying trailer. to? It's literally yeah. just a pretty minute game. Funny. Role play as a baby. What the fuck? Okay, that's okay, kind of about, fire. Okay, what about the toilet game? Look up the trailer for the toilet game. What? Where do you find these fucking toilet. games at the toilet store? No, first of all, okay, that was I'm, awful. I'm I'm getting Sex. this. I'm get, I'm I'm gonna play it. It's called the Toilet Chronicles, and you escape room from a bathroom stall. It's supposed to be scary. And I literally look at this list. I made a list of short toilet games. Toilet Chronicles, one and a half hours. Bon Bon, thirty minutes. The closing shift, one and a half hours. The convenience store, one hour. I. You know what I'm getting from this? Normal shit in the real world. They're considered terrifying to the average person. Not me, though. I'm not even scared. The jerk store called. They're running out of you. Okay, everybody calm down. <laughs> I'm not even scared. I'll fucking... I'll play this fucking bonbon shit right now. I don't even... I think it's just more... It's not even scary. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Boom. Roasted. You know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Fucking bonbon. Where is it? Where the fuck is this bonbon? You know what? Here. Here you go. Here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're laughing. Noises. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Here, here, here you go. Here you go, chat. Here's your fucking bonbon. You bond bitches. No, I can't take the I can't turn the light off. It's God. It's God's light. Oh my God. I got it finally. Ew. Ew. No. 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 I don't give a fuck. You can rub it all over me if you want. Okay. It's not turning on. This is literally. It's, it's actually. It's not even in my. What? It's not showing up at all. 
in my processes is like No, I'm not even kidding. I'm trying to turn it on and it's not it's not turning on. Look. Look. And it's not showing up on my task manager either. Look, but like, it's not even here. Look, do you see this? Bon bon. Yeah, it's not. See? Look. What the fuck? Four thirty, I think. Where's Marat? Ask ask Marat, mom. I'm gonna restart Steam. It's supposed to be in twenty minutes. Oh. Hour and fifteen? In an hour? <gasps> Wait, well, I, it, I'm not even going to be live well, at that point. Well, well, Wait, I thought it was supposed to be at 430. What the hell happened? Fucking engineers, man. Well, well, Yeah, it's well. not it's not turning on. Would you look at that? Don't worry, we have a list of other games to play. Oh, my God. Toilet. I did restart. Wait, the game is called Toilet? Toilet Chronicles. So annoying that, like... What the hell is okay? We gotta watch this first. Can I watch this one? Whoa! Is this TOS? No game is TOS. Hey, hey, try blowing up that wall. Here. Why is it an hour and 15 minutes? Also, did she pee again? Why? Explain what the fuck is wrong with engineers when they say it's going to start at 4.30 and then it's not starting at 4. There's an orbital time slot between 4.26 and 5.26. It seems that's nerd speak for... You know, we do not fulfill our obligations. Is that what's going on? Yep. Okay. Oh, wow. You're looking at me so disappointed. How about they should shoot for the stars? Okay, well, we can play this fucking poo poo caca game now. God damn it. Wait, maybe a different one. Wait, did you say... Wait, what, why? You don't like this one? Well, now we have options because you have time. It's fine. Let's just play the poo poo caca game. Wait, do they want... Kaka? People are saying closing shift. Yeah, maybe closing shift. I'm downloading all these fucking games. You know what? YOLO. Why not? Okay. And then uh, the closing shift is really good. Also, the convenience store. Good. Is it chill as art? No. Oh, yes. That's the one. <gasps> you should do this one. Oh, it's in Japan? Oh, I'm already sold. That's not scary. It's not scary. It's really relaxing and fun. Yeah, it seems to be. You're in Japan. It's my comfort place. Is it going to be scary? I, it's going to it's going to make me not love Japan anymore no, and I don't like that. It's making coffee. Chicken and green sandwich. Go go go. Download it. Download it quick. Wait, quick. why did it stop right there? What the fuck? Okay, okay. We're going to do it. I'm going to download it. Calma. Okay. <laughs> Japanese scary game. I'm not even stalling. I'm literally downloading it as fast as I can, chat. I don't know what's wrong with Bonbon. 
I don't know either. I don't, I don't know. Can you let her out again, please? It's been 30 minutes. Oh, she didn't, she didn't pee. No, don't be fooled. Do not be fooled by her cunning ways. DLC takes place in Japan. What the fuck? I'm I'm downloading chat. I'm downloading. I'm downloading the fucking uh the the closing shift. Okay, calm down. Oh. Download harder. It's downloading as fast as I can. Marat, we're not gonna get cucked, right? Like this thing, this thing is not gonna like happen before it actually is supposed to happen or some shit, right? Fucking SpaceX, man. It'll be. Probably not. Wait, oh shit. The All right, everyone. It's time to get your popcorn and your snackies and your blankies. And if you're not anywhere near a blankie, maybe get a jacket. And if you're not anywhere near a jacket, maybe find one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'll be late for work. I should be on my car by now. On my car. Interact. Time to go to work. What the hell is that? That's a weird beat. Nice. Oh my god, I live in one of these like whack ass Japanese houses. Put the shoes on. Wait. Dude, I bet oh my god. I live in one of these houses where like you gotta fucking you have like a loft that normal humans can't even fit in. You know what I mean? It's like messed up. Okay, leave apartment. Can I change the FOV? Probably. Doesn't seem like it. Back? No, you literally can't. Oh, you can't. I don't like this FOV. It's already fucking freaky. It doesn't it doesn't get scary for like a long time. I don't really I don't believe you. Like I I, I am not particularly inclined to believe you, I'm gonna be honest. What is that music? What the hell? Huh, why'd they do that? Oh. That's someone's phone. Can I do something with it? Items in hand? Someone's phone? I'm just holding it in my hand? Why don't I pick up? It is so dark. Yeah, I don't know how to like fix that. Um general maybe? Oh brightness. brightness. That literally did nothing. <laughs> better? It's better. It's better. still kind of dark though. to go here right now up oh, texture quality put it at a hundred percent wow impeccable texture Pocari sweat 
PPC. Oh my gosh, it's like we're back in Japan. I know. How you get out of here? No. Is this how we get out of here? No. Is how we get out of here? No. <laughs> Is this how we get out of here? No. Okay, well, this it said you don't need to go there right now, but like, where the fuck am I supposed to go then? Oh, through here. Is that my car? Do I have a car? I feel like cars are for rich people, right? What? What? Are you assuming she's poor? Yeah, I mean, she lives in like a fucking tiny apartment. That's Wait. expensive in Japan. Wait, what? What? A, what is happening? Oh my Where? gosh, this is literally not in a hard game. There's like three fucking. I didn't even. I picked one of the. I picked this game because I thought you'd be able to do it. Well, I can't open it. What do you? How do I open maybe it? Maybe. Check the controls, maybe. Need keys. Interact, inventory, shift, run, C, crouch. Like, it's pretty easy. Is that it? No. I can't open the door. Have you tried the other side? What? It's Japan. It's not that side. And no, I did try the other side. Did I forget my keys? Maybe answer the phone, maybe? You are not being helpful at all, despite the <laughs> fact that you played this game, which is I mean, insane I to me. I played this like a year ago. D it's crazy. Your memory is out of control. <laughs> what the fuck is that? That's... Are you looking for something? Well, I found this. Give me it. Okay, that's it. Very nice of you to give his phone back. Can I open the door now? This is my car. Go to work. Wait. That's what it was? That was... was I didn't even forget my keys. Uh, yeah, I guess you're just skipping a step. What? Okay, now you're at work. Okay. I'm trying to go in from the back. This is where employees go in. Yeah. You're being so good. What? Cold drink tutorial, food tutorial tape. Have you ever worked in a restaurant? No. You need to learn how to make the beverages. Oh, no. That's it? That's how you prepare the food? You just pick it up and put it there? Nice. Okay. That's easy. The real horror is working in uh, the fast food industry. Let's be real. What? I didn't pay attention to that. You don't you don't need instructions, just go. Wait, really? You think I should freestyle it? Yeah, yeah, you're natural. What about toilet cleaning products? Stuff, that's where it is. Okay, Other recipes. What the fuck? You have to memorize all of those. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> funny. Ha ha ha. <laughs> ha 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 ha. Real funny. Put away my stuff and talk to Senpai. Wait, I have a Senpai? Yeah, daddy? No, Senpai just means, uh, like, like, master type. Master. It just means master. What the Poppy? fuck? No, it doesn't mean daddy. What the fuck? You're just farming chat at that point. <laughs> what is this? You need to put your stuff away. What is my stuff? I don't have any stuff. Oh! Oh my God. Sorry, I'm late. 
Why are you screaming at every person? Be careful. Because they're fucking freaky no. looking. Oh. <gasps> what? There are so many bugs in this house. Because the door's open. What do you mean? What? Look at this thing. They are business workers just like you. Just trying to... Trying to get look by. at this thing and tell me it doesn't look kind of creepy. Like the guy that was looking no for his world. phone, you just said, Look at this thing. Look, like the guy that was looking for his phone was straight creepazoid. Okay, he lost his phone, she broke her neck. How is she alive? Riddle me that. Looking, she's, no, she's not looking backwards. She's. She looks like an AI generated image. Be careful. Next time I'm going to tell the manager. I'm very sorry. Is this my senpai? What the fuck? Be careful is not enough. Tell me you won't be late. If you have any trouble with the order, there are some tutorial videos for you. So look through it. Okay, I'll take a look. You better not be texting anyone during work. Yes, sir. Not very nice. I don't want to... I want to take my car key. Oh, it's not letting me. Oh, you just put it down. Yeah. What? what? That's weird. Like... It, it doesn't get scary for a really long time. The game is an hour long. What happened to this guy's jacket? Sir, are you okay? I've never been to one of these fancy places before. I feel uneasy. There's something strange about this place. Me too. My daughter seems to be a fan of this place, and now I'm here. However, I'll leave the drinks to you. Oh, and I'd like to get two of them. Oh, that'll be fine. I'm just really uncomfortable here. However, how can you charge such a such a price for something like that? This is like a chatter. He's like fucking debating me about the price. Bitch, do you want a coffee or not? Someone just said, that jacket is Margella pussy. True. You can't afford it. I'm in the you can't afford this. Okay, how do I make the coffee, please? Uh, did you look at the recipe? No. You said I don't need it. Oh, what? okay, what did they order? Nothing. What, what do you mean, nothing? Oh, fuck. I just picked up the wrong thing. How do I drop it? Wait, really? Fuck, I'm stuck. Oh, I have so many more now. Oh my what the fuck is going on? <laughs> what? This game is broken. <laughs> fuck. Okay, where are the bottoms? The bottoms? Soy milk, whipped cream. Where are the mugs? Where are the mugs? Where are the mugs? I'm losing my mind. Am I crazy? Am I not seeing where the mugs are? Maybe you do need to watch the instructions. Order sticker. Oh, nice. You got it. Now look at the sticker. It doesn't say anything. How do I look at the order sticker? Um, go back to your inventory. That's coffee. Latte. Coffee. One coffee, one latte. One coffee, one latte. So now you go to the uh, back room. Look at the instructions for a coffee and a latte. Okay. Drip coffee, coffee, latte. Okay, but like this doesn't tell me where the fucking actual equipment is. Like for the mugs. Okay, go to the front. It's not going to be back here. Are you sure? Yes. It doesn't okay. see. It doesn't seem to be. All right, I'm paying attention now. Kaya is gone. All right, the lids. Brown. What are those? Right there. 
Oh my god, they look exactly like lids. Why would they be two different stacks of lids? I don't fucking know. I'm, I don't make the goddamn rules. Okay, coffee. Here you go, bitch. I'll throw it at your fucking head. Um. Latte is what? How do we do a latte? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna freestyle it. Fucking easy, dude. Gosh. It's so easy. I know how to we do this. Should a different game. Wait, what? Bad customer service. Bad oh. quality. That's Taste of materials. Oh, wait, so many lids for no reason. I would fire you. Wait, what? what? Is that spilling? What's the shadow? Where do I put this fucking dumbass cup? Hot cup. Okay, what are the instructions? I foamed the milk up. Okay. I put the coffee in it. I thought. Okay. All right, so it has coffee. Now it just needs a lid, right? No, I need to put it. it I, I need it. It's a latte. I didn't see the recipe. Okay, how do I make a fucking latte? God damn it. Did this guy order both these drinks? Yeah. Vanilla latte, coffee, steamed milk, vanilla syrup. Okay. Put the label on the cup, by the way. Did it work? Yes, it did. Okay, so now it's wrong if you put too many. Okay, it's double pump. No, he'll like it. I don't think he'll like it. He'll like it. He'll like what I fucking give him. I don't think he will. Wait, where's the milk pitcher? Okay, fuck it. Wait, why can't I put it down? Okay, maybe one at a time. Put put a label on it. Wait, you gotta put the label on it? Oh, nice. It shows you. What? This, <laughs> made, this is so unintuitive. <laughs> it's, okay, so that means it's wrong. Trash. Okay, throw it all away. Throw it all away. What about the labels? Do I throw the labels no, away? No, you keep the Throw everything out. We're restarting. I'm paying attention. I need to help you. I am sleeping. It's time to work. We need work. Wait, Customers what's in this? I've been waiting for so long. Oh, this is just coffee. Here, this is okay. easy. It's cold it's okay. now. It's fine. He doesn't need to know. Thank you, sir. Here you go, dumbass. Here you go, dumbass. Stop. You want another Stop. one, bitch? Stop. Hassan, that is... Horrible. Yeah, whatever. Oh my gosh, that is so horrible. I cannot imagine you actually working at a real job. Yeah, it's called EU service. Here you go, dumbass. What? Why? Oh. Yes, it, no, it's not. What the fuck is the latte? Vanilla latte, coffee, steamed milk. Oh, it's just a latte. Fuck! Oh, fucking. Dude, this is good. This is brutal, dude. Fuck me. I wouldn't survive a day in the real world, bro. Never quit your day job. Okay? About your I mean, everybody knew I fucking sucked at this, so. I feel like a manager. I'm like supervising. You're doing a bad job at it. First of all, I'm doing a great job. You look a happy customer. Here you go, dumbass. Get the fuck out of here. You and your daughter both. Never come back. Bitch. Fuck you.
I'm flipping him off. It's like, this is, it's Japan, so they don't do that in Japan, but like, I'm, I'm like a European server, you know what I mean? Why? Whoa, he just drove so fast. Look how fast he drove away. He, whoa, these guys are driving way too fast. Hello there, partner. It's just coffee. Fucking chill. Hello. What's up, lady? Did I hear you on the news? I hear... Do you hear on the news? I hear stalker. What a weird thing to bring up. A woman like me, you see, I have to be careful. All the guys are always staring at me, so you be careful too. Well, you don't have to worry as much as I do, but you should watch out either way. Wait, why not? A Doc Mocha Chip Chilla Puccino? Please, what? Are you fucking joking me right now? What the fuck? Puccino. Chocolate chip, blended ice, coffee, milk, chocolate sauce, cocoa powder. Fuck you. Fucking asshole, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Oh my God. What the fuck? This is supposed to be a short game, but I don't know at this point. Fucking asshole, dude. kidding me right now extra ass bullshit ass fucking dumb ass drinks like get the fuck out of here wait why can't i put it in the cold cup oh okay i guess i put the ice in there now right he did okay how do i make cold coffee just through the coffee dispenser that's just a cold cup has ice in it what else do you need uh, coffee and, or, or um, chocolate syrup and sauce. Yeah, chocolate sauce is what it is, I think. And then chocolate cocoa powder. Cocoa powder. Oh, wait. Fucking milk. I forgot the milk. God damn it. Right? Milk as well, right? Blended iced coffee, milk, chocolate sauce, cocoa powder. Fuck you. Why? Are you fucking kidding me? You fucking jerk with your stupid order. Where the fuck is the coffee? I'm, I lost it. Oh, here it is. Fuck you. Have a fucking shitty day. You want a fucking straw? You get it on your own, bitch. What? Wait, why? Somewhere. Oh, um, ice blended ice ice, ice, ice. ice. What? You put ice blended ice in ice. <laughs> Why did you put so much ice? That's not funny. It's not that difficult. Just follow the instructions. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Put ice. No, and that's dumb as hell. That's dumb as okay, hell. Oh, it's it perfectly good. I want to throw it at her. Hey, take this, dumbass. It's not her fault you messed up. It's her fault. It's fuck you. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Why can't I put it in the trash? Is the trash full now? Uh. Does the trash get full, Ray? No. It's not working. I can't... Wait, what the fuck? I can't even place it. Uh-oh. I can't place the cup. Oh. Wait, you did, you did throw it out, but it's like stuck on your hand. Start, restart. Fine. It's not fine. It looks hideous. My immersion. Hold on. Blended ice, coffee, milk, chocolate sauce, cocoa powder. Fuck you. Blended ice. Okay, we did that Wait, right. Is it supposed to have blended ice? Or yes. Just regular ice? No, it's blended ice. Chocolate sauce. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it was regular ice. No, it's blended ice. Cocoa powder. 
coffee. This is harder than Marat satellite launching. Let's be fucking real, chat. <laughs> What the fuck? Why won't it let me put it down? What? What the fuck? It's not letting me put it down. Oh my god, it's not letting me put it down. Have a lid? No, but like that's not the reason why it wouldn't stop. It would stop me from putting it down, right? Yeah, it's not letting me put it down. I it's bugged. It's bugged. It's restart. That's crazy. Wait, what? It went away. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, no, it's breaking. Oh, the game fully broke. It's not even moving. No. <laughs> fuck this. Oh, come on. No. It's a known bug. You can only restart at this point. Wait, do I start from the start now? Is there checkpoints? What? You've, you, you've played this game. Why I, are you asking these questions? I didn't have a bug like this. Okay. I one shot the game because it's easy. Put away my stuff okay. and talk to Senpai. Here you go. What's up, stupid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 Shut the fuck up, bitch. That is not how you would talk to your boss. Yes, I would. I mean, I would. That's how you would talk to your boss. I'd be thinking it. Okay, I'm speed running. Yeah, but you wouldn't say it out loud. I'm speed running. Watch me speed run this shit. Okay, go get get the order. Coffee latte. Go, go, go. No, there's nothing. He's coming. He's coming. Wait, you want me to make it ahead of time? Yeah, make it ahead of time. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Wait, what the fuck? Don't rush me. I forgot where the cups are. Ah! That was such a delay reaction. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh my god, I'm so... On. Oh you go, my god, you're popping off. Latte, 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 latte. the milk. Wait, soy milk? No, not soy milk. Regular milk. Just throw it away, I think. Fuck, why? That's so dumb. Wait, what? It only gave me soy milk. This is... I'm destroying Starbucks' profit margins right now. <laughs> like, low-key. This guy's like, holy shit, you are the fastest in the fucking West. That's crazy, my dog. Wait, did I put... Oh my gosh, it's so loud. Fucking hell, man. Fucking hell, lad. Fucking hell. What the fuck is going on, man? That wasn't even my fault, by the way. Can we just agree? It's always your fault. No. The customer is always right. Fuck off, mate. Fucking hell. Get the fuck out of here. I'll be really fucking pissed off if he drives you away all fast like. Japan right If now. he drives fucking fast, he's mental. He better not drive away fast. Oh, no, he did it. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Okay. Oh no. Nani? Is that better? There you go. Oni chan. Ooh. -woo. Plus one. Ooh, star krusana. Ooh, chocachino. Is that better? Chocolate chip chilla pa chip. What the fuck was it? I forgot already. Chocolate chip chirrapuccino blended ice blended ice coffee milk chocolate sauce cocoa powder very nice okay oh you can't put the oh yeah you can fuck it doesn't even matter Okay, it's like kind of not my fault that it doesn't like automatically pick it up. It's like not very intuitive. You want the game to do the work for you?
You know why I'd be fucking terrible at this? I honestly can't think of a single reason for why <laughs> okay. you would be terrible. No, because like she's this. like, oh I yeah, let me get the chocolate chip chippuccino or whatever, right? And in my mind, I'm literally thinking like I know better than she does. Like I think I would make this order better. Like fuck your order. I would rather do it with like something different. Like, do you ever feel that way where you feel like you know better than the customer? No, because taste is preference. I know, but like that I'm. Is, that is crazy. <laughs> like I would make this with white chocolate and be like, yeah, it's different. I I bet you're gonna like it. Have a great day. Come back soon. Yeah, customer's taste is shit. Matane! Uh-oh, multiple people are coming. Whoa, there's someone here. Let me out. Let me out. You need to work. I need to serve him. That person, what the fuck? Yo, that's a whole squad. They got they got the latest Balenci too. A matcha cake, please. Stop pushing me. A salted caramel mocha. Then I'll have a matcha chili piccino. You always can't finish your drink. So let's share, man. Sure, let's do that. One pumpkin cake. I think I'll have something, too. You can order first. I'll have um, hot cocoa. What? I don't have any money right now. You should have said that first. Come on, I'll buy you one. What do you want to drink? Yes, but... They're going to give me the receipts, right? Because there's no... Oh, I, you didn't memorize that? No. I have to restart again. You're so bad at lying. I, okay, like, I... Your face? <laughs> your face? You're so bad at lying. You literally did this. This was your face. I got a show. I, well, because it was obviously... You did this. You it did was this. obviously a joke. This is what you did. <laughs> That's your poker face. It was very good. You you really got me. I find the money. He's right here. He's over here. Oh well, you called her, so she's coming over to you now. <laughs> Kaya, come here. Kaya, come he here. Knows her name. Come here. <laughs> she's looking back at me. Is that your your come puppy here. voice? Wait, what? You have a problem with my puppy voice? <laughs> what, do, what do you want me to be like? Kaya, hey, Kaya, come here. Real voice. Come here, lassie. Hey, girl, come, come here on. now. Kaya, come here. Hey, Kaya, come here. Yeah, that's weird. Kaya. That would be a weird way to... Kaya! <laughs> come here! Why is that funny? <laughs> what it the fuck? It does sound like your real voice. Wow. That's so weird that you're making fun of me for... Talking to my dog like that. Kaya! <laughs> Stop laughing at me! That's a normal <laughs> way. That's, I've never, I've never heard you speak like that before. That's crazy. Kaya. Like, this is like your Instagram voice. My gosh. Literally ignoring us now. You have, so you're avoiding, you're stalling. Get back to work. Noise? What noise? What the fuck? The game knows. I didn't hear it either. Uh, it's probably nothing. Oh my God. Shut the fuck up, chatty caddies. An apple pie. Yes, that's all. Oh, were you paying attention? No. Wow. I just chose the longest one. <laughs> uh, dummies. Okay, I'm All gonna right. huge order, huge order. Matcha chiffon cake? Which one is that? Wait, first you have to get the thingy. Wait, really? Maybe second. <laughs> Why are you like this? Why? 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 I don't know the order. I actually don't know the order. Uh, maybe. Yeah, no shit. Okay, maybe you put the label on the bag first. Wait, what the fuck? Why isn't it? There is no matcha chiffon cake. Oh, there is. Oh, it is second. That's crazy. <laughs> Stop. Stop what? You're bad. Helping? You're not helping. I'm telling you what not to do. Okay. Pumpkin cake, salted caramel mocha. Let's get these fucking... Americano waffle! 
Wait, American apple pie? Yes. One Americano apple pie coming right up. That looks like the real Starbucks logo. Yeah, it's copyright infringement. It's fucked up. Americano scone caramel toffee. Americano waffle. You like this game so far? No. Wait, really? Salted caramel mocha. Oh, fuck. There's so much to learn. No, I hate it. You hate it? Well, I mean, I just like, this is literally why I'm a streamer. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a streamer because I can't do any of these things. So, like... <laughs> It's just weird to me. Hey, Austin shows in the building. Oh fuck! I guess we gotta stop. No, you have have to beat it. No one, no one's on here yet. Go, 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 go. Okay, we should have done Bon Bon. Uh, hey. uh, salty caramel milk. Look, Uncle Austin's gonna come in and f pose for the camera here. We need to full screen it. Yeah, he needs to pose for the camera so that people can fo photograph. How are you? What the fuck? This is a sick shirt. Yeah. What the fuck? It's like actually kind of baggy too. What is happening? Oh no, the pants make it so shitty. God damn it! You would have had a. T it wasn't. It, it wasn't Kaya. It, it's not Kaya. That's a. It's a safeguard for the. Okay. Son is trying to learn how to work at Starbucks and he's having a hor horrible time. Yeah, I am. Murat, what are we? What's the updates on this? Salted caramel mocha. Let's start with that one. Coffee, steamed milk, caramel syrup, hazelnut syrup, chocolate sauce. That one's easy. I forgot already. Um, steamed milk. I forgot. Fuck, did I fuck that up? Caramel syrup, hazelnut syrup, chocolate sauce. Wait, hold on. I need to focus. Hold on. Caramel syrup, hazelnut syrup, chocolate sauce. Caramel syrup. Did I fuck that up? No, I put caramel sauce. Oh. Is this a spooky game? Yes, but it's all. Yeah, it's it's scary because it's like. No, it's a scary game because because working at nine to five is is this terrifying. This is actually a great game. Oh no no, my Salted caramel mocha, really coffee, steamed milk, good. caramel syrup, hazelnut syrup, chocolate sauce, and steamed milk. Caramel syrup, hazelnut, chocolate sauce, steamed milk. Yeah, that is everything. Fucking, you're not even paying attention. I wasn't. You can get the. Yes! Yo, you, you are. Pumpkin cake. Pumpkin. What is that? Pumpkin oh, pumpkin cake. cake. Yeah, you're right. Let's get that out of the fucking. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Wasted. Yeah, I don't care about that. Shit. At least it's not on a timer, because that would be way worse. Yeah. White mocha and matcha chilapuccino. Matcha chilapuccino. 
matcha chilla pacino coming right up. Uh, uh -oh. Blended ice, milk, matcha powder, whipped cream. Blended ice, milk, matcha powder, whipped cream. Blended ice, milk, matcha powder, whipped cream. Blended ice. Matcha powder, whipped cream. Dice, matcha powder, whipped cream. Blended ice, milk, matcha powder, whipped cream. Blended ice, milk. The hot. What's up? Blended ice, milk, matcha powder, whipped cream. Fuck yeah. Dude, I'm so cracked at it. Oh shit. Oops. Fuck. Stop. What? Oh, yeah, I think he did put an extra ingredient. Blended ice, milk, matcha powder, whipped cream, Even coffee. Coffee. What the fuck? Coffee. There's no coffee in matcha? Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> That's so dumb. Why he would there... literally said the ingredients so many times. I just uh, automatically assume that there's, you know, fucking... Matcha is the caffeine. Hey, nice milk, matcha powder, whipped cream. That's so stupid. People that don't get coffee at a coffee place. What the fuck's wrong with you? I just, I, I, it's crazy. Oh, food here. Yeah, that's dumb too. We shouldn't have it. <laughs> white mocha. A mocha? Coffee, steamed milk, white chocolate sauce. Easy. Coffee, steamed milk, white chocolate, chocolate sauce. sauce. Okay, coffee, steamed milk. What was it? As a professional barista, this is so much fun to watch. White this mocha, coffee, great. steamed milk, white chocolate sauce. Easy, fucking easy. Wait, did I get that in there? Because sometimes it doesn't read it. Okay, it did. I registered. That's it. Get the fuck out of here, weirdos. Fuck you. Mm. I'm living. I'm. She did? No pee pads, so where is she supposed to? This guy's back. Oh no, it's a different guy. This is a different Balenciaga jacket. Oh, a different Margellas. Hasaku, here is my order. Wow, that's so easy. Thank you, guy. Just a latte? Nice, dude. You're a fucking ledge. What was the latte? Coffee and steamed milk. That's it. Easy. Psh, that guy's fucking my favorite now. See, it like doesn't always put it on. It's like weird. Like I'll, I'll click steam milk on the coffee. Hey, I'm a private investigator. You spot anything suspicious around the area? There have been numerous reports of people getting harassed. I was wondering if you've seen anything in the store. Call me if something ever happens. Try closing the store early if you don't want to get in trouble. Wait, where's the cameras? There's a camera in the store, no? I think my fucking manager is the creep, honestly. All right. Sweep the floor five times. Do I have to use toilet cleaner? Oh, no, that's the toilet. No. 
have to go out. Okay, why did the music stop? Closing time. What the fuck? Is this blood? What the hell is this? Ooh. Okay, the music stopped and I don't like it. And this is what Hassan's floors look like right now. Okay, chill. They do though. It's just pee pee. I've been doing this in the real world. Just. Oh! What? Wait, how did I get back here? Or no, I didn't get back here. What? Did the power went out? Power on quick. How do I turn Sorry, it on? You have to go quick. How do I turn it on? I go to the breaker. Where is it? Probably. Where the breaker goes. Where would the breaker go? Um. I don't know. <laughs> outside? I don't know what this is. It's probably outside. Do you not remember? What the fuck? What's happening? I don't happening? remember. I'm well, stuck. It, I'm stuck. You're not stuck. I'm stuck. I'm no, so stuck. No, you're not. What did I just do? Oh, no. Where? It's That's the trash. It's so dark I cannot see. I can't see anything. What the fuck? Um don't pause. It's not scary. It's not a scary. I thing. need to see. <laughs> so I'm literally upping the brightness like an insane amount. Which suspiciously has done nothing. Is that the breaker? I don't know. Wow! What the fuck is this? You look shit? good. I'm here for the rocket launch. Oh, this. Some gardening before, so I'm sorry if I'm. What oh. the fuck? You look insane. Bye. Yeah, you, I you mean, look in a great awesome. way. Oh, thank you. You look Wait, sick. You need to show the whole. Why thing. are you dressed like this? Oh, I, I, as I said, I was doing a little gardening. Um, so this is just my outdoor mm -hmm. out and about. You know, uh huh. Just yeah. normal. Show the yeah. show the gloves. Wait, oh, dude, those? you broke oh, the God. camera. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. And you smell good. Yeah. Crazy. What yeah. the fuck? Show your shoes. Oh. Yeah, everything's from Kirkland. He says uh, everything's Kirkland from Kirkland brand. It's insane. What you're doing is is okay. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone's here, and uh, it's starting to get scary. So. Show the screen. Holy fuck, there's so many people here. You are the worst manager, can I just say? I'm off duty. Wait, this place is a fucking drive-thru? How many places have drive throughs in Japan? There's there's a room in the front of the building. Your left. That was not your left, that was straight. Maybe it's in the bathroom. Wait, is that it? What is that? The breaker? I don't think the breaker's in here. Well, if it's not in the back room, where is it? Why don't you know this? You played this game already. I played it a year ago. That's insane. What do you mean insane? Am I supposed to remember every detail? How did you- Are there arrows? Okay, we maxed out the brightness. It doesn't get more brighter than this. It has to be in the back room. I- There's no tapes for what the fuck happens when- a creepy stalker br turns off the lights. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you just. Oh, right there, right there, on the wall, the yellow arrow. That was it. My God. Spilled milk. What the fuck? Why is there spilled milk back here? More spilled milk. What? What the fuck? Wait, I can't trash it again. I think it's it's broken again. 
How does it keep breaking? I can't. What, I can't. I can't do anything. It's broken. Oh, put it in the fridge, maybe. It spilled milk. Oh, it spilled. Oh. What? That's weird. That was weird. Okay. Okay. So what's up? The finished sleeping. No, I did already. I did that already. There's no more missions. Then leave. Wait, do you leave? I don't know. <laughs> I tried flipping the sign, chat. I couldn't do it. It's not, it's not letting me close it. Oh, there's more. More milkies. What? Yo, what the, all of those potions I had in the beginning to, of the day, I had some like Erewhon shit. I had like all these like different kinds of tonics. It's making me feel like shit right now. Like I feel like I want to throw up. Really? Yeah. Oh, that was just day one. I'm so hot. Sick? I don't know. <sighs> it's making me feel like I want to die. I drank three Erewhon wellness shots in a row. Why? And it felt good originally, and now I feel fucking awful. Like, I'm, like, kind of hot and sweaty. Um, I don't know what's happening. Oh my gosh, you are burning up. Yeah. Uh-oh. Probably burning with a desire that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and I want chatters to no longer see that ad by subscribing, of course, for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Is it on your favorite broadcaster? That's not a joke, though. I am burning. I, I do feel like shit. I don't know what's happening. <sighs> it's the colloidal silver? It's like a little bit of colloidal silver. Why the fuck would that, like, kill me like that? I don't know what's happening. Eight minutes to launch. Okay. We're going to run the three minute ad break now. And then I'm going to do the launch instead for now. Eight minutes to launch. Murat. Launch time. Murat. Come here. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. Take mom. Take it away. What are we doing? What the hell? Did it like log me out of my steam account? What is happening? Well, don't let her eat any of the sneakers. Those are marches. Yeah, what was... Hey, Mark. Hiya. Murat! Colloidal Murat? silver is not safe for consumption, buddy. You should not be drinking shit with that in it. Wait, it's not even live. There's no video. In seven minutes. At 5.15. Murat, we're... Murat, are you drinking Turkish tea? Yeah, drinking. Okay, you... Very... 
you guys speak for now. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta go figure my shit out. I'm dying a little bit. What's happening. <laughs> oh, it's starting! It's starting! It's starting! Oh my god! Okay. It's starting! It's starting! Like this? All right, folks. Wow, his mic it's doesn't go up. He's... I've got a conspiracy theory. I'll talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> You're damn right. Time. And this is rich. Marat's here. Marat, do you want to be on? Why don't you sit here, Marat? I'm going to move. Marat, Marat, do you want to sit? You should sit. Oh my gosh, rare Marat stream. What? Hog. Yeah. Rock, now I'm going to sit. I'm going to be on the top spot now. Never do that. Don't ever do that. Right now? Okay. Don't do that on the other side. What if you just type the word out? Yeah. yeah, that was I mean, crazy. That'd be the most wild shit I've ever seen. You could even. And, uh, I wonder, like, I, I think there was a topic that. Uh, Should we close the other one? Dr. Zubu, who at, at some point on Twitter Should made up, like, you, you can always start to argue is it. I'm gonna turn this would off you even I'm say sorry. that the center core or side booster that has flown is less. Uh, safe or less likely because there's a there is a point at some point with more and more flights on these boosters where you could say like isn't isn't like a second or third flight safer than a first flight because it's already proven hardware it's already something that went through a complete cycle and worked so so i think there's an argument to be made that if you have a very high expensive mission you could always almost switch to a situation where you want to be on the second or third flight Give commentary. on the first. What is there to um, comment about? I think it's that's a... Bro, I, I let you discussion to have. Chat. Chat, ask him questions. What did you do on this rocket? So, I worked on the satellite. <laughs> closer into the microphone. <laughs> Why are you oh yelling at me, dude? Oh my god, it's, like, it's an interrogation. It's Sergeant Payne or whatever. You're, you're stressing me out, bro. Okay, speak closer to the mic. What did you okay. do on this rocket? What did ah! you do on this rocket? What did you do? So this is Why a... are we watching this? Okay. Why are we watching this though? What's your relevance to the thing that we're watching? So they're launching uh Viasat 3 uh F1 what Amer is the that? Americas. It's a satellite. Okay, what does it do? It's the most powerful communication satellite we've Why ever are built. you lying about the Earth being flat? Yeah, I'm I'm saying it's not. Yeah, it's it's you're fucking lying about it. Got me. Exactly. Why? Tell us the truth oh. about the Earth being flat. It's starting. Five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Vehicle is supersonic. Stage separation confirmed. Dragon, separation confirmed. Hey, shut up, Ben. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Hello, everyone. You are looking at a live view of Falcon Heavy on historic launch complex 39A right at Kennedy that, Space that Center. That thing you, you made that? What did you do on it? 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Welcome back to our live webcast of the Viasat 3 Americas mission from SpaceX headquarters here in Hawthorne, California. My name is Atticus Videra, and Why I'm a propulsion engineer this? here at SpaceX. Why don't I do what? Why now, don't if you, you join us on Atticus Friday, Videra you know we did job. get roughly to T minus 59 seconds in the count when the vehicle Why is SpaceX abort. getting the glory Aborts when it's your satellite? Abort's are a standard part of the countdown process. If the vehicle SpaceX sees anything that's even um, slightly off, it'll abort launch. the countdown to give teams on the ground extra time to review any potential issues before flight. 
The teams did work through these checks, and the vehicle and payloads are healthy. Why is SpaceX getting the glory of this, even though it's your satellite that's actually being launched Today into orbit? It's not my satellite. It's Viasat's Those are Viasat's okay, well, you, you made it. You made the satellite with your own bare hands. I didn't, work, I didn't build it with my bare hands. That would have gotten me And will be the largest all-electric satellite ever to be launched. In addition to Viasat, it's the highest capacity satellite ever to be launched? Payloads on yeah, board the second stage. So you're a record breaker with the capacity. Well, hasn't been and gravity's cubes that speaking to the microphone. Both are hasn't scheduled been to deploy engineer but today. can't even fucking figure out how to speak into a microphone. Lol. And as we mentioned Bro, during our last attempt, for this mission, we so what happens if like SpaceX fucks this up and it blows up? Okay, don't put things like that out into the universe. Okay, it's gonna be a success. In order to do this, we will not be recovering the. Dude, this thing's taking like eight years to build. Like I hope it gets a successful launch. Now, like, because we're not recovering the boosters or second like so the last two years, no every landing, early like, morning, late night, weekend, there, holiday, this is what I've been working on. I this know. Is just to save a little bit of mass for some extra performance yeah. on the vehicle. Yeah. Our Merlin vacuum engine today. We were like getting ready to ship it uh, around Christmas, so it was actually even more like the crazy crunch time. Four hour and 20 minute mark into awesome. flight. Deployments will wrap up about 25 minutes I mean, minutes whatever, I'm just excited to see it on the launch pad. That's all that matters. Just under five hours. At T minus 10 minutes and 48 seconds, systems are currently a go for an on time liftoff. The vehicle is nearly on time. With sure. The range is green and ready to Dude, support. you're just upset it's cutting into your now, uh, podcast time. No, it's today, okay. I mean, this is more important than anything else. But time. I'm just annoyed now, that, like, they were supposed to do it yesterday. They were, we're, this thing was supposed to launch, like, many, many years ago. Wait, so really? this moment hey, right now has been a years Anderson, in the making. I am a yeah. production engineering manager here at SpaceX. Falcon Heavy is a two-stage vehicle, um, just like Falcon 9. Hard. It's but a the very first stage of Falcon payload. Heavy uses three boosters, whereas Falcon 9 only has one. You can think of Falcon Heavy as essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together. Why are they talking more about the fucking dumbass Falcon rockets than they're talking about Each the sick-ass Viasat satellite that my brother made? Because <laughs> it's the, the SpaceX uh, broadcasting their own launch. Assholes. Fuck you. They'll talk about what it is, but they won't like cover it extensively. They're like, oh, sick. Yeah, no. Everybody cares about what car you know Each brad pitt arrived at the fucking movie uh with for a total of 27 engines I'm just saying all three boosters and you <laughs> Dude, look at how wild that is i'm saying Elon you're the brad pitt, yeah, you're brad pitt. and and these guys are like talking about uh, what the uber uh car was that that brought him to the fucking movie theater the 27th engine is a merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its final targeted orbit what is a payload once is a question we, I saw in the chat. Once the first and second stage in this separate, case, the it's stage will propel mostly it's the Viasat uh, F3, uh, F1. What do you mean You'll mostly? There's other payload? Yeah, there's like a little ring today, that it sits on. And that's just to help the, absorb some of the heat the from the sun to keep our fuel warm during and then they have like the long flight. Speak closer into the microphone and yell. I literally use this mic all the fucking time. Why are you yelling? Because you are you need to... People can't hear you. They're here to hear what you have to say. So in the bottom of it, there's a little ring. And attached to it, there's a couple of other like... Like small sats that are like Once tiny compared the to this space, thing. We no longer need um, fuck to those satellites. Had, like, you didn't make those, right? As the second stage no, I, come on, man. Don't do that. Orbit. <laughs> we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves. If you made the them, they're the best satellites. Doug. And speaking of fairing, those aren't those aren't record breaking satellites like the one you made, though, right? Reflown payload fairing. I don't know. I don't know what they do. See, you don't even know. They're not even relevant. Those other satellites. And neither is this Falcon 9 bullshit SpaceX. To make up a new global constellation. So here's more about today's. Oh, are they Starlink satellites that are also launching with this? Every mission starts with a vision. Ours is Are you going to be in this? Why not? Because that's also a Viasat production. But the Boeing guys are not we attack very, very, very hard. But you problems. made it. But the heart of the problem, the fewer people that can do that, I was a part of the team that made to it. us. The story of Viasat like, as a whole Wednesday. is a great story. We enable connectivity. Why is the marketing the world, lead on? You made it. Oh my God, you wear that. Depending upon I've seen the you wear that. You are. From an end user, why wouldn't like you be you in this me, video? At home, Dude, this is a bias that video. I work from work or to but it's your, but you made the satellite. To the vice president, the president of the, of the United the States. States. Yeah. Our government customers are global customers. They go wherever they're needed and they want to have the same type of capability. Yeah, like the president is go. acting like he made the fucking satellite. Years, okay, chill. We've worked tirelessly what, what do you mean, chill, dude? You today. made it. You should be in the video. I didn't make it. Okay, well, the people who made it should be in the video, not the fucking marketing. 
people say lead. it's impossible to do what they're talking about doing at Viasat. You did know, you guys meet this guy? It's not going to happen. Is he chill? And so I'm really Oh, he's your client. You can't say anything mean about him. That's not true. Are these guys engineers? In just a few minutes, we will launch the world's highest capacity single satellite into geostationary orbit. Do you feel weird that like Viasat's today, getting all the glory the even though you made the satellite? Era. We have our first no, one going up over the Americas. Flight one enables like us here. to bring connectivity okay. to the markets here in North America and in South America. Well, the exciting part of Viasat 3 is the fact that it's not just one satellite. <laughs> what they By did is Viasat. Viasat 3s, we will have a near global network that can provide services to virtually the entire not yet. Earth. One of the features you'll notice is the very large solar arrays. These enable us to generate well over 25 plus kilowatts of electrical power on orbit. That the allows ISS? us to generate the huge size of it of capacity is the quarter that is the usable no, on the ground. The enormous oh. capacity of ISAT-3 isn't worth nearly as much if that capacity is stranded in areas where there's no demand. Most of the people in the world only live in a very small fraction of the Earth. Thank Yeah, we still well, last name. those people when they move from place to place. Viset 3 is designed to move our capacity to where the demand is. Did you meet her? That's sick. To move that bandwidth around and really service those dense spots. That's what our customers are looking for. It's not just evolving. It's really like a, a revolution. Making Dude, come on. You could have been in one of these shots. You did that? The next, the next shot. I, that's, that's cool. <laughs> what, you are? If you look at oh, they filmed the while you guys were working on it? One to Viasat 2 to Viasat 3. Viasat 3 is actually the smallest satellite we've ever built, segment. despite the fact that it's got multiples of capacity. Damn, that's sick. I can get uh, not even one the gig. Size of a human and brought it down to I mean, barely the size of a shoebox. The satellite design process is no longer buy parts and boxes and, and hook them up. What we wanted was to invest in technology that can really scale. It's not just a new satellite design, it's a new way to build satellites. We've had to reinvent all parts of the system. This guy's just wearing shorts on his interview. All <laughs> well, those guys are what we're to do today. Awesome. And of course, I want to thank our partners at Boeing. We wouldn't be where we are today awesome. without their support. Many of us yeah, have several shot. years. You were? Working yeah. on this you were in that shot? Team. I'm going back. Flight no, you can't. It's America's no, I can go back. Today is the day. Can I can I go back? With the Viasat 3 okay, constellation, okay. Oh, no, billions no, of see. people can access not, more of the world. Okay, bro, it's launching um, in four minutes. Just wait till it launches. We'll just see real quick and no. fast to the system. I want to thank everybody at Viasat for their role in what we're about to do today. And of course, I want to thank our partners at Boeing. We wouldn't be where we are okay, today. Okay, it's coming up. It's coming up. Are you here? I'm somewhere in there. Wait, what do you mean? You can't point to it? You don't know where you are? No, I don't know. Oh, what the fuck? I spent several years working on this Viasat 3 Flight 1 America's satellite. Are you Today is Were you there? No, but that's our team over there. Is the, the day. Fuck? With the okay, Viasat Don't worry about it. Come on, let's launch, let's launch the launch. Next up, in preparation for return. What if you were there in the rest of it? Second stage in the will promotional open, material. I've watched that it before. They, they next showed it the, the last time. The known as the Strongback will start to oh. retract away from the Falcon. They don't heavy. make a new video for every scrub attempt. You can see those clamp arms starting to open up underneath of the fairing on the second stage there. Dude, that's it. It's just sitting right there. Dude, it's opening up, dude. The clamp arms are opening up, Marat. After this, the Strongback will retract away from the vehicle, and this the is to clear the way for ascent. Strongback Three minutes and 45 seconds. support as well as routing for fluids. Thank God Cutie is the latest complete, person on the planet. As well as routing for fluids and yeah. power to the yeah. vehicle. Yeah, this is working so perfectly for us. I'm proud of you. So on Friday, they scrubbed it at 59 seconds. We just heard locks so. loading finished up on the PY booster. Wait, they scrubbed it 59 seconds before Next up, launch? Next T-minus yeah. two minutes. Why locks did they loading not will say? complete on the second they stage. Didn't announce it. After locks loading finishes loading onto the second stage, the entire Don't you think it'd be better if all this was streamlined in the hands of one entity? Pounds of propellant. Center core, locks load is complete. Okay, you don't have to answer that. But your silence speaks volumes. Finish oh, up their locks oh, no, loading. It's like Visat's the owner or like owner customer. Boeing is the integrator and the one that built the spacecraft. And then they go to SpaceX and they buy Pride, right? 
I'm saying I don't, like I don't care how it gets the space. I just want it to get the space. No, I understand. Why do you want it to get the space? Looks like quite a nice day down there in Cape Canaveral. Weather is much more cooperative for this attempt today. Yeah. Moz, change it to SpaceX launch to uh, we're watching Marat's rocket launch. Oh, you're here. Hey. Oh, Cutie showed up for the launch as well. That's crazy. Yeah. Now again, in just about 15 seconds, we will be completing locks loading on the second stage, which will wrap up the propellant loading phase of our countdown. Cutie, is there a key lime pie with you? Yeah. Oh, you did bring a key lime pie. That's crazy. Yeah, I also made it. Load awesome. complete. And there it is. Falcon Heavy is now fully loaded. Yeah, what do you mean? Spoilers, teasers. Pounds of propellant. You want to coming up next? Wait, we should see some white clouds venting from the Wait, TE up, locks line. This is completely normal and part of our closeout process. It's, it's live. What are you speeding up? Following this, the vehicle will enter startup at T-minus one minute. This is when the I'm a professional the streamer. I don't know why you guys are doing this. No, no, no. It's, it's speeding up. And Just chill. The why is it speeding up? Because it's technically not like live usually. It's live right now. Dude, I don't know what's going on. It's freaking me out. Sorry, you're going to miss the... <laughs> no, it's not. It's... No, it can't be sped up. Is it like trying to catch up to yes, the live? Yes, yes, yes. Heavy is in startup. Here we go. Falcon Heavy has just entered the startup phase. You don't have much time to catch up, Asan. It's caught up right now. All right, dude, I'm, I don't care what it is. And with confirmation of go for launch from our launch director, Falcon okay, Heavy make is it normal, ready to go to space then. at T minus 37 seconds with the Viasat 3 mission. Oh, it, it did it already. It... Wait, oh, in the satellite? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, which, which one did you... Yeah, that's a good question, Cutie. Which bolt did you put on it? Can you see from here? I didn't put any bolts on it. Oh, yeah, he's, he's right. He's not allowed. That's, that would be a union grievance. 15 seconds. It's the, I, I just looked at it from a distance. And he's crazy. not allowed, literally, as an engineer, he's, they're not allowed to, Nine, to touch the satellite. Eight, it's the union seven, uh, workers six, that... Five, four, three, two, one. Engine full power. And lift off. Oh! It's doing it! It's going! Dude, look at that thing. It's going! Look at her go! Let's go! Dude, come on, you have a celebration ready for this, right? You worked on this for years. This is what I always make fun of with engineers at NASA when they just like sit there and go, yay. No, come on. Dude, just watch it. Don't worry about reacting, just watch the rocket. No, but you should be more excited. React harder. React harder. React harder. React harder. Five million pounds when it gets of thrust. To here, I'll be happy, Falcon okay? Heavy is headed to space. Oh, so you. you so it's on liftoff. You now wanted to get to a uh, ferry. Down yeah, our engines Max on Q those is side the most, boosters, uh, the and that's in dynamic, for uh, Max Q. So we want to pass that, nominal. right? That's the most dangerous. Max Q is the and moment of peak mechanical stress. Heavy is supersonic. Peak mechanical stress on the vehicle, so we do slow down the vehicle to get through this period of high stress. And once we pass through Max <laughs> Q, we will follow those engines back up on those side boosters. Oh, Austin said yes, yes. Yeah. Like, he Great fucking knows what's going on. So what's Max cool about this Q. launch is so we're gonna normally throw up those engines the again on these side like boosters. Come back. Uh -huh. But we're expending all three. Um, they're going to do a direct orbit You can injection. follow along the telemetry and on your the, left the hand, on the bottom left hand of your screen. You can see the speed and the altitude of the vehicle. <laughs> there's all, there's an orbital launch window because there's an orbital launch window flight. between uh, 426 now, and 526. Flight, Come on, guys. The thrust on the two side right? boosters again, I have no idea, and that dude. will be. What do you mean that is the orbital the launch window? Am I wrong? Structure. And that's because the, the vehicle's now lighter uh, as we're burning yeah. through the fuel on the vehicle, uh, but the thrust will remain. I'm right, constant. by the way, for the record, everybody. Wow, that looks amazing on the screen. All three boosters burning bright this. there. Oh, yeah. No. Falcon Heavy is following a nominal trajectory. Units? And good call out know, on brother. trajectory. Like 3,000 miles an hour. Now, again, we're going to throttle down the side boosters, and then the next event coming up. Yeah, is that up normal? Why the fuck minute, is it looking like I don't know. I assume it's because it's dark. Will be Biko. That's booster engine cutoff. That's where we will shut down the engines on the side boosters, and then we will separate the side boosters from the center core. Why don't they put a fucking GoPro on it, and dude? And as a reminder, we are <laughs> not got them GoPro on it. Let's see it. Core today. Oh, they did! They did! <laughs> Let's go! They heard me! And you can see on your right-hand screen, we do have a view of the separation mechanisms from the center core to the side boosters. Let's go! Whoa, what the fuck? 
<laughs> okay, at this point, the left camera is a little. Cut off is <laughs> uh, there you go. It's <laughs> not really so showing so much. I want to get quiet. Uh, probably the camera they switched to does not. Okay, are we are we in space yet? No, right. Booster engine cut off. No. <laughs> oh, they dropped it. Is that supposed to happen? Both yeah, the two uh, boosters station. separated. Okay. Okay, Great I knew that. I was just there. asking, we like, had Vico booster engine cut off. What I want to see is, and we watched a, as those side boosters, and you could see them there on your screen. Those side boosters falling Vehicle away. Falling an nominal trajectory. Falling away from Falcon Heavy's center core. This is not one of those like it goes awesome back down views. type ones. That's gonna wrap That's it what up I just for the said. side no, boosters I mean, they today. They will go into the ocean somewhere. The next event coming up here not in reasonable. about 30 seconds or so is main engine cutoff. That is it's not landing. It's going to Nico, and that will be <laughs> no, no, the, the boosters followed oh, by stage separation the and then the yeah, startup they just of dump our it. second <laughs> stage engine. It'll land next to some shark or something. I don't know. Well, they like do a trajectory analysis to make sure it like hits. It doesn't hit people. Oh, okay. As long as it kills whales, I'm fine with that. Whales? They should be all right. It's yeah. summertime. It's probably going to be near the equator, so the whales are good. Yeah. Main engine cut off. They dropped a bunch of flyers. Stage separation well. confirmed. Stage one FTS has saved. Dude, that's so crazy. MVAC ignition. Okay, wait. So w w that's the that's not the satellite though, right? That's the booster. Yeah, no, no, yeah. That's, that's the third booster. There's one more like stage. And we got some great views. We watched Miko as no. the engines Coming. on the center core shut down, stage separation, and now you can see on your screen that the MVAC engine was going has ignited. That's now sick. we are coming up on fairing separation. Is it, does it feel weird that something you literally built so by this hand? Is, that's the satellite. Oh, fairing that looks... Separation confirmed. Like everything you see and on the screen, I And also we're able on. to see and hear the uh, call out that... Except from this ring up. An trajectory. So the, the fairing halves have, have separated. I don't think there's... They are anymore, now either. falling like back down to <laughs> Earth, and we will attempt to recover them using our recovery vessel, Doug. So the fairing opened, right? I think it did. Um... So it's just exposed to deep space right now. And what you're looking at on your screen is a view Doug. on our second stage, looking aft at our MVAC engine. Doug? And our uh, MVAC engine on Doug, the second Doug? stage is currently in the middle of its first burn. This I'm just burn saying has Doug in the chat. I don't know why. Left. After that, we'll have an additional two burns of our second stage engine before Doug, Doug is a content creator. Planet. Oh, Doug is the name of the ship. Is that ship? It's the name of the recovery ship. Oh. Oh, that's, oh that makes sense. On your left-hand screen, you could see a map of the Looks mission like. trajectory. On your right-hand screen is a live view of the MVAC engine. 20,000 kilometers, dude. Stage 2 continues to follow a nominal trajectory. Good call-outs. Our main payload for today's mission Austin made is Ray leave three, so that she could bring him chapstick. Secondary payloads on board as well from Gravity Literally. and Astronus. That is the Gravity Space 1. And She's Astronus like, hey, I don't really care about you watching this. Satellite. I don't really care about you watching this. Can you leave, please? That's Shut what, up. That's I what, do care. I also care about Austin's lips. No, I didn't say just you. Just now joining us. We're currently in the middle of the, of the first of three burns for this MVAC engine today. The next event coming up is in just under a minute and 15 seconds. Wait, so it's passed. We will it's, have uh, passed Seco 1, fairing. what we call second engine yeah, the fairing's cutoff gone. one. It's, it's open to space right now. That will end so it's the good. first it made it. of those three no, burns. No, when it separates, then it's good. Still attached. Today's but like, mission the hardest part, SpaceX's it passed through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 28th launch this year. 227th overall like, I'm mission not to How does it feel, and how does it feel to watch something that you built with your fucking hands? Flying at 23,000 kilometers. Into space, like it's up there right now. It felt a lot more scary when we were doing the like launch testing. Uh huh. Because once you do that, you know it's gonna be good, right? We've we've put it through like similar. Okay, things. okay. Be honest though. Stage two. That's fake, right? Yeah. Like on the left, it shows the Earth is like spherical. That's now fake. On your it's right flat. Hand screen, you can see the yeah, back engine. I'll concede. That, that, that's CGI. I'll concede to like you know good, Earth being flat, but there. then you like shoot rockets the up into right the air, and then screen, it, like you can see the speed. Like I, the but but the Earth is flat still. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, that's CGI, like a computer. Because yeah. it feels flat. About yeah. 20 seconds or so from Seco 1. There you that's go. He's a will shut down this you know, rocket scientist, and, and he, it confirmed it. to coast with the payloads on board. Expected loss of signal, Cape. Yeah, all this is fake, guys. They're shooting it in a studio. I didn't want to, like, spoil it. Morant's been working with a big-budget Hollywood production every day, going in. They still make them wear the white stuff, though. It's weird. And you could see that MVAC engine beginning to shut down. We did hear a call out for expected loss of signal. NVAC? That's what we use. NVIDIA. Nominal parking orbit. NVENC. And said. we got confirmation yeah. of good orbit. So with confirmation of second engine cutoff and a good orbit, thing. we'll be heading into a coast phase until our second relight of our MVAC engine around the T plus 30 minute mark. We'll come back to bring you live coverage of that second burn in about 20 minutes. So until It feels then, weird that SpaceX is taking all the credit and glory for this. Tunes. I feel like the making of the satellite is a little bit cooler. I might be a little partial on Dude, this. Dude, look at that. That's it right there. That's my baby. I feel a little, maybe I'm a little partial on this, but I do feel like the satellite's the cooler part. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, oh, look at us. We fucking put a rocket and, you know, put the satellite in space and all that shit. You did it. Are you in that photo? What? Oh, you are in that photo. Here, pull it over. Bot Marat chat. <laughs> Look at this fucking goofball, dude. That's the team. Where are the guys in the blue? Why are they in the blue? So those are the customers. Those are the vice guys. Where are guys. Why is that guy in the orange? He's uh, the person in charge. Why is she in light blue? He is oh, uh, quality. Look at that. Bunch of freaking nerds, Wait, dude. Go up to the satellite, bro. That's Nobody what matters. Wants to see the satellite. Come on. <laughs> so that's what it is. That looks smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's the size of a school bus. Yeah. Is it a Fortnite bus? Can you jump out of it? Can you get tilted towers? I didn't think so. All right, I'm back. I'm back to saying uh, dumb shit about the satellite. Now right, that it, go back to the video. Let's see what they're showing. They just got like weird spa music playing. All right, SpaceX should hire it. me to do their live streams, honestly. honestly. Fuck, that would mean working for Elon, though, and I hate him. So, Well, not today. This is the only time. We don't have a problem with SpaceX. SpaceX is good. They successfully launched Viasat 3 into orbit. Today's a good day. This is a extremely, exceedingly rare Elon W. Even though he didn't do anything about it, I'm just glad that he didn't fuck it up. No comment. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm, I'm off proud fitting of you. Off fitting, Elon. Off fitting. All the mum. All the mum. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, look at him drinking his fucking Turkish ass tea. I'm too kawaii old lady, huh? That's literally where I started drinking tea. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Morat started working at uh, Turkish Airlines when he was younger, and uh, that's where he started drinking. That's where he got a penchant for drinking tea. Are they going to show the fucking satellite again, or what's up? I don't know, but yeah. All right, what else? What other que up, What questions do you guys have for a, a, a rocket scientist? Dude, how, how do you even read this? I well, I'm the rocket scientist of fucking reading really fast chat, so. <laughs> the very, it's a very useless, idiotic fucking skill, let's be real. Kim Marat, show me how to build one of these? Yeah, no, totally. He's shown me how to build one. I built like three in the, in the backyard. It's like Legos. How long has it taken to get to this point? Eight years. Yeah, I don't know the exact duration. What will the like satellite accomplish? It'll give internet to a third of the Earth. What third? 
Uh, this is America, so it's going to be well. It's going to be near the equator. Or, is uh, the America. is the so so? What's up? Is the, like in, is satellite internet going to be good? Yeah. Um. So like, it's there's up to a terabyte. Is it terabit? But for the entire payload. So this sits at geo or a geosynchronous orbit, right? Like um, twenty plus thousand miles away, and it's it's on the equator, pointing towards America, and um, be able to get internet from it. What through Viasat? Is that the company? Viasat, yeah, that's the company. Did NASA fund this? No. No, but the government did fund it. I don't know about their funding structure, but the private company providing connectivity. Will I have better Wi-Fi now? If you have Wi-Fi, yeah. Uh, you feel yes, very much so. Excited? Like, what's next? Well, I have to what's, go back to work next? and build number two. <laughs> starting the next eight-year project. So you're gonna you're gonna do another one of these? Yeah, we're building three. Oh, because it's one third of the planet. Is it going to be faster this time or is it going to take another eight fucking years to make two different eight years each? Dude, I don't know how long it took. I Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Dude, um, you're the one who made it. I was only there for two years. I, I started working on this in September 2021. Um... And Tell them we're to come by my cubicle to, at work to celebrate with donuts. It says salam and cheese. I'll be there. I wonder if this person actually works there. I'm an air engineer in SoCal. I make 82K. Lamo, Boeing just sent an internal condolences email. Okay, maybe he does actually work at Boeing. <laughs> Murat is nah. my coworker. Murat is my coworker. Do you like that, or does that fi find you weird? I, I really want to know what their name is, but I also don't want them to dox themselves. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't say your name in the chat. Salam and cheese. When you see Murad at work, uh, do like a like a his name. Just walk up to him and say his name is Robert Paulson, like Fight Club. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're gonna walk into a quiet office. And I didn't do anything. <laughs> you did. You built a satellite. <laughs> Me and like a thousand other people. Clap. It doesn't matter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one I know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know a couple others. All right. The Are we done? Are you bored? Uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, this is, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm like just stun locked oh, walking and watching this thing. As you should be. That's you incredible. should be. <laughs> we did it, everyone together. Yeah. <laughs> we all did it. We all did it. Everyone in the chat, give yourselves a round of applause, chat. You were here watching with your watchful eyes, and that's what matters, okay? We did it. Jet propulsion. Space travel, anything is possible. You know what I mean? Wait, with enough chat? <laughs> yeah. All right. I work on the airline for... Wait, what? Go back. Does this mean we can blame Murat for any internet problems from here on out? I mean, I certainly will. Well, if your name is Hassan, you will regardless? I will. Is this a fault or not? So I would, like, when... When, uh, when it didn't launch due to SpaceX, uh, one minute before, like, its actual launch time... We immediately in the family chat started roasting Marat like he was responsible for it not being launched on time. We worked on this as much as Elon. Congrats, chat. Okay, that part is literally true. Okay, I, I, I'm not here for the Elon roast side. Okay, right? Marat, Marat is not roasting Elon Musk. Marat is saying only nice things. I'm actually a mage who casts spells on the satellite, ensuring launch success. Thanks, good logos. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're on that note, on that wonderful positive note, uh, I'm going to end the broadcast here. Right? Yeah. Um, now that the satellite is at least in orbit, right? Or almost. Yeah, it's in space. Space at least. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm going to go shoot the... Uh, next episode of fear and right now and uh thank you so much uh here get up I'll sit here thank you so much ray for 
coming on. Bye, everybody. Bye, chat. We owe you a better gaming day. Um, Ray did officially get us the game a little bit, so that's oh, that's what happened. Atrocious. Oh, what do you mean it was atrocious? Oh, she said my gaming skills are atrocious. It's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up, honestly. What's fucked up is you leading everyone on. Uh. Uh. Thank you, Austin, for your wonderful contribution to the scientific community. Without you, none of this would have been possible. What, been Austin, Christmases. come on, come on, sit, sit down, and and give the people what they want. How do you feel? You're the one who is like. Yeah. Mostly right. responsible for the satellite right. being launched. Nobody right. knows. No one talks about it. But you, right. many people are saying you coming out of the closet as a homosexual man yep. was kind of the pivotal moment. Yep. That was like a like a domino effect yep. that 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 it launched was, yep. a was, sequence of events. It was my homosexuality that launched this rocket into orbit. Yeah. Uh, there was no uh, me coming out of the closet gave the uh, myself and other team members the. In, uh, the courage to go out there yeah. and miss eight Christmases with their families. That's what that's what everyone is saying. They're that, saying that yep. like Elon Musk got the idea from yep. you. Yep. No. Originally. Absolutely. In fact, I was set up to be a billionaire, but I sacrificed. Yeah. Eight yeah. Christmases, and unfortunately, uh, you were you were the one who was like, I. You know what? It's fine. Uh, I will. I will put my body to the problem. I right. will. I will call the manager. I put my body on the line, which is actually how I got in such great shape. Yeah. Um, you also are wearing a, a really cool t-shirt. I'm proud Thank of you, you for much. fucking not wearing Thank the same skin-tight bullshit dare, every don't time. You dare, don't you dare. My, this lighting is <laughs> atrocious. It ruined my reputation. Can you ask Murat if the other satellites in this network will be identical to Viasat 3? Murat, will they be identical to Viasat 3? They're all Viasat 3s, he says. Why are we in darkness, by the way? Is there a light up there? Um, it's just camera filter just shit. Sucks. Can you go a little harder on that massager? Oh yeah. Wait, I want some too. What the oh, fuck? Fuck yeah. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I I hate it when you touch other men like oh. that in my vicinity. That's oh okay. All right, now we're talking. Anyway, all right, everybody. Thank you, Will. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, we wish you all a farewell. And a very Merry Christmas. And a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I still don't know why you're dressed up like this, but I guess we're, we're going to find out. We're going to find out on the on the broadcast, on the Fear End podcast in a little bit. All right, everybody. Love you all. And I will see you tomorrow on Monday back with the news. Bye-bye. Peace. Stop it, just be gone. There he is again, a sort of streaming, a sort of streaming. There he is again, a sort of streaming. Trump rally live reaction on mass riot.